Hello, everybody, and uh, a very warm welcome to this year's World Rapid and Blitz World Championship. Here, we're live at the National Stadium in Warsaw, Poland, uh, and we are ready for five days of action-packed chess, where the top players in the world are all here. Pretty much all of them are here, at least, battling for what has now become a very important title, either the World Blitz or World Rapid Tournament, two different tournaments. And uh, the great thing, of course, is the games are fast and furious. So we are guaranteed a lot of action, a lot of, a lot of up and downs over the next few days. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here with Ketty. Ketty, are you excited? I mean, you should be. It's a great tournament. I am so excited and was looking forward for this event. This is the last event for chess players before the next year. And as you mentioned, all the top players are here and they are fighting for a huge uh, prize fund. Yes. Uh, we do have 13 rounds in rapid tournament for open section and 11 rounds for women section. And we are starting with rapid today and we're going to have several days of rapid, rapid games. The time control is 15 minutes plus 10 seconds. Uh, and uh, I can also say that the my total price fund in open section is $350,000 and for a woman section $150,000. Um, and we do also have some barriers in both sections. Um, for women, for female, it is twenty-two fifty. Uh, federating above, above the players so it's the minimum rate. yes can play and for uh, for open it's 2550 mm. so quite strong tournament very strong tournament yeah and a, a lot of money to play for of course and uh, perhaps more importantly it is a world title Magnus Carlsen himself has just won the classical world championship he is back to defend his uh, his crown he won the 29 ra 2019 Rapid and Blitz, of course, there was no 2020 tournament because of the corona pandemic, but he is back, as are some of the other medalists. For example, Ali Reza Ferruja, Ketty, mm -hmm. what can we say about this young man? 18 years old, 2,800 classical, he already won a, a, a medal in the Rapid two years ago. What do you think of his chances here? Um, his chance is high, and I'm personally looking forward to the game of Ali Reza against Magnus Carlsen. Yeah. From a last year, a last year previous year, uh, edition of the World Rapid and Bleeds, um, there was a very tense game between yes. these two players, and we remember that I the do. game even went to the Apples Committee. So uh, it's yes. going to be very interesting clash between these two players. And we have seen Magnus Carlsen uh, posting in his uh, social media that he's in Warsaw in Poland hunting for other titles and medals. Yeah. So let's see, we're going to see. Um, also quite yes. interesting, we do have uh, Hikaru Nakamura, um, came back here in Warsaw all the way from United States and uh, we can consider him one of the top uh, players as also he won the bronze and the sil silver medal uh, from the last editions. Yeah, Hikaru obviously well known for being one of the best blitz players in the world. Doesn't really play that much classical chess nowadays. He's devoted his life to uh, the streaming world and does extremely well there but he still has a lot to prove. Uh, this is one of his favorite tournaments. He's played the World Rapid and Blitz many, many times before. And in 2019, as you said, Ketty, he got mm -hmm. the bronze medal for the Rapid and the silver medal for the Blitz. So he's going to be here. But it's not just these big names. There are tons of other top grandmasters here. Jan Nepomniachtchi is here after his disappointing loss to Magnus in the World Championship. Let's see how he bounces back. We've got the likes of Jan Krzysztof Duda, the local hero, uh, top Polish player, rated sixth in the tournament, I believe. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he's even rated slightly higher. Uh, he's going to be vying for uh, a top place, as is Fabiana Caruana. I yeah. mean, Fabi is here as well, as well as many other. I see so many young talents here, Ketty. I think it's going to be a super, super interesting tournament. Um, Lots of upsets, lots of ups and downs, but it's going to be great mm -hmm. to comment on. And of course, it's not just the Open. We do have the women's tournament. Yes. Perhaps we can we talk do a have little a about that. Absolutely. We do have uh, Katrina Lachno, uh, top seed, and we also have uh, uh, Alexandra Garechkina, who, uh, who 
is having an uh, amazing year yeah. uh, and she's uh, just reaching all the top levels. We also have Alexandra Kostunik, the uh, current World Cup winner. Uh, and we do have uh, sister Muzichuk's going to fight at this event. For now, we do see Alexandra Kostunik just getting ready for her first round. Yep, we've got the players getting ready in this wonderful tournament hall to play inside the National Stadium is, is really a huge honor. So I think a big, uh, big congratulations actually to FIDE uh, for being able to organize this on such short notice. People will know that this was originally scheduled to be in Kazakhstan. It had to be canceled because of coronavirus. And the Polish government and FIDE have worked very closely to make sure this happens, I think enormous credit has to be given to FIDE to be able to pull this off in literally just a week or two of, of time to organize. You can see there Hikaru Nakamura sitting, playing with the black pieces. Let's talk about the pairings, perhaps for the first round, some of the top boards, uh, Ketty. What piques your interest in this round? I think uh, the interesting match for the first round is uh, Hikaru Nakamura against uh, Alexander Donchenko. Right. Uh, it, we, we spoke right before uh, the, the the commentary started that the both of them are vice champions. That's right. Alexander Donchenko just finished second in Katowice mm -hmm. down the road mm -hmm. uh, for the European Rapid, and Hikaru, uh, well, he uh, he came second in the Blitz and third in the Rapid in 2019, so the battle of the medal winners. Alexander Donchenko, very, very tough guy to beat. He's with White, very solid. I think Hikaru is actually gonna have a very difficult game there. And, um, well, uh, Magnus, of course, we always focus on Magnus's game. He's playing uh, Gagunashvili, who you probably know yeah. a lot better than I do. <laughs> so what can we say about Mirab? Mirab is uh, nowadays a very active coach. He's, okay. he's coaching several teams. So um, I'm happy to see him that he made this tournament and such a tough uh, opponent at the first round. Uh, how about Jan Kristoff, the, the local star? Um, yes. He's facing Gabuzian Havanas, also quite tough opponent. Very and tough um, you know, all the eyes are now on Jan Christoph Duda. At least all the Polish eyes are on they Jan are, Christoph yeah. Duda. He's truly the big star in, uh, in, in Poland. And we have Janne Pomniaci against uh, Dimitris Vasilis uh, from uh, Greece. Yeah. You know, there were some speculations about Janne Pomniaci if he would like to play after World Championship match uh, just after a few, few weeks. And here we have him. Well, uh, it's still a world championship. He has a great opportunity to uh, play, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a chess that uh, he enjoys more. I felt like at certain moments in that world championship, he wasn't enjoying himself after round uh, game six, and things obviously went very badly for him. So he's got a good opportunity here to bounce back. MVL, we can see, also in the mix, one of the top uh, Rabbit and Blitz players. He's got a great shot, always in contention, playing against... Dura Bailey, who's also a very uh, blitz specialist and rapid specialist, so that's not an easy game. Mm -hmm. And we can also see the in the women's event, uh, we've got Yevgenia uh, Dolanova against Lakno. Lakno, big favorite. She's an unbelievably strong rapid and blitz player. I know she's mm -hmm. beaten me many times yeah, <laughs> in rapid did. and blitz. Every time I've played her in German <laughs> tournaments, she always beats me. Goyachkina, of course, as you said, huge. Yeah. A huge talent, and she's playing against again another Georgian girl you know yeah. very well, Nino Masuradze. <laughs> um, so that's going to be a tough game for Nino today, but uh, we'll see. Mihaela Sandu, very she's a dark horse. She can really <laughs> play some good chess when she's in form. Playing against World Cup winner Alexander Kostenyuk, Maria Muzichuk playing against a young, talented Bulgarian girl, Selimova. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know much about her, mm -hmm. but I know she's very, very talented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's a very tricky game for Maria, actually, straight from the off. And then we have Zaina Mamadjarova, already quite experienced against, well, even more experienced, Valentina Gunina, uh, who is finding some form, finally, after a quite a difficult year, year and a half. She's now back in uh, the 
kind of form that we yeah. love to see Valentina play. So, absolutely. Those are the first five boards. Of course, those are not the only games we will cover. If they all finish, we will try and bring you some more games. Please bear in mind there are literally dozens of games going on simultaneously. We cannot cover them all. It's too fast, and we are going to focus on the top games, of course, and the most interesting games. But we can promise you that it will be a spectacular tournament. There he is, Magnus Carlsen, looking shaved and <laughs> sharp, um, looking relaxed. I, I, yes. I, I spent a bit of time with Magnus last night. Mm -hmm. He was in very good spirits. Obviously, winning the World Championship was uh, great. And now he's looking for this tournament, which, let's be honest, he, he really has puts a lot of value on this tournament. This is a Absolutely. very special tournament for him. Absolutely. He's the winner of the uh, Rapid World Championship 2019 and also the Blitz Championship 2019. He got two, uh, two titles for the last edition and um, that's what he's planning to do yeah, at he's this tournament. He, he, he absolutely wants to win both again and prove his dominance across every format in chess. Classical, rapid, blitz. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's got the highest online rating at the moment yeah. on Lee Chess. I mean, he's just trying to dominate all, <laughs> all the possible formats. Absolutely. For a moment, we had, uh, we had a view from the playing venue. Top boards are playing at the, from the uh, same space. And we saw the, uh, the Polish officials um, with uh, without their help, this tournament cannot happen this year. Could not happen. Uh, so they had um, photo before the round, and we see uh, Merab Gagunashvili with black pieces. He has he has quite a tough day, quite a tough start. Not the easiest start, no. Playing black against Magnus in the first round. There is Jan Krzysztof Duda, the Polish superstar World Cup winner. Uh, a lot of hope and expectation in this young man. He's got all the talent in the world. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think a little bit of more ma maturity with his game, a little bit more pragmatic decision making, and he can become a serious challenger to the throne. And yeah. uh, he's going to really enjoy playing here at home, of course, in his home country. I believe he's not from Warsaw. Right? He's not from Warsaw. He just... Uh, He's from Silas Shepard, and recently he won the title of European Rap Blitz uh, champion. He's now a European Blitz champion. And here we have the handshake and the first move. Uh, Jan goes with D4 and C4. Um, I, had, I had lunch uh, uh, today, and uh, we shared a table, and he seemed pretty energetic today and in, in the best uh, mood. Uh, let's see how the game's going to go. Today we have five games in open section and four games in women's section. And we are going to try to cover most of them. Indeed. We're just waiting for the moves to come through. Hopefully they, uh, they do come through on our, on our viewer. For the moment, we're just waiting for that. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps we can see a, a, a full close-up of there is Magnus Carlsen. We will be in the game very, very shortly. Just a, sure. a small, I can probably even put the moves on the board <laughs> okay. for, Let's try for the moment because even not. Uh, oh, wow. So having slight, it's good always to have the technical issue at the start of the tournament because then we can solve it quickly. Yeah, it's good to have some issues then. Uh, all right, okay, we will get those moves. Very very soon. Um, also in the in yeah. the women section, yes. we have um, we do have Conor Humphy, who is uh, one of the favorites, uh, and who is also the winner of the previous year. Um, yeah, who has not played much of the over the board since uh, since p pandemia hit it, the world, uh, but this is a tournament that she's attending, and all the eyes from Indian fans are on on her too. Yes, Humphy is. Uh, Class player. She's been around for many, many years, mm -hmm. and uh, she absolutely uh, has got every chance in the world. Very experienced, uh, has played against a lot of the top players in the world. 
and uh, we've got the moves on the board, Ketty, so we can get stuck in. And well, we have uh, the Magnus Carlsen game. This is the position at the moment. We had a, a Spanish opening, something that featured heavily in his match against uh, Jana Pomnishi. And Magnus plays this very quiet line, pawn to d3, which was not seen in that match, but common line. And we have a pretty standard position. Mm -hmm. uh, after 10 moves, we have this with, uh, I believe, Kamara uh, waiting to... Uh, we do have another move after that. Hopefully, that will come through quickly. But the position is uh, pretty standard. Magnus looking just to get uh, a middle game that he can play uh, and outplay his opponent, basically. Nothing too extraordinary in this opening so far. Do you think his strategy uh, will be to play as solid as possible and then try to outplay the opponents? I at some point? think in general that's what he wants. That's to what do. he does. Yeah, <laughs> in general, that's how he wins. And yeah. actually, if you look at the previous World and Rapid Championships, mm -hmm. some of his great games have been these super long ones where he just moves around and the, the opponent gets tired, and the moment he makes a mistake, he wins. So I think that's what Magnus is going to try and do today. Uh, knight to c3 played by Magnus, a very, very standard position here. And uh, what can we say? Well, black most likely will play this pawn to d6 move here. Uh, trying to get uh, complete his development, get this bishop out from c8. Uh, not really sure what other moves exist. Uh, maybe rook to e8 could be played with the idea of dropping this bishop back. Also possible. Uh, but uh, for the moment, I think uh, we will see. And d6 was played. And now Magnus plays this move, bishop to d2, which uh, looks like a, a little, a strange little move. Yeah, it does look strange. Because, um, like, more standard move could be like bishop e3 to yeah, be more active. Exactly. Putting the bishop here is definitely more standard, but he plays the move bishop to d2. Um, trying to figure out exactly what... Uh, of course, in some lines, it's useful to control this diagonal. Mm -hmm. Maybe the idea is now if bishop e6, white can now play knight to d5. And uh, this is a bit awkward for black because you can't really take this knight because if you take I can take and the knight nearly oh. has no squares if it comes to d4 you can take and take and the problem is that uh, this black pawn on b5 is actually very very isolated very difficult to protect so white has got a lot of moves rook e1 is a move here rook a5 is a move here and this pawn is also a weakness, but this pawn is not really a weakness because mm -hmm. it's protected by the bishop. Yeah. So that's actually, I think, a bit of a problem. So, so rook e8 was. So that's why Merab didn't play knight with bishop e6. That's why he played rook e8. And now the question is, does Magnus play knight d5 anyway? Very interesting. Uh, it's a kind of position where he feels very comfortable. Mm. Yes, yeah, just a little slowly. Lot, lots of pieces <laughs> on the board early. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are there any other interesting? Yeah, there is very interesting okay. position on the second board. Here we have Donchenko against uh, Nakamura, right. and um, yeah, we'll get there. We have opposite castle. Wow. Position. Well, Hikaru has decided to be very aggressive in the first game, and we have actually what looks like a reversed kind of dragon. Mm. variation of the Sicilian, which is something you don't often see at top level. Yeah. But we have it, and I have to say, I don't love Hikaru's decision. I think having the extra tempo or two for white is a big thing here. And I think Alexander will feel pretty happy about things. Well, I do like to see the opposite castle position, so it's going to be quite sharp. Should be very sharp, yeah. Yeah, black will try to attack on the king side. Can be something like h5, h4, g5, bishop h3. That those are the ideas. Of course, um, it's it really matters what white plays here. 
and uh, oh, look at this wow. D4 right away. That is, that's, but that's a very, uh, a very typical move. If you can play D4 in these dragon structures to open the position, normally it's a good idea. Now, just out the corner of my eye, let me just make some moves here. There's a lot of tension. If we take, mm -hmm. and let's say now knight takes, can black take, take, and play a move like knight f4? Does this move exist or is it not very good? It's probably just not very good. That's what I wanted to play. Mm. So, yeah, knight e2 is now a threat. This knight should be taken. Yeah, so we have queen. to take it, and then queen takes d4. And then I thought rook a to c1, attacking mm -hmm. this uh, c7 pawn. And looks a little bit scary for black, but if you can defend c7, it's probably it's probably just okay for black, actually. It's probably, I don't see it being, a, because the problem is white can't bring a rook to here, because black will take it. So, for example, if I play c6, if I tried rook fd1 kicking the queen, the queen is not going to retrieve, the queen is going to take. And white is already losing, because black has got the important bishop to h3, yeah, which is an important tactic, of course. That's, in fact, is a checkmate. That's a checkmate, Next move. exactly. So that means, therefore, that I don't think that's possible. So Hikaru now needs to have a think. This is actually a critical moment, mm -hmm. I would say. Already, his decision here of how to proceed is, is going to be important. Should also be pointed out that after e takes d4, perhaps white can play the move yeah, rook d1. I Just like this move. I like this move a lot, by the way. Just bring the rook on the file where the queen is also located. So next move, you can take this pawn. Uh, and you just avoid further problems on d4. And the problem Hikaru has here is that all of this opening of diagonals and files is benefiting white much more. I, I actually really like white's position after d4. I think this has been a... Hikaru has decided to be extremely aggressive mm -hmm. straight away. He's played the move bishop, bishop f5. f5. A very strange looking move. But it makes sense because you're attacking the knight... And what do you think about knight c5? This well, that was my original uh, thought. Why can't I just attack the queen? I guess you have to take. You take. And I guess if I take with the queen, is natural. And here, I, maybe Hikaru's idea was to play d4. Oh, then e3. Or not. E4, e3, possibly. Or just to block the lines. Because with one move, Hikaru blocks both of these bishops. Mm hmm it's a very <laughs> thematic idea. Yeah. I think that's what he wants to do, actually. I think that's his, his idea. So the question, therefore, is, after bishop f5, does white have another move? Now, another very tempting move is to play knight h4. And I know everybody at home is saying, well, what about the d4 pawn? Hmm. Yes, but if you lose that light-squared bishop, after knight takes f5, queen takes f5, white has got this unbelievable bishop on g3. That's a very strong one which can cause problems in the long term. Even here, for, for me, the most natural move would be to play a3, just to stop any jumps and try and now play queen c4 on the next move, bring a rook in. Mm -hmm. Looks like fantastic compensation to white. Donchenko just played knight h4, so it's going to be very wow, interesting. Okay, so then we're going to then we, then we're gonna probably just get that. So knight h4 is on the board. Wow. That's that's going to be interesting. Okay, so we'll I, I suggest we come back to that. All right, we can go then. Yeah, let's have a look at another one. Perhaps is there anything? Yeah, Napomnishi. Mashrofasilis Napomnishi looks actually very interesting. Let's go there. Yeah, Napomnishi. Of course, vice world champion f didn't manage to beat Magnus, and look at this <laughs> position here. Now, I have to say, I like. White here. I think Mashra Vasilis is, he's a very talented player. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people don't know about him, but if you speak to top chess players about Mashra Vasilis, they say he's got enormous talent. He just lacked a little bit of consistency, but he's got big talent. I love this bishop here on c3, but maybe, uh, maybe it's not that much. You know what? This bishop looks uh, very dangerous, and uh, the pawn f4 that kind of opens the road, 
three rook h3, rook g3 possible, and mm -hmm. there's also some chances like f5, or knight can get knight f3, knight g5, knight e5. These kind of ideas are are plenty for for white. And for black, black is quite passive with mm. his bishop on d7, right? And um, I don't clearly see the plan here for black. No, I prefer white here. If I guess black can always say I can always play f6 to uh, to to stop all of white's play, but then you weaken the e6 square. So it's very it's very difficult. White can even consider f5 straight away here, by the way, Ketty. That's right. If you want to be really aggressive. The idea is that you can't really take with the knight, I don't think, because now I can just take, uh, take, take, and I don't even have to take this pawn on d5. I'm not sure I want to take that. Pawn. How about queen d4 attack or on queen g, d4. g7, and in case of f6, queen d5, winning that pawn Oops. by the by the check? Exactly. Now, after f6, queen takes d5. Looks a lot more reasonable. Rook to f7 is the only move. It's the only move, yes. And again, uh, why does a pawn down here, actually? actually. Yeah, but look but at this queen and the rook stuck on the 8th rank. Yeah, rook a e1, for example. Yeah. Coming in here. It's quite hard. Who, who knows? It, a, a lot could happen. I, I think that might become interesting. I'm more interested in the Donchenko game, I have to say. I think this is so far, everything is just uh, as we predicted there. Knight h4 and pawn takes on pawn on t4. That's he did game. take this yes. pawn on d4. Okay, pawn takes on d4. That's the position we have for now. Okay. So, yeah, so we are going to get knight takes f5, queen takes f5, and then we're going to see uh, Alexander try to justify this this pawn sacrifice. Look at the time situation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Hikaru is uh, spending the most of the time. Yeah, I think Hikaru has got a more difficult position, actually. I think this position is a lot easier to play for white. I mean, after a3, what do you want to do here with black? Play h5 looks very standard, but it's never really mate. Plus, white can go h4, possibly, or he can play a move like rook to d1. And if black goes h4, you can just ignore it. Not worry about your life. Go b4. Mm -hmm. Because when there's an opening of the h-file, let's say black just plays something very standard, like uh, king to h5, let's say. It's never mate. The king yeah, goes to f1, yeah. and there's just never, ever mate here. Yeah, in the game, uh, Donchenga goes yes. with rook d1 without capturing this bishop. So, what do you think? What's the nuance here? Like, ah, he which one is one. better to you to grab this bishop on f5 to have light square bishop to you? Or uh? I'm not really sure. It feels a bit wrong to play knight h4 and then rook d1 and allow black an opportunity to keep this bishop. But Alexander has his reasons. Maybe after bishop h3, he just wants to go bishop h1. Mm -hmm. But now we're not. I'm not that happy about taking here. Also, this knight is on h4. Looks strange. Yeah, might be under g5 attack at some point. Not right now, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, later on can be. Yeah, and I believe. Do we have that? Bishop, bishop, bishop h3. Was yeah, played. this is on the board. Okay. Yeah. So this thing, yeah. Hikaru does take that opportunity to keep the two bishops. And uh, I have to say, I like this position more now for black. I, f I felt like mm -hmm. Alexander had to take this mm -hmm. bishop off. And... Uh, yeah, I and do like for a bishop advantage. Yeah, and, and, and play that, exactly. Yeah. What about Magnus? Let's go get back, Let's go in, back. The, in the game of Magnus Wow. Kursen, <laughs> Look at this, just uh, triple the pieces on a open A-file. Yes, that is A-file domination, that's for sure. Always control the open files. This bishop on f8 looks so sad. Piece just it's, just it's sad, but it's, <laughs> so it's sad. Also, but it's also kind of happy sad because <laughs> it understands that it's a defensive piece at the moment, and it's not like he's always out the game. Mm. So White has got a little bit of initiative here. So I'm very curious because this knight on e6 actually does a really wonderful job of just protecting the black position and the weak c7 square. And I'm not completely sure, well, 
okay, centralization here by Magnus. He's actually, this move is provoking the move pawn to c6. So I think he wants black to play here, and then he would go back. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to allow too many trades. And his claim is that this structure is now a little weaker. And the rook on the seventh has a target. That's right. So this is a, this is a typical super grandmaster move. Just a little provocation. And Merab will be, f uh, and oh, well, he we just says, it. I don't care, Magnus. I'm sorry, I don't believe in your, hmm. in your uh, magic. So I'll attack your queen and gain time. He will go all the way back. Yeah, there we go. He plays yeah. really fast. He will go all the way back. And uh, now the question is, what will Merab play? Um, you know, these pieces, black pieces, don't really have much of the moves. Right. You think he'll try and find another quiet move? I was thinking about like bishop e7, bishop g5 to get rid of that bishop. Of course, white's... Oh, how about bishop e7, bishop d8, bishop b6 wrote? Well, that's an interesting maneuver. So you want to snake this bishop around here like this. I think that's very possible, yes. I think that's very yeah. possible. Another idea can be knight c7, rook d8, just to, to, just to, to trade the pieces. Yes. Why not? Because the oh, he goes with rook c7 right, right away. Rook c7, but I guess it's okay. I think Magnus will keep this, keep this rook. Or will he play queen a5 here? Maybe queen to a5 is an idea. But uh, I. I I'm not convinced that Magnus has got some big advantage here, to be honest. I'm not convinced. That I would rather be white, but I'm not convinced mm -hmm. it's a really, really big advantage. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of work still for Magnus Carlsen. Round one, not, uh, not going so cleanly for him. How about to check the game of Jan Christoph Tuda? Sure. Okay, let's go for Jan. Wow. Well, this position is a dream for white. Uh, he has the uh, the big center. Mm -hmm. This knight on h5 is locked out of the game. But black does have typical Benoni compensation. For example, b5 might be coming at the right moment and e4 is weak. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful here. Not exactly sure what Jan Christoph is going to do actually in this position. I think there are many moves, and none of them look absolutely clear to me which is best. For example, if you bring a rook in, can Black actually ever think about taking it? I know it's a horrible move that we never want to give up that bishop. But it's a pawn. But it's a pawn. And we do like to. I would be pawns. very <laughs> scared. I, it's not my style to take that knight. That's for sure. But there are some players in this tournament that would love to take that knight. The problem <laughs> is that we kick the rook, the rook comes back. I'm very scared here as, as black. Can we go f5 and just try to mate mate the black king already? Open up lines, open up diagonals. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's the position where Jan Christoph Duda feels quite comfortable. Yes. To have some initiative. Exactly. How, about, how about b5 there instead of taking the knight on c3 just to keep the dark square bishop? Mm -hmm. B5, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And if I take, you want to go queen b6. Oh, you want to take immediately. Ah, you take can take. And take then take and on then E4. And then take on E3. Look at this, look. <gasps> wow. If I take on D6, this is what I missed. Now you nice. can take here. That's a very nice tactic. That's very nice. And if takes, just to illustrate to the, to the people at home, uh, bishop D4 now uh, wins immediately yeah okay <laughs> we accidentally played a good move. yeah, yeah <laughs> it's always good when you accidentally play a good move <laughs> so oh, there there is something very interesting after rook e8 young christoph Duda went for e5 and that pawn actually oh hanging. okay so he went With for e5 pieces. pawn takes pawn pawn, and takes, pawn, pawn. takes pawn and black to move now Okay, so you can't allow e6. That's clear. So you have to take this pawn. So let's say you play with the bishop. Bishop takes e5. What is Jan's idea here? 
Well, first you can take the pawn on c5. Yeah, but that looks... I'm not convinced by that somehow. somehow. I'm not... I think black has got a nice bishop now. He can bring a rook into the game. I don't see why this should be so much better for white. So I'm very curious to see what... Oh, wow. I see the move. I see the okay, move. Let's have so a look. after... Uh, yeah. yeah, bishop b5, he went d6 right away. D6. Wow. This is this is a, this is a nice sacrifice. Now he wants to play bishop c4 or queen d5 check. Um he can also jump the knight on d5 mm -hmm. and play bishop g5 to just to mm -hmm. uh play on the dark squares. Th that's exactly where he feels very wow. comfortable to have the initiative. This is a very interesting pawn sacrifice and I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, the the time on the on the screen what our viewers can see is accurate. He has four minutes. Mm -hmm. He 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 planned this for a long time, and um, yeah, the opponent has about nine minutes, and now he is considering on the moves. But look at the bar; it's it shows that what has here. Yeah, it likes white. It really likes what uh, Jan Christoff yeah. has has done here. So some t some uh, some practical problems for Kabuzian to solve here. You're right, Ketty, putting a bishop here or a queen here. The black king is open. This black knight is still has problems. There are squares for your pieces. I like it. I like it a lot. Should we see how the world champ is doing? He did play queen a5. Is that correct? Yeah, queen a5 oh. was on the board. That's you just, pretty you good. Just, you just get all his I, I get all his moves. So you hang out with him last night. I, I hung out <laughs> with him last night. I had a bit of dinner with him, and now I can guess all his moves. <laughs> yeah. I just need is to that a secret? That's it. That's the secret to his success. Oh, wow. wow. So we had, look at this, we had a huge amount of moves. So, rook takes rook. Queen c8. Mm -hmm. Offering the queen trade. Very interesting. Okay. So Magnus not afraid. But, okay. Let's that's, be honest. That's Merab is doing absolutely fine. Here. Yeah, and it's quite uh, quite dry position. White has this open file for the rook, and that's probably the the only advantage here. Um, do you think he will start some pawn attack on the king side, like knight d2, next move f4, just to get more more space advantage? I don't think he'll play knight d2 and f4. I think that might be a little bit loose. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to slowly, slowly try to improve his position because it looks like black doesn't have an easy way to exchange the rooks. If the rooks come off, it's just a draw because yeah. it's, there's just nothing to do. So. The only advantage that white really has is this domination of the A-file. And Marab does try this uh, bishop g5, which I think is a, is a fine move. There's nothing wrong with this move. I think marab has got very good chances here to, uh, to hold this position. But we know Magnus, and we know he's not going to accept a draw quickly. Mm -hmm. So he's going to keep pushing. Uh, yeah, we have also seen uh, him just um, starting really slow at the beginning and then winning the very important last games. He he captured the bishop. He did capture, okay. Yeah, he captured it with... Uh, see. Do you see the move? No, it's not come up here. So okay, it's coming now. Yeah. Knight takes okay. g5. Pawn takes g5. Okay. So he kept the bishop versus the knight. And now, um, what do you think? How about c3, d4? I'm suggesting all the possible <laughs> Yeah, no, I like here. this move, king f3. I like, I like this too. move. This is a very nice move. Mm -hmm. Because he's actually saying, I want to play king g4, attack your pawn, and I want you to commit to playing f6. Yeah. And for you to be comfortable making this seventh rank weaker, and also putting all of your pawns on dark squares. Okay, Mary. Oh, he goes sweet. He does play f6. Okay, so now let's see how Magnus plans to squeeze water from a stone here. King g4. King g4 anyway. Okay, so far so good. King f7 is, of course, the natural move. I think Mary doesn't want to play g6 because now you really weaken uh, this structure very much. But it's still playable. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like what they teach you as, as a youngster, not to not to touch these pawns. And this is a very strong uh, pawn chain. 
-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So let's see the times. Ah, it is a uh, white smooth, apparently. So we'll go. Yeah, he goes with G6. Uh, in ah, he does go yeah. with G6. Okay, so G6. he probably thought, I have to play this at H4. H4. Okay, yeah, G4. now he has also H open file. Maybe he'll come back in G4. Might come this way as Maybe well. Rook H1 next move. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not convinced here by Magnus's position. Doesn't feel like uh, okay. Rook c7. Marat keeping everything. We have several um, several games already ended. Yes. Okay. And Epomniachi won the game. He did win. also won the first round as well as uh, Fabiano Carana. Can we go to Nakamura Donchenko? Yeah, let's go there. That was a very exciting game, wasn't it? So this. Game. Okay. So let's have a look. Okay, so we last saw it after 14, uh, Bishop H3. And a lot has happened, of course. We'll just get an update here. And wow. Well, okay, Bishop H. Oh, not so much has happened. Okay, so Bishop H1. Hikari now brought out the Bishop, Bishop B4. He was kicked. And he allowed Bishop A5. He allowed. Is it on Bishop A5? Oh, that's so strange. I see the results, but the games are still on. Yeah, I think that's yeah, a mistake. That's I a think mistake. that that yeah, that this game is <laughs> <roll> myself. <laughs> this game is <laughs> this game is definitely still in progress. <laughs> yeah. Donchenko with uh, four minutes twenty. Hikaru already with two and a half minutes yeah, after sixteen so moves. Time. I mean, that's a lot of time. Yeah, you know what he wants? He wants to get this bishop on b six and try to target up to pawn and also guard d four pawn. And on the other hand, the king on c c eight. So far, it's not under attack, but if uh, white tries to attack, that bishop will be already at the right place. I like this manner, rook yeah. bishop, bishop b4, bishop a5. Yeah, I like it as well. So after b4, the bishop will drop back to b6, and the bishop will be a, a fantastic defensive piece, protecting d4, controlling, or protecting c7 and a7. Agreed. So I think... Uh, Yes. And we do have knight of three bishop b6 on the board. Alexander Donchenko to play. How do you play now? Well, this is where you feel like you need to complete your uh, mobilization. But mm. yeah. I, think the, I, 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 th I think that moment where he could have taken on f5 was a, actually yeah. a crucial moment. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah, look at this knight. That. Knight is from h4 just came back. And yes. Bishop on h3 actually creates so much danger for, for will create a lot of danger yes. for white for sure. How about to start the pawn, pawn attack on the queen side b4? Uh, Alexander is about to move, so I think there's a good chance he plays b4 here. A very good chance. Alexander, let's see. 2 minutes 51 seconds. And... Uh, Oh, Duda got a queen against two rooks. Maybe we can take a look uh, at Duda that. Duda's got a queen against two rooks. Okay, we'll have a very, very quick look there at Jan Zhishtov. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is wow. really the current lady position. I like the pawn on e3, e7. Uh, it's also guarded by the bishop, but there are really few pieces on the board. Yeah, I'm not so sure that this position is that easy for white to win because let's say after queen d4 let's say i go rook c6 do you just want to go b3 here but yeah, it's to get the bishop on b2 yeah. on the pin but it's knight. not but it's not a threat i can just take if you ever move that bishop and this rook is protecting this knight how about queen d8 here um queen d8 yeah instead of b3 N with the idea b3 queen d8 bishop b2 okay so i'm gonna let's say i go h5 protecting yeah. everything you go queen d8 of course i don't take but i, I don't see the threat uh, if you go hitting. rook c8 then queen d6 just to control six rank with bishop b2 idea yes 
but probably I'm not going to let you do that. I'm probably not going to let you do that. I'm not, I'm not convinced, Keti, that this is actually that good for Jan Shishtov. Let's have a look. Rook C1, King F2 on the board. Yeah, I think you just have to... St I don't think you can be adventurous here with black. You put the rook on C6 and you say, okay, how do you want to beat me? And rook C6 mm. played by Gabusian. You know, these Armenian players, they can really defend. Mm. They're fantastic defenders. Oh, yeah. So... Yeah, and also at some point King F7, Rook E6 looks quite, for example, uh, quite safe for Black's king. Okay, a big task here for Jan Chistov. Let's quickly check in with Magnus. Did he make any progress at all? Uh, this is the position after move 35. Yeah. It looks like he has made progress. Actually, it was the opponent who pushed D5 first, and then he pushed another pawn. Right. So Magnus was simply waiting. Uh, for the opponent, and now we have this position. Do you, do you think here White can White can try? It feels like there's something here for White, but I think you have to be very, very precise. For example, moves like Bishop C5 and F5, uh, look yeah. or Bishop D4. But if I, yeah, there are like few pieces on the board, and uh, there's not like. Uh, the weakness for Black's exactly. position. It makes things really hard for a Magnus Carlsen to win. Yeah, not not easy at all. F5 was... Uh, F5 by Black here was played? Yeah, F5. Mm -hmm. King is back on F... On F3? 3. Yes, that's the, mm -hmm. that's the position. Yeah, and again... Uh, what I about the other pawns? So like to, to trade the other pawns to... Ah, it hasn't uh, shown. So to trade the other pawns mm -hmm. after f5, king f3. Yeah, it's actually on the board. Okay. King f3, pawn takes pawn. Yep. King takes pawn and, and knight f5. jumped on f5. Yeah. There are less and less pieces. But this bishop is... Ah, that's not... doesn't want to let me do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> For we'll some go reason. We'll go to the position on the board. Ah, wait. This can't be right. Oh, yeah. This can, can't be right. So there's some transmission error. Apologies for that, uh, everybody. Uh, Merab would not be blundering a knight here. So... Uh, oh, no, no. He will not. So this is this is his moment, actually. He got, gets, he got himself at this point where uh, he can survive, and I think he will play really carefully. So, in fact, yeah. he, he pushed f5. He did, he did play f5. Okay. Yes, and so king f5, f3, king f3, pawn takes the pawn, king takes the pawn, and knight f5. And knight f5. So this is the position on the board. Magnus will plant this bishop on e5, and I guess Merab will play rook d7, or rook e7, I'm not sure which is best. And he's going to try and target this pawn now, maybe. Some move like rook a6. But after knight e7... Again, I don't. I don't feel like there's a clear way for Magnus here. Difficult first round for a lot of these top guys. Very, yeah. very difficult. Now I know we haven't checked out any of the women's section yet. Maybe we can uh, do that afterwards. As I mm -hmm. said, guys, bear okay. in mind we are navigating many different games here, but we will do if something. really uh, exciting and there's nothing uh, nothing uh, going on with this Magnus game for example yeah um, I think I think we have the result in the game of uh, Master Vasilis against Nepomniachtchi yes do we do we have the result Master Vasilis against Nepomniachtchi uh, well it's not even on my <laughs> on my theory? click list <laughs> so it's it's finished so how did that finish uh, it says that uh, Nepomniachtchi won. He had two extra pawns in the okay, opposite color that bishop. That probably is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Nepomniachtchi with the win. We'll get confirmation of that, of course. And over here, wow, we have uh, we have a wild position here. Hikaru Nakamura, 40 seconds. Knight takes d4. 
by Alexander Donchenko just over a minute. Queen to c4. All right. Forcing a, a queen trade. That looks like a very uh, natural way, but we're, v we're in crazy territory. So if I take, Knight you take, I check. take here. Uh -huh. uh, if you take here, now I guess I can trade, takes, and maybe I can just take another pawn. What's wrong with that? The back rank is covered. I'm not worried. Looks like a pawn to me. So, what are we going to get here? Seconds on the clock. Seconds left. Alexander, is he going to move in time? Let's uh, let's now focus on he does the. Does not. Wow. He plays rook c3. Has wow. he blundered knight takes d4? No, he hasn't. Wait. So knight takes d4. Rook takes c4. I think you captured that one. He'll take on c2. And rook takes c2. This is what Alexander wants. Oh, can we can we just zoom on the board so we can see on the big yeah, screen? Yeah, let's see here because they're down to no time at all. All right, let go, let's go. Okay. Queens are off the board. and uh, King to b8 by Hikaru. Okay, quite difficult to see from this angle, unfortunately. We don't have the... Uh, the bird's eye view, so it went rook to c2, king to b8, rook a to c1. Maybe we can check this board again mm -hmm. now. Rook a to c1, rook d7. This is the position as things are. But this is uh, this is pleasant for, uh, for, for Don Cheka. Yeah, yeah, this is this has not worked out well for, for Hikaru. Yep. Should be four, hitting the pawn on h7. And uh, two bishops. He got anyway two bishops. He, he's got two bishops. <laughs> he's got no serious weaknesses. Yeah. He's attacking this. So after h6, maybe now he wants to play move like a4. Looks very natural getting the, the pawns going on the queen side. So h5. And I expect a, a4 anyway in this position. a4 looks like a, looks like a very standard move. I hmm. expect Alexander to play that move. An improving move. Yeah, and this one can go like a5, h6, even to You can go a5, a6, a5, b6 is always yeah. an idea. Alexander taking his time. 52 seconds. Okay, so we've, we have had some moves. Let's see if we can get them. Of course, when they start to move very. So a4 was played. So mm -hmm. rook e d8. Okay, and now there's some back rank threats. So now I expect f3. By Donchenko. And F3 has been played. Knight F7, King F2. Loving the way Donchenko is playing here, Katy. I think yeah. this is really professional, experienced, and mature chess. And of course, Alexander now, not a kid anymore. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a fine young player. And Bishop E6. And here, yeah, and he's in in very good shape at uh, European Championship. Absolutely, he got second place, but actually he shared first, second, and third places. So, with a very good performance, and um, yeah, he that's right. He actually only lost on the tiebreak. Yeah, yeah, on the tiebreak, mm -hmm. just because uh, one of his opponents did not really win <laughs> right. the last round. So, ninety six now, bishop and the pawn on b five are hanging. Bishop d three looks still d3. logical. Yeah, bishop f five e four. This is all logical. And uh, Hikaru in big trouble here. Bishop e6, and now you just Im now the professional move is just to move this bishop back out the way of danger. Mm -hmm. And you Very say, calm well, move. yeah, I've got space on the queen side, space in the center, space mm -hmm. on the king side. Rooks doubled. This is very, very yeah, dangerous that's what for he Hikaru. played, actually. Bishop e2, and Hikaru goes with b6. Yeah, and now you can either take it. I guess taking it is correct. You have to be a bit careful about playing a6. And he does, Ooh. and he plays e5. I love e5. this. This is very thematic. This wow. is very thematic. Because now, if you take, you can take here, and you're saying, my bishops are, are working great. Yeah. Yes. And now I have a role for this bishop. 
can take bishop on d6 or you can simply double the rooks on a file. You can also push exactly. f4, bishop f3 to just dominate on the light squares on the queen side. I've got to be a little bit careful about side. I would probably leave that f1 because it's controlling the e4 square, but let's have a look. So after e5, Karu in uh, danger. It takes, takes g6. You can see as well, look at the camera. He's not happy at yeah. all. He's He wants to get out with a draw here, a draw he'll feel very happy with. Yeah. And Alexander now, 22 seconds. Can he find a way to keep the pressure up? He has to make a move. He has to find moves like uh, um, some quiet moves. Yeah, I can imagine a move just like Rook's here, for example. Yeah. Just doing nothing. <laughs> really doing nothing. Yeah. Also Rook A3, Rook or A1. H4. Or H4. Oh, he goes for another quiet move, Bishop F1. There's nothing okay. wrong with this move. Just getting some time on the clock and saying to Hikaru, okay, uh, what do you want to do here, Hikaru? Also not easy to suggest moves for black. And he goes with... Let's have a look. Rook F7. Okay. Oh, there is something like an ID4 check that there Black has to... There is an ID4 check. Uh, look for. But it is just one check. He F4. does go F4. <laughs> Very surprising. Yeah. Bishop D5. Now this bishop sits on the long yeah, diagonal. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. bishop D5, bishop E7. The king is safe. King G1. Rook D to D7, that looks like. What do you think about rook d2, rook d1, just to ping the d file? Um, you don't like my ideas. <laughs> Starting I, I with do f4. I like your ideas, Katie. <laughs> I love your ideas. That one, I, it feels, to put the rooks there, though, I'm, I'm not, well, what there do I go. know? There you go. There you go. You, you Don't ask me. Rook d2. You hit the bishop. The bishop goes back. Let's say here. And now you want to double, simply. I mean, it looks good. It looks great. Okay. Well, we might get that because uh, because 94... Does 94 run into some tactic like rook takes d5? And bishop c4? No, there's rook c5. Even this is not clear. Bishop d4... Mm -hmm getting a bit messy. I don't think Alexander wants any of this mess. So let's see. Ah, well. Uh, rook d2, bishop e4 happened, bishop h3, and knight f5 blocking. This looks like a decent try by Hikaru, and now I expect Alexander to keep the pair of rooks on, actually. Oh, this, this feels that some tactics might come. c7 pawn is pinned. Let's have a look. Okay, rook e2, bishop f3, rook c2, bishop e4, mm -hmm. repeating. Now, of course, if Alexander plays rook e2, I think Hikaru will be very happy to repeat. Yeah. He does not. Rook c3, king d7, rook e1, bishop d5. Okay. Hikaru is so difficult to beat. What, what do you think about uh, rook a3, rook a1, and then bishop g2, uh, just to create some mating threat on the... I think it's great. I would definitely... And he d I think he did that. Rook d1, he goes. Yeah, he's got a bit more time on the clock now. Yeah, the bar is increasing so well, much I mean for the, white. The, the, it's saying that white is close to winning here. So Hikaru doing a, a bit of a, a poker face job here because the bar <laughs> is saying it's uh, it's, it's, bad it's very him. bad for black. And rook a1, yeah. your move, ah, king, king c8. Is there a bishop g2 here? Bishop rook, g2. D3. Rook, rook d3. Rook d3 here. Ah, rook d3. So rook d1. Rook d1. I really like this rook on I a1. I like the rook on a1 as well, yeah. Yeah. There was an idea rook d3 and then uh, then to checkmate the king on with the bishop on g2. Oh right, yes. Maybe he can go back bishop e4 rook a1. 
He should go back here, I think. Oh, but he doesn't. He did something else. He put the rook on c1, I think. Okay, he's keeping the rooks on. This is correct. Seconds on the clock. Yeah. He needs to make some fast decisions. Okay, rook d c1. Now he goes with rook a3. Now he goes rook a3. Yeah. Okay. Maybe there was some little nuance there. He needed this rook on the first rank. Okay, he goes rook a3 and rook d2. Finally, Hikaru getting active, mm -hmm. but no threats. Absolutely no threats for Hikaru. This square is covered. He goes back to c3. Okay, Hikaru will repeat now. Pretty sure. Oh, maybe he'll go knight d6. He's thinking. No, he, I don't. Yeah, Hikaru is managing his time really good. Like, even, even he has now about 50 seconds. Yes, in the meanwhile, uh, Magnus still, well, trying to magic something against mm. Ma Merab. That should be a draw. Yeah, if he wins, I'm going to be a true magic in that position. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll stick with this game. It's, it's quite quite interesting. A big, yeah. big, big favorite here. Knight d4 by Hikari. Okay. Well, now there's a knight e2 check. Ah, this was a very tricky move. So yeah, that force, forces White to take this knight. Mm -hmm. Bishop g2 now. Okay, I think I think the advantage has gone now. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not actually, so easy. Actually, now you have to be careful not to be... Much worse. Rook c6, rook g7, defending the pawn. Now, all of a sudden, just like that, Donchenko looks much worse to me. Oh, wow. This is quite upsetting for him. And we can see on the video um, that he had really, really heavy breath. Um, without pieces, it's not going to uh, be easy to play against two connected fast pawns on the queen side. Okay, let's see how Hikaru plans to. Uh, to push now. So for the first time after uh, 60 moves <laughs> of being worse, he's now uh, better and he wants to start moving these pawns. Uh, but how does he do it? Because if you go b5, does Alexander want to play rook e5 here and try and make things difficult? Takes, takes, and now the king runs in very quickly. So still a rook ending. They're very, very tricky. Okay, d5. Did he go rook e5 here? Let's see. Yeah, look, rook e5 looks the... He did. The oh, wow, this, this most practical uh, decision, right? Yes, but now probably Hikaru will put the rook on e6 just to... Block the king. Block the king coming in, but the king can still dance. Yeah, but that lock takes a lot of time, right? It does. It does. What a first round. Um, ah, he just came in with the king. Even better. Wow. Yeah, and uh, a huge uh, let off for Hikaru, who apparently was losing, but he's a very difficult man to actually beat. Yeah, he gave too much chances uh, fr from the very beginning to the opponent. Do you think he will change his strategy for the next round? I don't know, actually. But I do know that he he knows he was a bit lucky in mm. this game, for sure. He was quite risky. What he it was very risky, round. yeah, in general. Okay, so, I mean, Hikaru, I actually just expect to win that. Pawn up, centralized mm -hmm. king. I think he's got really good chances. Yeah, uh, Jankers of Duda magically won that end game. He, okay, well, he did okay. something okay. to the opponent. Um, and what about Magnus? Let's, let's go, go there. Yeah. This is the position? Surely not. Um, no, we have uh, only B pawns uh, remaining on the board. And uh, Bishop okay. and Knight in the rooks. I don't know what's going on. There are a lot of strange moves here. N none of these moves make sense. Okay. Uh, We'll see if we can <laughs> get the correct position because that. Um, how about uh, to click? Uh, um, I I yeah. This one, one here, yeah. yeah. Great, yeah. Oh, wow. So we have this position, bishop f2 on the board. Not much material is left. 
is Magnus going to do a Magnus and basically win an, <laughs> an unwinnable Magnus position? <laughs> because how do you win this position if I just go uh, King A6? Rook C7. Rook C7 is the trap. Look at that. I walked straight into it. And you're mating me. And if I go Knight B6, you go Rook C6 and you win a piece. What do you want? That's, that's exactly what he wants. That's exactly what I would do there. Four for that. Okay. Hmm. So uh, yeah, there, there is a check. King can go on. He went King B7, Rook B5, King A6. What? Wow, no, this is extremely clever. This is brilliant. Oh, okay, okay. Because now there's no mate. And now after Rook C5, he wants to play like Knight A3 or something. And he wants to say that now you can never mate me because my king has squares and that this position is actually difficult to win. But it is Magnus. And he's going to make him suffer uh, yeah, a whole. Okay, king e6 on the board. Oh, the knight is being driven. This is good work by Magnus. Knight, he's ready to go. Where is he going to put it? Knight d8. Uh, knight d8, king e7. King e7, king d7. Still looks... b5 probably too. Okay, b5, rook b2 is excellent. Now you can just chase this bishop. Um... How about bishop? Can you not just chase this bishop now? So, well, bishop e3, rook e2 is like yeah. an immediate draw, I think. Yeah, maybe bishop g3 to try to get bishop d6. Bishop g3, and if I just... Maybe king b6 here. Oof, it's tricky. Hmm. Okay, bishop e3, rook d3 is on the board. So how does Magnus plan to to win this. I, uh, I don't see... Rook e5 he plays. Rook e5 he plays. Well, for example, now knight c6 check. That's going to be a very long game. That would be a long game. A rook and bishop versus uh, rook. Against Magnus Carlsen, I think but it's a, he, he would not try. But actually, he gets a second rank defense there. So that, that wasn't actually a stupid, a stupid try. It's a bit more complicated with all the pieces still on the board. Okay, rook e4. Rook e5. Rook c4 check. King has to go to b7. And now how does he want to keep the pawn? Because if you go b6, now it really feels like... Oh, rook e5 check. I'm blundering yeah. pieces. It's round one and I'm blundering pieces. <laughs> Wait until round 23. <laughs> Yeah, so you can't do that. Rook on c3 is on the board. Yeah, rook c3. Rook c3? Yeah. Ah, of course, the knight. But again, you can take this. This is a second rank defense. Takes, king takes d8, and now just rook b1. This is a classic uh, defensive uh, way to, to hold this position. Yeah, if you remember, right, how to, how to do it. Exactly, if you remember. You, you need to remember. Maybe yes. Merab just uh, I'm thinking, I wish I look at this up at this uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> end he's game. probably going to say, okay, I don't want to do that. That's uh, I know I have that in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. Okay, bishop b6. Okay, we're going to get it. Wow. We're going to get it. He's going to take on b5. Because, yeah, okay. Oh, wow. So, here we go. We have uh, rook and bishop versus rook, one of the most classic... It's actually one of the most classic end games in these kinds of tournaments. And Merab, I mean, he's a classical, classically trained chess player, and he decides to give up the second rank. Uh, he gives a check and then probably goes back. No, let's see. He doesn't want to defend the second rank. He goes king b6, bishop b6. Okay, king b5. So we're going <laughs> to... We're here for a while, let's put it like yeah. that. I mean, this is He's going to use the full 50 moves. <laughs> We're already four days, right? What do you think the chances of Mirab holding this position are? Do you think he'll make a draw here? Um, I think, yeah. You think he'll make a draw? Yeah. Okay.
Well, in classical chess, it's easier to to uh, to play because you see the moves and you know when the fifty moves uh, pass. Yes. When there is a rapid or a blitz, you don't see the moves. So um, if even if you are about to be checkmated, it's always good to check how many moves have been True. passed because we have seen some some cases when it was already fifty moves mm -hmm. and, and they didn't claim they did not. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was quite recent in this case. Um, there should be uh, there should be seven possibly no. Let's see. Well, the position is a draw, theoretically. Mm -hmm. But Merab has decided not to do the second rank defense, which I think is actually a bad practical decision. Yeah, so 84 is the move when the knight was captured, and mm -hmm. we have to calculate from, uh, from there to 50 moves, right? 134. Okay. That's very Okay. Fast. Well, Magnus now getting close to his, like, Rook h5, bishop b5, and now the only move is king a5, if I remember my theory. Maybe not the only move, but it's kind of one of the two. Maybe king b4 is also possible. Let's see. Oh, he's getting close to losing now. Oh, well, I think... He's getting close to getting in the box. Let's see. I think my theory about um, just look for the end game before the tournament is correct. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> important to... Rook h6, okay. King goes to c7. It's probably still doesn't feel like a winning configuration yet. The, the it gets dangerous when the, yeah when this king is on c6 and the bishop is on d6. That's when it's gets uh, complicated. Uh, Merab has got like one minute fifty six seconds, right? I don't know why he's playing so quickly mm -hmm. because actually being accurate here is just very, very important. Yeah. I, I mean, in a practical setting, I think this position is won more than 50% of the time. Even at top, top level like this, yeah. I think grandmasters uh, struggle to hold this position. Okay, rook h1. It's probably okay. King c6. c6 six. will be played. It's not Check and bishop c5. Yeah, check and bishop c5. And as you can see, Magnus getting closer and closer. He got the call to even and to get ready to run away. King a4. <laughs> okay, king a4, rook b4 check is good. You have oh. to go to a5 now. Uh, and then ro uh, rook b3. Rook b3, rook, a rook c4. So we're getting close to the classic. So king a5, mm -hmm. rook b3, rook c4. Oh. Now I can tell you this. If this king were on d5 in mm -hmm. this position, ah, this is where we have... The classic, so king d5, the rook goes somewhere on the h file. There was oh, a handshake. Magnus, Hold on. Magnus won, won this what happened? Game. So, so Merab oh. made a ah, Merab blundered his rook. Look at this. Oh, no. oh my goodness, look at this. So, bishop c5, it went king a4, check, and he moved into the check. Wow, because that was he, unexpected. Yeah, because he didn't want to play this, but after rook b3, rook c4, king d5, then we get our classic rook h4. Um, uh, bishop d4, and we're we're getting close to close to these uh, winning configurations. Mm -hmm. But Magnus didn't even need to show it. This wow. rugby one check was a discover check. Magnus wins. Well, this should be forbidden in chess to suffer your opponent all the game and the move one hundred. Well, he did that again. <laughs> he won the world championship. What was it? One hundred thirty-four. <laughs> yeah, moves. yeah, it was the longest, longest game. Wow. So Magnus Carlsen, uh, what can we say? He just uh, never lets you breathe. Uh, you have to fight until the last minute, and one lapse in concentration, and you lose. And Merab walks into the discovered check and loses a rook. So yeah. that was uh, very unfortunate to lose uh, from uh, from Merab this way because he played truly good this game. This yes. game. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of a lot of nerves right now. A lot of nerves, yeah. What other games have we got going on then that are of interest? We haven't checked in. Let's go to the ladies' event. Because yeah, let's do that. Let's have a look at some of the top boards there. Uh, Goyachkina, uh, Mazuradze. We don't uh, receive the. We have ball. not received all the moves there. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so that one is going to look a little tricky. Um, if we go to Kostenyuk's game as well, looks 
like we haven't got all the moves. Oh, the games have been ended there. So they've all finished. Have and they? let me read okay, if we have some games, yeah. interesting. Well, Muzuchuk Sisters ended uh, with a draw today in the first round. And there is a little bit of upset. Muzuchuk Anna, who is a uh, world uh, Blizzard Rapid Champion, mm -hmm. she drew against local player Alicia Slevitska, who is quite talented young mm -hmm. player, European champion, junior champion. And uh, Marie Muzuchuk also tied the, the, the game with uh, Sa Salim Mova. Salim Mova, okay, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, uh, this is the upset in the, in the female section. And we also have Harika Dronawali drew against the uh, local player, uh, uh, Alexandra Lach. Lach? Like, ah, uh, yeah, Alexandra is here. I, I met her years ago, actually, yeah, mm. in Katowice. Okay, good for And, me. yeah, there, this is a uh, quite surprising result from Ashansi Abdumalik, who just became a grandmaster. Um, wow, she this lost year sh Yeah, she lost against Anastasia Paramzina. Wow, and that's, that's a big result. Yeah, that's the result we have. Um, do you think we, we have done all the games uh, in open section? I too? think all the, main, all the main games are done. I'm seeing they are disappearing from my list, so pretty much they seem to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here if we've got anything uh, of uh, one of the top games. I cannot actually see a super... Kayakin drew. Mm -hmm. uh, your uh, countryman Kuparadze beat Sindarov, the very strong young Uzbek grandmaster. Oh, Kuparadze is uh, quite strong. Not many players know him. He's quite uh, underrated. Uh, but he's a very strong uh, blitz player in mm -hmm. Georgia. And whatever he plays, uh, blitz games, rapid games, he's, uh, he's, the, he's the always champion. Mm -hmm. And when he plays classical chess, he actually plays so fast that some of his opponents feel very, very bad at okay. like it to play against him. I see. Okay. Yeah. So he's so uh, he's a dangerous guy. He's for very dangerous, mm -hmm. and he also um, win title Tuesday once. And that's uh, right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He did. Yeah. Yeah, we we Georgians know uh, him quite well. Uh, maybe the uh, public don't know him, but uh, we know him. The public know him less. Yes. Now a lot of the games are disappearing from the screen. We can see we're we're hopping here. Mm -hmm. uh, oh wow! Dima Lassi beat uh, Harry Krishna with the white pieces. That's a big upset. Two hundred points uh, lower rated is Dima, so that's a big result. Uh, for mm -hmm. Sorry, Darcy Lima. Sorry, from Brazil. Well, uh, you know, Lawrence, we yes. do have. Uh, Peter Guyan, who is with a um, with big screen, and he will show to our viewers the games we have not covered. Okay, let's see. If there was something interesting, he will bring right now on the big screen. So uh, we are looking forward to see Peter. Far from the hustle and bustle of the city, explore a natural wilderness. Stunning landscapes, majestic forests, and pristine national parks. Endless sandy beaches, and thousands of lakes. Come to cities rich in history. Hear about amazing legends. Discover the flavors of traditional cuisine. Experience a new adventure. Fall in love with the great outdoors. Poland, everything you want.
Hello everyone, this is International Master Piotr Gwen, and I will be bringing you some interesting positions from the last round. So, there are many, many games which couldn't be covered live, so I'm trying to find some mistakes, some sacrifices, some beautiful moves, and show it to you during the break. So here's the position between Mreurt Kamalidenova against Elina Danielian. And we see a big rating difference, around 200 rating points. And um, yeah, the position looks um, mm, like, I mean, white is not fully developed. The bishop on f1, the rook on h1, they are not playing. Um, and black is fully developed castle. The bishop is attacking the rook on d1. It feels like black is slightly better. However, there are some other issues in the position. So having developed pieces doesn't mean that they are well placed. And white could have played f3 to, to play a tempo move and just kick the bishop out, but white played rook d3. It looked a little bit strange, but black did not feel the danger in the position. Elina Danielian played the move a6, which covers mm, the square of b5. This is a very typical move in, in those positions. But here, it was a very, very big mistake. And I can give you a few seconds. You can think for yourself what black missed here. Why this is a bad move. So let's look at the position. So mm, can you see any pieces which are potentially hanging here? So I was talking about developed pieces. I was telling about the bishop on g4, which was attacking the rook on d1. But is this bishop actually well placed here? Can we attack it? This is one point. There is such a saying that loose pieces drop off. Also, the queen on d5, it is fully centralized. The queen covers a lot of squares. However, it is a vulnerable piece. Like if we attack it with pawns or minor pieces, the queen has to move because we cannot exchange queen for a you know, uh, less uh, worth piece. So a very, very good move found by uh, Kam Kamalidenova was knight to c2. And it's not the most natural move. We usually don't think about you know, moves backwards, like knight, why the knight, centralized knight is going the other way. But the rook on d3 is protected by the bishop on f1. The rook is attacking the queen. And also, you can see that the queen on a4 is looking at the bishop on g4. Can black defend? Well, black played queen f5. And for the moment, the queen is in touch with the bishop on g4, so it looks okay. However, there are more pieces hanging here. So after bishop takes c5, well, queen had to retake on c5, and there goes the bishop. Okay, actually in the game there was the exchange on d3 first, but it's uh, here. After bishop takes c5, there was rook takes d3, bishop takes d3, but still, too many pieces are hanging. Black queen can take on c5 or can take on d3, but it cannot take both pieces. So anyway, after queen d3, queen takes g4. If we calculate the pieces, White is a piece up, so white is winning. So just a few more moves, knight f5, rook d1, and I think the game was over. So very interesting tactics, and remember, loose pieces drop off. Another position uh, which I found very interesting was between Martina Vikar and Teodora Ignaz. And, well, the position looks good for black, very solid, um, the bishop on d1 doesn't look like it's a great piece. And white's pawns in the center looks a little bit funny, you, like four pawns in the middle. They can hardly be pushed, like if you push d4, then okay, how can you improve further? So it looks very, very good for black. But the truth is that white has some threats in the position. And, uh, yeah, and Teodora Ignaz did not feel the danger. And she played the move a4, which, positionally speaking, is very good. Just gaining more space on the queen side, maybe thinking about queen b5, attacking b2, attacking d3, 
it looks good. But what she should have thought about was the other side of the board, the king side. And now, boom, bishop takes h5, a brilliant move. Well, you got a recapture, otherwise white won a pawn, and not just a pawn. I mean, if black does nothing, the bishop will retreat, and then pawn will move to h5, opening the king side. So black took on h5. But now, rook f5. And I think everybody saw such mate. Like if you, are, if you started playing chess, I think one of the first things you learn is mating with the two rooks. So uh, w one rook is cutting the king on the g-file, and the other, if it moves to h5, it will be checkmate. Okay, so um, that's a big, big threat. And how to defend against this uh, rook takes h5? Is there any way? Well, black has to give up the queen. So queen takes f5 was the only move, and after e takes f5, for the rook and a bishop, white has a queen. Okay, for the moment the queen on h2 doesn't look too threatening, but it's a very, very strong piece, and it will easily sneak into a black's position with a devastating effect. So after move like knight takes d5, rook coming to g5, renewing the threat of rook takes h5, attacking the king, Knight f6, queen g3, <coughs> the queen is joining the game. I think uh, white's position is completely winning, uh, but still it was a bit messy, and at the end, as far as I know, the game ended in a draw. But that was very, very nice shot. Bishop takes h5 with a winning position. Some other position, also from the women's section, so, so I'm actually showing so far only games from the women's section. Um, this was the game between Turkan Mamedyarova and Anna Maya Kazarian. So for now, as we can see, the position is very solid for black. Black has some extra space on the queen side, some pressure on the b2 pawn. It looks okay. What white can do? Well, white will try to play e4. And black should have thought about this e4 move and should have somehow try to prevent it or prepare against it. So even such a move like bishop c6, maybe it, it looks like the bishop is just attacking the pawn on d5, but it would be a nice move. Also, um, the engine like something like a4, gaining further space on the queen side also looks nice. But in the game, what was uh, very, very uh, surprising to me, black played knight e8. I felt, I feel like uh, um, Anna Maya wasn't comfortable with this bishop on e5 and wanted to play f6, kicking this bishop out. But it's not the place where she should play. She should just prevent e4 or improve the position on the queen side, not playing here in the center. And now, after the move e4, which was the break uh, I was thinking about from the very beginning, that was the plan. So after e4, she played f6. And you can see her structure is getting worse. And here after bishop g3, I mean, what is this knight doing on e8? I mean, it's very passive, and e takes d5 is a threat. Um, black structure is collapsing here. So after bishop takes d6, e takes d5, maybe taking first on d4 was better than bishop d6, but it doesn't change the general assessment of this position after e takes d5, e takes d5, knight is whoops, not here, knight is jumping into d5, a very nice central square. Um, okay, here, knight takes d5, queen takes d4, rook, take, rook d1, or first taking on d6 was actually the game continuation. After knight d5, um, queen d4, bishop d6, knight d6, rook d1, and yeah, you can see there are many problems on the d-file, and white is much, much better. In fact, white is, white is winning here after queen takes e5, f takes e5, knight b6. You can see from a very solid position how quickly black's position just collapsed. Like the rook is hanging, the bishop is hanging, the knight is hanging. So that was game over very soon. So I think it's all for now, and I think uh, you will see me again during the next break.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is live coverage of the World Rapid Championship. Well, it's World Rapid and Blitz. We're starting with the Rapid Tournament. We've just seen round one. No game is easy, even for the greatest out there. Magnus Carlsen having to rely on a 100th move blunder from uh, Merab, who uh, Ketty's countryman. He fought so well, he held the balance. But like Magnus does to a lot of players, he grinds you down until you make a mistake. So Magnus ended up winning game one, as did Hikaru Nakamura, after having a very difficult position uh, against the very talented Donchenko. And game two, there are five games today. Game two has kicked off already. Ketty, we've got uh, Ter Sahakian against Magnus Carlsen. Now, I don't know much about Ter Sahakian. Do you know uh, much about him? Yeah, yeah, I know because he's in my age and uh, he's from Armenia, I'm from Georgia, so we're like different countries. Um, I know him winning a lot of junior championship and he became uh, championships and he became grandmaster quite at age, a uh, young age. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, he's also playing a lot of uh, tournaments right now, um, and he's one of the uh, one of the member of Team Armenia mm -hmm. uh, for many years already. So he's quite strong okay. uh, player, and um, I think it's going to be a very interesting um, clash. Uh, we can take a look at the pairings and uh, just uh, yes. quickly take a look we'll what happens on top five boards. Let's have a look before we get to the position. Uh, well, we've got Hikaru Nakamura playing Jordan Van Forest on board two. Now, this for me is game of the game of the round uh, mm -hmm. because Jordan has uh, become a, a sensation in chess. He won the very important Tata, Tata Steel Chess Tournament when I think he was actually bottom seed or close to the bottom. Mm -hmm. He came in front of everybody. That was his big breakthrough tournament. And after that, Jordan has uh, produced some really wonderful chess. Um, so Jordan, a very exciting player, very young, very dynamic, playing against Hikaru. Yeah, playing and also knowing him being a Team Magnus for a World Championship Exactly. Match. So he's also been on Team Magnus, so uh, that's got another dynamic to it. 4-3 is also very, very interesting. Vakidov against Duda. I mean, Vakidov, the... Uh, the Uzbek player, very, very talented. So I'm very curious to see how he, he does against Duda. And talking of another Polish player, legend, Sochko, mm -hmm. playing black against Jan Nepomniszczyk. That's going to be a difficult pairing for Sochko, um, in my opinion. I think Jan will really like his chances there. Of course, top grandmaster, but we'll see. And then Fabiana Caruana playing against Nicholas Theodoro. Now, I don't know much about Nicholas Theodoro, except that he's very, very young. All right. He's very, very young. So he's going to be a super talent. Uh, so we'll have a look at that, see how he does. Uh, and uh, Maxim Vashelagrav. And Maxim Vashelagrav is playing Alan Fischot from Argentina. Alan is very solid, so not an easy game there for Maxim. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, in female section, we do have Katarina Lachno, first seeded uh, player. She will face Evgenia Ovot. And then we have on the second board, Dava Dembu uh, from... Um, I don't know where she is from. from um, I know it better. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know this. Uh, Mongolia. From, uh, from Mongolia. Okay. From, uh, she will face Alexandra Gorechkina. And on the third board, we have Alexandra Kostnuk against Alexandra Maltskaya. Two, poly uh, two Russian players will face each other. Then we have Alicia Shlevitska against Maria Muzachuk. Alicia Shlevitska played uh, against Muzachuk's sister already. And then we have uh, Valentina Gunina against Yulia Kochetkova. So mm -hmm. this is the playing venue, uh, and uh, here we are back into the chess. Well, let's get <laughs> to the position. Well, it's a very curious position because what we actually have is we have another Spanish becoming again in fashion and we have a um, an anti-martial. Now, this is very relevant because Magnus played this exact position many times in the World Championship match. In the World Championship match, he played the move rook b8 against Yana Pomnishi. Um, and this time he goes for bishop d7, which is, of course, um. another way to play. 
Hold on, there was the position he played with white pieces in the first round, wasn't it? Um, no, I think he was black, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. and the opponent played. Uh, yes, I think we we definitely had a bishop b7. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I think we're definitely alone uh, on our own now. Um, and queen c7 by magnet. So we have a very typical Spanish position, uh, where a typical move now would be bishop g5, looking to say, well, I might trade here. So if you go h6, I think I would probably take, take. And now the point is I can put the knight on e3 and put it on d5. Mm -hmm. Looks plausible. Uh, Magnus, of course, has studied these positions for months, well, years in general, but of course for months in preparation of his World Championship match. I think he'll be quite comfortable playing this mm -hmm. against Tursa Hakian, who's obviously not uh, not an easy match for him at all. So we'll see how that one develops. Let's go to Hikaru. And we also have a pretty um, pretty well-known, pretty standard Nimzo uh, classical variation here. Nimzo Indian with queen c2, a3, b5, e3, b6, takes and takes. And an exchange of light squared bishops. Fairly quiet so far, not much to comment on. Let's have a look at Rakitov against Duda. This one is a slightly more dynamic, but uh, I think Rakitov will be uh, will be pretty happy with this position actually. White seems to be just a little bit better. Pawn majority on the king side, and uh, I don't see any reason why he can't be just slightly better there. And Fabiano uh, playing against. Fiodoro, now this is a very, very uh, interesting position because it looks as though Fiodoro has gone for the Cozio defense with Knight G7, one of my old favorites, the Cozio. The problem is that <laughs> Fabio already looks like he's got a wonderful position here. He opened the center and he played this kind of stuff. And Bishop G5 looks very, very pleasant. Fabiano. I think this is an opening experiment that has gone a little bit wrong. May I ask what's the idea of 97? Because me not playing this opening, I don't understand why to well, stack the bishop on it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense to block the bishop. The, the, the simple idea is that you want to recapture on c6 with the knight. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it helps with a, a quick uh, d5 break sometimes. And the main, the old way we played the Cozio was after castles. You can play a6 first, uh, but the old way was playing with g6, so you would mm. free and get the bishop like this. White was doing quite well in those variations. So, okay. But this particular position I really don't like for Theodore. He's got a weak e6 pawn. He's got a weak king. Mm -hmm. Fabiano's got a perfect structure. He's got easy development. There are targets everywhere. I, I, I have to say I really don't like this position for black. I think it's... I think it's full of danger. Yeah. Do you think he'll go um, just short castle rook t1, or he'll go long castle here? Um, I think he'll go short castles. I don't think there's any reason to castle long, mm -hmm. uh, unless you just see something very forcing and you win a pawn on d6. Yeah, I, I think Fabiano will be feeling really comfortable here, actually. Mm -hmm. And Theodore in with a think. Um, okay, Magnus Carlsen uh, managed to play the move b5, b4 in his game, which he'll be very happy about. Bishop b2 here looks a little bit strange to me. <laughs> because I think b4 was a move that Magnus wanted to play anyway. So... And yeah, I kind of have a feeling Ter uh, uh, Sakisian are, are playing Magnus because he also did Bishop D2 in his game, the first game against right. Ma Marab Gakunashvili. Uh, seems, seems, like, um, seems like he's okay in this position. They, they, like they are not really spending much of time here, right? Well, it's a very standard position, and Magnus plays a very uh, well-known idea that we also saw in the match. Uh, and we see it again now, which is this move, bishop c8, uh, planning to bring the bishop to e6 uh, to uh, neutralize this 
light squared bishop, and also to control the f5 squared just in case uh, white wants to jump with knight f5. It's not as stable. So bishop e8, very standard move. Magnus just, the point is that Magnus has just studied these positions and these structures so much in preparation for the match. So he'll know all of the ideas. And it might not be the exact move order that he memorized for the match, but he knows yeah. the ideas. Yeah. And that's, that's the nice. important thing. Yeah. It's exactly. quite nice. So that we'll see. Okay, this game here. Well, this game could get very exciting, actually, all of a sudden. Hikaru's played e5, and after knight d5, can we start jumping with knight g5, threatening mate, forcing g6, and creating all of these dark squared weaknesses? Yep. You can you can play knight e4 now. With Just sacrifice the pawn. Yeah, or you can also push... Uh, CD4, bishop h6. Yes. Yeah, this looks like a reasonable standard pawn sacrifice to me. With idea, maybe... Uh, Ah, two. Yeah, okay. H H four, H five. It's maybe too extreme here. I'm not sure. It's definitely like I can just park my king. I can go just walking with the king and play H four, H five. Looks looks quite dangerous. I just have to be careful. There's no rook c eight, knight c five counterplay. Mm -hmm. That's what I would be a bit worried about. Another can be also just to push H four right away after knight g five. Knight g five, g six, H four. Yeah. Also very thematic. I quite like it. CD4. Just try and checkmate him, right? H5. Yep. Knight H7 now will be a threat. Wow. This is the sort of move for a bullet game that I think would work mm -hmm. very well because Knight H7 is uh, is a winning threat. Just yeah. to illustrate, <laughs> if let's say G5, uh, Knight takes H7 or H takes G6, but Knight takes H7 is crushing, as Ketty said, with the idea. Yeah, takes I recently recorded some videos about this sacrifice, so I, I know it's working. Now G7. Yeah, there we go. That's beautiful. Yeah, that wins. Yeah. Attacking the rook and threatening mate. Okay. Knight D5, but no, Hikaru plays E. Ah, Queen D3. Oh, this is a clever, clever move. Attacking the knight. Attacking the knight. And the queen on the third rank is actually better than on the on second rank, because there's some ideas with Queen H3. Uh, to to attack h7 pawn. Yeah, I like this move very this much. This is a great move, this. Yeah, because yeah. now let's say knight c7, now knight, knight g5, five. g6. Now, even here, white has an additional option of queen h3. Yeah. Can you just try and mate him? Queen h3. h5 looks h5 like and g4 and just say, I don't care about the center. I'm going to try and checkmate you. Yeah, I think that works. Nice seven on the board, and yeah, I bet on knight g5. Knight g5. Yeah, I would also expect knight g5 here. Um, how about f f5 instead? So f8 g6, because g6 ah, seems yeah, not really knight g5 safe. F5, but such an ugly move. But yeah. maybe it's okay, because we're protecting this pawn. Yeah, it could be okay. None of this happened, actually. He took on c5 immediately. And now we're knight g5. Okay. So we could get something similar. And I think Jordan will go f5 here. Yeah, f5. Seems but he'll have a think about it, because you want to play g6 here. But... Uh, you know, in case of f5, you simply take that pawn castle and just to play that position with uh, against c and e pawn. For instance, um, just move the queen somewhere nice place and yeah, then castle next turn. Looks very reasonable to me, this fixed weaknesses. Mm. Look at these guys, horrible. Yes. Yeah, I like that, Kitty. I think that's good. Knight on g5. This is on the board. Was this played? He takes f6? No, I... Oh, yeah, knight f6 is on the board. EF6, knight F6 is on the board, and now I expect your move, queen E2, just moving the queen back somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you usually like to oh, trade the queens, but it kind of feels that the king is not very safe here, a black king. So, oh, he took it? 
Yeah, he took it. it. I mean, okay. that's not s such a um, such a surprise. Mm -hmm. And now the point is, if Bishop F four, well, I can play Knight D five. I can play E five. Oh, with the idea if white captures Kenny. just a king, a four, a knight can F4, jump. Four knight d seven, but it's not clear. Knight d seven, or knight g four. There's some Looks play. Like after knight f three, you can also push g five. Wow, that's the Georgian school <laughs> of. That's the Bardo Jobava school of uh, chess, is it? Ket? Were you <laughs> a fan? Uh, with, did you go to? Are you more of the Bado Chababa school of chess, or are you more of like the who's a super solid Georgian player? Um, trying to think of a super. <laughs> so, are there any All super we have solid? is Joby. Yeah, you just have you have Joby in the room. <laughs> but no, this is a very uh, yeah. important point, actually. Bishop on f4. Oh, Bishop f4 has been played. Yeah, wow. so we have this position. Okay. So now Jordan's got a bit of a decision. I expect him to go here. Because you don't really want to take because rookie eight wins a piece because of the pin. So I think actually you're going to go knight d5. And I think Hikari's idea is just to play this, finally castle, and say, I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think Hikari's better. Let's go to another game. Yeah, I can go to the next game. And uh, can Duda. The next. Right. Let's have a look at Duda. We have got this position, and uh, Duda doing what Duda does well, s outplaying his opponent. I like this position for Duda. The point here is that <coughs> it's white to play. If white plays the move B takes C6, for sure his idea is to take back with the pawn, mm -hmm. to not allow a knight to jump in. And this is one of those cases uh, for all of you guys at home who are improving, who are who are who are learning. Uh, the fundamentals of chess, you will know that doubled pawns are, are normally bad. But this is one of those occasions where the double pawns are very good. Yeah. Because they control four key squares, and they're impossible to attack. So they're not actually weak. They control the key d5 square, which is a beautiful outpost. They control b5, b4 and d4. And for example, d4 is a wonderful outpost if this knight ever gets to d4, for example. So that's an important distinction mm -hmm. to make, that double pawns are not always weak for, yeah. our, for our improving players out there. Yeah, absolutely. And also to take that C C6 pawn that allows uh, black to activate rook on B file. And white exactly. king seems not to be at the safe uh, spot for now. And also this bishop's uh, E5 is seems uh, quite, quite aggressive in the center. Correct. So I think uh, Duda going to be uh, s playing that one slowly, trying to take advantage. How about uh, to check out the game near Pomiachi Sochka? Let's have a look. Oh, well, we would. Oh, well, here we go. Catastrophic position for black. Yeah. Uh, white has got everything. He's actually dominating. Look at the time. 10 minutes difference on the clock. Time domination, position domination. Better better minor pieces. So the knight is wonderful on g6, causing all of these mating ideas. Uh, white dominates the only open file. He's got a better queen, better rook, better king, better minor piece. Black has got the famous bad bishop with all of its pawns on the same color. So by definition, it's a bad bishop. And white has got all of the checkmating ideas as well. So for example, now I see that queen b7, rook b7 mm -hmm. is a way to cause big problems. So bishop b4, you can just go c Why can't you just go c3 here? Just kick that bishop away. And now go queen b7. Because it looks as though this is counterplay, but it doesn't actually do anything after rook b7 because I control the d1 square. No There's checks. There's not even check. Yeah, this is checkmate in one. You have to go bishop f8, and now I can just take. Take, take, 
and I'm pretty sure I can just take, once again, only one check mm -hmm. because I control this square. And that's the end of the game. So this is going to, uh, Nepomnishi is going to uh, win this game most likely. It pretty looks like a pretty, pretty easy win for him. Uh, Karu against Jordan. Let's quickly go back there. Bishop e5 just played by Hikaru. Yeah. Next we can take a look Rapport, Richard Rapport against Mateusz Bartel. It's quite unusual. Rapport against there. Bartel. Now, the, another Polish uh, well-known grandmaster and one of the most creative players of his generation, Richard Rapport. And uh, this position at first looks quite bad for black, I would say. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it's too much to push those pawns on the king side, right? Well, the problem is there's no way to enter on the queen side. But at the same time, is it enough? Is this position enough? Let's say I go super passive and I defend. Uh, of course, you would rather be white here. That's no yeah. question. Um, I'm thinking about some knights, knight moves to get knight either on b3 or d3 to open up the file mm -hmm. for the rooks. So knight d1 here makes sense for me. Knight b1. Yeah, one knight b1, knight d1 both. Yeah, it's a typical maneuver where you might mm -hmm. think about getting the knight in and out of the way. Yeah, but it's it's one of those where it feels like Ricard has got a lot of plans, and Black doesn't have any plans. Um, so I like Ricard's chances, even though it's kind of level. Mm -hmm. Oh, they traded. There was a trade. Yeah. yeah. Let's let we'll, we will come back to. Let's go to Magnus's game. Uh, Magnus reorganizing very nicely here. It feels, and I don't really know. what uh, White is trying to achieve, Tersa Hakiana. He's played a lot of standard moves, but I'm not I'm not actually very impressed at all. Um for for me what's really um suspicious here how White played is that the the time. This is only twenty moves and he has four minutes and uh, not a lot of changes from the last moment we, we saw this game, right? So he used a lot of time for um, for several moves like h3 and bishop g5. And now he's trying to play really fast, maybe knight e3, knight e3 looks completely natural to me. Knight e3 or a5 maybe fixing the the pawn here. Uh, yeah, knight e3 on the board. Knight e3 was played. Yeah, this is very standard. But now. Yeah, I mean, if he's given one more move here, he might be okay. Ah, uh, can can Black play B three? B three at some moment. Well, Magnus doesn't do it. He plays mm. B five. Yeah, see, that was a very interesting suggestion, though. At some moment. Thank you very much. I really like no, that. It's <laughs> a really <laughs> nice, a mo nice <laughs> move. Because, for example, maybe trading and then going B three. Mm -hmm. Because after C takes B three, now there's this target here. Knight d4. Knight d4 exists. Maybe you can even do something as as quiet as rook d7 and just uh, and just double. So I really like that idea. Plus, okay, it wasn't played. Magnus played the uh, Sveshnikov bishop g5 move mm -hmm. as we see it in the Sveshnikov. What happens after knight d5? Because knight d5 looks uh, knight d5. quite natural. Very possible. Yeah, but now you can play around that knight. For example, you can go g6, mm -hmm. king g7. Maybe go with f5, or maybe improve with h5. And this does look like a Sveshnikov suddenly, a little bit. And you just say to White, well, you have a lovely knight on d5, but so what? Yeah. What are you actually doing here with White? It's very difficult to see how to improve. Maybe bishop c4. Oops. Bishop c4. Possible. But I think Magnus is going to start feeling really good about his position. Ah, he does go bishop c4. There we go. Okay. So I expect uh, 
A5 by Magnus, basically. Mm -hmm. You give up the B5 square, but you can always get out the pin, Queen C7. With knight D4, I guess. Or knight D4 next, exactly. Yeah, A5 yep. is on the board. Yep. Hey, we're getting some moves today. That's pretty good. That's a good start. That's a good <laughs> omen. Yeah. If we get a lot of moves, it's good. All right. It's good. Um, shall we go to the second board, Nakamura Van Forest? Sure. We do have you tell me where to go, and we will go. Let's have a look. All right. So I got a pawn on e6, uh, but black is claiming that okay, I'm okay. I'm I'm active. My rooks are active, mm -hmm. and the knight is off first and foremost. Yeah. For example, if if Hikari decides to take here, mm -hmm. I think this trade is really good for black because these endings are really tough to win for white. Active rook. If more pieces come off, it still remains difficult. So Hikari has to find a way here to. Um, to not make the simplifications for black, but I don't see an easy way to do that. Yeah, for instance, if G4, because this pawn is hanging, yes. this um, might cause some 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 problems for white. Knight C3, Knight C3, yeah. D3, D2 now is a threat. The rook cannot come on D1. Yeah, so this is actually, but I can block knight c5, mm -hmm. rook uh, d6, knight d3. All right. Maybe now you go a5 for black and just try to eliminate more pawns. He takes a5, we take 6. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Looks very nice. Yeah. So still some technical difficulties here for Karu. How about knight c5, knight d3 idea? Not to, to yeah, keep I was the thinking pieces. that. Knight c5. I can't go rook c7 because of knight a6. It's mm -hmm. important to uh, show that tactic. So knight c5, let's say rook, uh, rook d6, knight d3, like this. Also, very, very natural way to play. Rook d3 and rook d1. Mm. The only problem is we can't move the knight. Um, can I suggest to yes. you the, to go really quickly to Nepomniachi? So okay, something very there. bad Let's is happening go. there. Let's go to Nepomniachi. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, that's just mate. There's nothing really to do here. I guess it's just mate. Rook h7, Queen g8. That said, you have to. Ah, now he can just take the pawn on e3. I was going to say this is actually a threat. Yeah. So, but he can just take. And the point is, after takes queen f7, it's mm. a pretty checkmate. Okay. So, so he maneuvered this knight from g6 to f5 to to target g7, and uh, yeah, black could not simply hold this. It looks as though that's not going to work. Uh, back to Duda. Okay, so here Duda has just played knight of six, and it looks as though his position is getting better ever so slowly, just slowly improving, which is what he wants. So let's say, for example, here after knight of six, okay, is this pawn attacked? Problem. Just notice that White has an extra exchange. He does have an extra <laughs> exchange. He did it before. I'm pretty sure. It's for for uh, it's oh not even a pawn. It's no, but his exchange. claim is that he's winning a pawn and he'll have two unbelievable bishops here in the middle of the board. Mm. So for example, let's say I go here. Uh, rook d f one. Yeah. Let's say knight takes e four. Do you give back the exchange here? You're um, tempted. Yeah, but this the knight is, is hanging on a3 then. And the pawn is hanging also. Yes. 
yeah, it's not it's not nice. Yeah, so many pieces are just uh, just hanging. Okay, rook b four. Why have I forgot? Now, of course, you can just take. Looks like a crushing position mm -hmm. to me. It looks as though Duda has uh, got full control here. Yeah. Full control. Janjustov Duda. Love the way he's playing so far. Of all the top players, he's he's playing uh, very nice. Yeah, he's very confident uh, in bo in both of his games, and uh, he seems to be in a very good uh, form. Mm -hmm. Here we have Jan Chistov in the big picture on the right side. Yep. We will come back to that game now. Is there anything else? If if this tournament goes well for him and he gets the medal, this is going to be a quite successful year for him, starting the World Cup for sure. uh, championship. He managed to win that. He increased his rating. He got he he won European Championship in Blitz. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be one of the best two years for him. Sure. Now, we've had a, a, a result. Fabiano has won. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not got the moves through. Ah, here we go. So, yeah, that was a crush. Do you remember how in that opening I said I was really not very happy with Black's position? It went badly very quickly. Fabi castled mm -hmm. short, that we said. It was probably, okay, he just plays very natural. Nothing too much to talk about here, knight f4. Okay, some tactics to work out, but he did. And yeah, I mean, uh, Black's position failed, actually. So yeah. it just didn't work. So easy win there for Fabi. MVL. MVL playing against Alan Schott from Argentina. Alan with white here. Looks like he's got a great position. Okay, knight to f4 is natural. King d2. Why is this position not just really good for white? Looks like a phenomenal position. Better, yeah. better rooks, better king, better pawns. Yeah, pass pawn on the h file. H file. The black rooks are disconnected. Now, MBL is a very, very tricky endgame player, so he won't fold easily here. But I don't like this. Rook F7, okay. He's trying to activate his king. Yes. To control the seventh rank. Okay. Uh, looks looks decent. MBL in some some mild discomfort there. Karu. Did he manage to put any pressure on? Uh, rook b8, is that the position at the moment? Uh, after rook b8, uh, yeah, this is the cur currently mm -hmm. the position. So knight c5, rook b8, rook b1, knight f4, and we get mm -hmm. here. Yeah, and uh, Hikaru doing what he should do, which is improving. So rook fd1 will be played. And the point is that I don't think you can take on b2. Because rook b1 yeah. is a pin. Rook c b8. Oh, it's close. Knight c5. Ah, oh, you can just take here. Maybe. Rook takes a3. Maybe not. Oh, it's very, it got very sharp suddenly. Okay. Uh, still a lot of work for, for Hikaru to do there. Magnus. Magnus, uh, something <laughs> has not gone completely right. Yeah, it look seems. at this, like the rook on the d6, and the bishop looks okay on b5. King d7. I mean, this looks all right for white, doesn't it? I like white's position. How about bishop c6, knight f5 ideas? Bishop c6, queen somewhere, and knight mm -hmm. f5. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, it didn't it's like that. 
The engine hates that move. Probably rook d8, yeah. That is. Mm. Okay, so, but I, you know, Magnus, I mean, the position isn't bad for black, is it? Let's be honest, he's got pawns on dark squares. Very solid. Bishop d7 immediately, okay. Aiming to exchange, knight f4. But I like this bishop d7 move by mm -hmm. yeah, Sahakian. Exactly. I think this is a good move, knight f4. Um, if we take, let's say takes. Queen d5. Queen d5 or knight f5. Knight yeah, if we're pawn is hanging, ah, so sorry, yeah, sorry, maybe queen, queen d5 is... Yeah, queen d5. That's a good move. I would take white here. Yeah, me too. Magnus in another Do you think difficult <laughs> position. He, yeah. he's, he's not had a smooth, smoothly advantageous... Yeah. Do you think after bishop takes on e6, uh, he might take this pawn to spice things up? To keep the knight on uh, wow. f4. That's... Uh, he might actually, because he might realize that after bishop takes e6, knight takes e6, queen d5, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, that uh, that's actually a problem. Uh, oops, sorry. And that that is a mouse slip. Bishop takes e6, f takes e6. Wow. Wow. I kind of like it, though. Rook d7, queen g4 is coming. Rook yeah. d7. And if you go... Queen d6. Go queen d6. Queen g4, oof. Yeah. Rook f7. It still looks like uh, you're hanging on there. I don't know. It's it suddenly got very... Uh, oh, oh. Wow. we got your... We heard his position. We got it. And he did go queen d5. Well done, uh, Ketty. That's And here, why can't oh, I win no. a pawn? Sorry, why can't I just win a pawn? Okay, yeah, it is not so good move. Well, I mean, uh, maybe Magnus, you can uh, you can see by his body language, he's he's he's, not, a four of he's not happy. Okay, what happened here? So rook takes d five, rook a eight. Mm -hmm. What was the next move? Uh, knight f five. Knight f five was played. Okay, he has to um, take the pawn. If and why not f six? Ah. He goes knight f4. He went rook d2. Okay, okay. In this case, if rook e5, then knight d3, knight and d3 knight picks b2 pawn. That's 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 what uh, Magnus wanted. Mm -hmm. here. Rook somewhere, knight takes pawn, and claiming that this pawn is <coughs> better than this pawn, which could be true, of course. But none of this happened. He went rook to d2, which is a safe way to play. But Magnus probably doesn't have very much here because, for example, after rook d8, rook d1, let's say take take. I'm going. Oh, uh, sorry, take takes. Uh, somehow, takes takes. Uh, after takes takes g3 and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it looks very active here uh, with d5. Yeah. Exactly. So I think this is a very safe way for uh, white to play. Mm -hmm. um. He traded the rooks. Rook is on d2. I think we have that position. So to get today, uh, two games in a row, he goes into the uh, uh, in to the end game where he doesn't really have big advantage. No, um. he doesn't. Uh, we are waiting for the move. Slight transmission delay. Bear with us, guys. Yeah, rook to two, rook to two, that's the current position. Okay. Uh, do you think he just uh, he just plays on time because the opponent has a few seconds on the on the clock? Um I'm Yeah, this is uh, this is a position. I'm not sure if Magnus is objectively am ambitious in this position actually. I don't I don't think white should be ambitious. Because a5 is still a permanent weakness, right? So, for example, let's say you go rook c8. Can I just go g3? And if you take, I go king up. Mm. You go knight g5. Oh, nice. And I have knight e7. <laughs> <yet. laughs> 
Yeah. So yeah, basically, uh, Black sorry, 90, I blundered ninety seven. Yeah, basically, Black sorry. didn't really fight for open file. No, I don't think so. I don't think Black can fight. Unless he goes G six uh, first. D three. Okay. Oh, oh. He rook tried to fix his pawn. That's that, that. Then he is trying. Rook B eight, Rook B four might be his idea. I think his idea is maybe also not here, but because Rook C eight ninety seven check, but Rook C eight Rook C two. Mm -hmm. So actually, here can you go G six take? Give up the pawn and go rook c8 and just play for this move. I would be scared of that because after knight e5, there is knight f3. Just to come back with a knight and okay. uh, guard the rook. Knight f3. Yeah, I've given up a lot of pawns, haven't I, as black? You're right. Too much sacrificing. Let's see. Let's have a look. So h4. Mm -hmm. OK. And now he can go back to rook d5. Rook d5, f6, rook d5? What's going on? Why can't I win a pawn here with rook d5? Uh, there is g6 and knight d4. Ah. Maybe. Yeah, OK. Let's have a look. g6. But I can um. go check in knight c6. So if you go g6, I go check, king here, uh, and knight c6. So that also works. Yeah. Okay. Uh, clearly, uh, Ter Sahakian is, is, is doing just fine. Yeah, rook b5 is on the board. And we will soon find out what's what he has in his mind when he played uh, this b3 move. Because you know you push this b3 pawn, and it also is is a weakness, right? Yeah, and we've got this here. So Magnus has got the knight to c5. Look at this: attacking a4, attacking b3, attacking e4. Check. What's going on here? King. He's so. trying to flag the opponent. That's that's my. Ah, he's trying to flag him. <laughs> that's think. my my thought about this King game. H seven. Okay, but Magnus winning a pawn back, and then he's got the momentum here. And B four. By Hakian. Which is probably a good move. This is probably an excellent practical move. He understood he was there was a bit of danger actually, mm -hmm. and now he's basically forcing a draw because you can't take because the the pass b pawn is going to be very, dan very dangerous, dangerous. Yeah. and you can't take i i guess you can take on a4 but of course the simplest thing is just to take take and take but then we have a certain draw yeah yeah that's going to be a draw he cannot really do any any magic there no he takes the b pawn, he takes rook b takes, pawn. and he takes, ah, he with, takes a with a knight. knight. So he's okay. He's uh, he's saying he's not ready for just a, a stone cold <laughs> draw yet. Yeah. I mean, this has to be okay, I guess. Yeah, he's keeping a piece on the board, and now he's going to try and. I'm not sure, really. This is a position you can honestly play. Rook c4 looks like a great move. Knight d2. Rook c3. This has all been played. And rook d7. So this is on the board. Yeah. And of course, Sahakian in a, in a normal game makes a draw here quite easily, and he should really still make a draw. Knight e3. Okay, let's go to another game. I, th I really think this will end in a draw. Oh, wow. In the... Um, in the Jordan Van Forest Hikara game, I think Jordan has done extremely well to get this position. Mm -hmm. And it feels like it shouldn't be good enough for Hikaru to win with the badly positioned rook in this yeah. classic end game. Is, is um, Jordan Van Forest going for the queen side with the king? Or just that he can I just think he's just waiting because, yeah, he's going to move. And the point is that if this rook now 
moves anywhere, the king can advance. Mm -hmm. And I really, and if rook b4, now what does he want? Ah, now he just wants, no, rook a2, a4. What, what does he want? How does he? Um, Not maybe king d5, king c5? Yeah, king b5, a4, king c5, and if I just come back to f4. Um. Maybe rook a2. C5. C5. Yeah, and you, you can only make progress there, right? You have enough space between the pawns to move your rook. That's quite quite nice to look at. I don't know. Uh, Hikaru, of course, just playing for two results. So we'll see if uh, Jordan manages to put up some resistance. Jan Kursov did uh, won, uh, won his game. Uh, second, uh, yeah. Yeah, second game, as well as uh, Napomniashi. Okay, so those two, two doing very well. Anish Giri has also won, by the way, against Dora Bailey. Mm -hmm. Rapport did win his position, by the way. Mm -hmm. So also he is uh, on 100%. MVL dropped the draw against Pichot. So Pichot had a nice position and didn't manage to win, but he drew it. What about in the sh uh, in the women's event? Should we have a quick look to see? Yeah, let's let's go to women's uh, venue. Yeah, we will. We will try and do that. Uh, I see it's a little bit complicated with our screen. Bear with us. <laughs> okay, so we'll. You get it. Uh, let's see. Lucknow is still playing, and she is in bad shape against Evgenia Orford. Which would be a huge wow. upset, massive. I mean, Evgeny Ovrod has, has got a queen, and she's eating all the pawns. So th there's, there's not even really With a much. Check? To, yeah, there's not much to talk about here. It's just, it's just a winning position. Let's see if this manages to uh, be converted. That's quite a surprise. Huge surprise. Huge surprise this early in the tournament. I mean, Ovod is rated 2,092 on paper. Mm, yeah, but that's her rapid rating, but her rating is... What's her real rating? Is uh, she she's international she's master. An international yes, master. she's okay. quite strong. 23, almost 2,400. Okay, she's advancing. Cause I, this is just over. You can tell even by looking at Katarina's face that it's oh. she's just playing for... Uh, yeah, world champion in Blitz, Katarina Lachner. And we do have a result in the Carlson game, so we'll go straight back there as well. Yeah, the draw looks uh, quite logic and we had on we have only kings on the board so they uh, they made a draw. All right. Okay, having uh, we will get that up in a second guys, bear with us. Okay, maybe we can go to a full board somewhere. <laughs> Uh, let's get the the full screen. Let's go back to the <laughs> let's do maybe it. to the to this one here. Yeah. Oh, and the handshake here have we have a resignation, and Katarina Lachno just resigned. Um, Massive result for Ovo. Yeah. Massive. Uh, Lachno, big big favorite in my. What opinion. an upset here. Yeah, big favorite Lachno. So for her to lose with White to Ovo. In a tournament which, you know, 13 rounds. Yeah. Uh, in female, in women's section, we have only 11 rounds. So I every point really matters here because there are like few, uh, few, uh, fewer games than in the open section. And now on the screen, we can see uh, Hikaru Nakamura against uh, Van Forest Jordan. And they have the end game. We can maybe zoom a little bit, and we do have a pawn and game. Oh, not Rican game, and I believe that's gonna. No, he's going for this. <laughs> okay, in 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 Bullet and Blitz yeah. online chess, he will go and play for Rook versus Rook and game, but he does this over the yeah. board too. So okay. so he Hikaru Nakamura game, but yeah, they actually added angry. It is a draw. Yeah. <laughs> well defended. Draw. Jordan yeah. Van Forest had some problems there, so that was a. Uh, that was a good, a good half point to say. Yeah. 
in online tournaments, this Rook versus Rook end game is the longest, one of the longest end game, which not always uh, ends in a draw. Usually we do have some uh, blunders, but yeah, all right. over the board, this is not really happening. All right, where to go next? So, Jordan Van Forest draw. Mag Uh, he's uh, still playing, but the game seems to be. Uh, oh, the game seems to be really good for him. It looks completely winning for White. So Alexander Grischuk looks to be. Uh, in okay. Yeah. Um, we do have also Daniel Dubov, um, who is also one of the um, very interesting chess figure. Yes. Uh, nowadays, and also chess player, he, he made a draw against Daniel Friedman, and we hope to see him uh, top boards. Yeah, well, Daniel Dubov, of course, won this tournament a few years ago. Massive shock when he won it. Uh, but a class player, and of course, part of Team Carlson now, as was revealed. Naya against uh, Mamijarov. Well, we have a. Uh, What's going on here? A rook ending. <laughs> Both pawns is are on the seventh and the second rank. Yeah, king takes a five. Now, this is just. Well, white can queen here, but uh, black. Looks dangerous to queen. Yeah, the king gets really active. Queen, I take, take, take king f4 or king g4. Mm -hmm. Then pawn will start to. Looks winning for black. So maybe instead of that, rook g1. Ah, he did play rook g1. Yes. Rook b3 check, king c7, rook a3, king b7. And I think probably here Mamajarov is just going to give checks. And actually they are discussing yeah. the game. So it means it's a draw already. Uh, so that is a draw. Mamajarov yeah. unable to beat Evgeny Naya. Very solid play, of course, Evgeny Naya. And I think that's a lot of the top games. Now, are there any other games? We see the, uh, on the screen, we see one last, uh, one of the last game, but I cannot really recognize the players. Oparin against Maxudlu. Oh, I can do this one. And Maxudlu with a clearly winning position with black. So, not really so much to talk about here, I don't think. I, I, I think you just queen this pawn and then you queen this pawn. Looks fairly straightforward, so Maxudlu is going to win. Um, Onishchuk against Tari. Onishchuk against Tari. Very complicated knight ending. Looks like I would take black here, but maybe. Yeah, I know why you chose uh, black, because the black king is closer to the white pawn. Yes, and because my pawns run, right? So when I go yeah. g4, they look like they run fast, but maybe they don't. Maybe they don't run so fast. And also we have to be a little bit careful of white, not just running the pawn here. <coughs> yeah, after a5 here, um, I think black will have some, some problems. a5, a6, a7 is a, is a threat. And if you get king on b8, then c7 also comes. A5 and look looks at the bar. The bar just hated knight f7 oh. by Tari. a5? Yeah, it looks, it looks difficult. Yeah, this knight monitoring doesn't really, really help uh, black, right? Apparently not. The, the computer hated it, so. Yeah. And white has one minute here. This right. is more than enough to more figure out enough. why this position is winning. King c5. Yeah, 94, king b6 is a problem. Okay, king b6. Yep, played by Onishtuk. No more check, and no a6 now checks. is a threat again. a6 on the board. You see, like white crucial this pawn, the pawn yes. pawn so far, and the black simply did not really move the uh, king side pawns. 95. 95, 95, but now king c5, and what do you do? And a7 is a threat. So and that's it. Hand check. Ayantari 
unable to hold that. Very, very tricky and Oh, game. yeah. He's so not happy with his uh, uh, result. And, you know, the, the night and games are so, so tricky. Very tricky. You think it's drawish, but at some point there's this maneuvering, and you lose one tempo, second comes on the way, and you are just losing. Exactly. Alrighty. Um, so. I think the top four is also on the female section has ended. Okay. Soon we will know the final results, but how about to go on the big screen? Because mm -hmm. I think Peter has something, some interesting suggestions for our viewers. And we will come back right before the uh, round third. And we can just check out the standings and the pairings. Okay. <laughs> Hello again, this is International Master Piotr Gwen, and I'm going to bring you some interesting highlights from the previous rounds. So here is the game between Jolanta Zawadzka, one of the best Polish women players, and Honorata Kucharska, a young uh, player, uh, who uh, played a very, very nice game. Um, in this position, um, yeah, black is pressing, that's clear, I mean, the queen is looking at the king, you know, the c3 is kind of a threat so uh, also the bishop on b7 is good knight on a5 is an attacking piece but um yeah the engine says that white could have played maybe h takes g6 maybe also knight e2 covering c3 and maybe maybe white is not um, yeah so much worse but yolanta played the move king a1 which looked logical because now there is no c3 However, now Honrata found a brilliant move, and you can think for yourself for a few seconds before I will show this move on the board. So what do you think? What's the problem with this move? Is the king actually safe on a1? It looks it is safe. There's the queen, the bishop, a lot of pieces around it. But, well, knight b3 check. Basically, in such positions, um, you shouldn't worry that much about the material. You should look at moves with checks, captures, attacking the queen or something. Uh, so trying to force the issues. So here, of course, the pawn can take on b3. And, uh, but if the pawn takes on b3, then c takes b3. So currently, um, black would be a piece down. But look at this. Bishop on c2 is hanging. And there is the threat of queen a4 coming to a2 with mate. I mean, the king on a1 is not safe whatsoever. So, in fact, in the game, bishop takes b3 was played, but then after c takes b3, okay, the material is equal, and more lines are open in front of the king. I mean, the a file, I mean, it's not still open yet, but it is going to be open, and the c file is, is open. The rook c2 is one of the threats. Queen a4 is other big, big threat. So, knight e1 was played, just bringing more pieces to the defense, but it's just too late, too late. Uh, after queen a4, threatening mate in one, queen takes a2 is a, is a big threat. So a3 was played, but then bishop takes a3, just ruining uh, the defense in front of uh, white's king, not counting the material again. I mean, just blasting open the position. So bishop takes a3, b takes a3, was played, queen takes a3 with a check. Okay, uh, king, king got to move. Um, to b1, and now, well, let's just bring more firepower. So rook c2, that's that's the move. So now the queen a2 is a threat of mate, and yeah, the queen is attacked, and yeah, that's a big problem. So here, uh, I mean, queen takes c2 was played, but b takes c2, so already, uh, yeah, white is losing a queen, and uh, after knight takes c2, well, there is also this knight hanging here. But Honorata first gave a check on b3. King went to c1. And, okay, rook c8 was a, was a good move. Just putting even more pressure, attacking the knight on c2. 
and rook d2, and then queen takes g3. I, I said this knight was hanging. So yeah, now black is so much material up, and yeah, black is completely winning. And I think here Yolanta threw in the towel. So very, very nice attacking play by Honorata. Some other games uh, I want to show you. Again, it's from women's section. Um, and here we have a game between Victoria Loskutova, which, um, yeah, her rating is not that high. I mean, it's 2001, I'm not sure what's her rating in, in the classical chess, but I know she beat Elizabeth Pett in the first round, and she was facing jean Abdul Abdumalik, one of the best female players in the world, and jean lost her first game. And here, yeah, she obviously wanted to get back into the game, and here, in this position, uh, she captured the pawn on h2, which is okay, king h1, but all in all still, white is a pawn up, and black's king is kind of safe. So it's not easy for black to play for the win here. And uh, jean Sai wanted to uh, put more pressure, just to attack, forgetting that her opponent can also attack. So she played the move bishop h5. And this turned out to be a fatal mistake. Otherwise, her position was maybe slightly worse. I mean, there's still a lot of play left. Just pawn down, having some compensation, maybe not full. But bishop h5 is, in fact, a losing move. And can you spot what was wrong with this move? So there is such a saying in chess that the best defense is the attack. So white is not obliged uh, to move the queen, although still, after queen d4, the engine really loves white here, because maybe black's pieces are not so well placed here. I mean, there are some issues that this bishop might be lost. Um, but white forced the matters after bishop h5, and I think that was very nice practical move. Knight d5, so not moving the queen, just we are meeting the attack with the attack. So knight attacks the queen uh, on c7. And it's so, okay, first of all, the point is that if black takes on d5, that's one of the legal moves, there is queen takes h5, not d5, queen takes h5. And what do we have here? Uh, this is the double attack. So queen can capture d5 and also h2. Both pieces under attack, you cannot save both of them. Yeah, that would be game over. So after knight d5, black decided to capture on d1. So now the forcing sequence continues. Knight takes c7. Just let's just grab this queen. Okay, there is um, yeah the bishop hanging on b3. That's okay. But then knight takes the rook. Also, let's not forget that the bishop on h2 is also hanging. So knight takes uh, a8. Bishop coming to d6, and knight coming to b6. So let's stop for the moment here. Let's calculate. So three for five against four pawns, one pawn for white, but um, black has two bishops, but white has bishop and a rook. So it's a big, big material advantage. Of course, maybe that's not that uh, immediately easy to to bring the full point home, but objectively this is just a winning position uh, for white, and yeah, I don't think uh, that was uh, enough uh, yeah, to, to create enough counter chances. Yeah, like, uh, just lost the game. So I can maybe show a few more moves. Some knight g4, trying to be active, but bishop e3, oh well, everything is covered here, so knight takes e3, rook takes e3, and uh, bishop c5, there comes knight d7. Um, yeah, it's very unfortunate that even if white doesn't play it super, super uh, precise, it's still good enough to, to win the game. So, um, yeah, bishop takes e3, uh, knight takes f8. So even though black won a pawn, the exchanges are helping white to actually win the game because there are less pieces on the board. And... Um, Still, white keeps the uh, material advantage, and that's what counts. So knight b8 just chasing the pawn, and a5, knight c6. Well, it's hard to defend this pawn, so, well, g5 was played, but 
black is just not in time to get any counterplay. So I think after knight takes e5, we can stop here. I mean, now it's very, very clear. White has easy plan just to push the a pawn down the board. That's that's all. So very sad game. Um, let's see one more game here mm, between Lela Yavahashvili, Yavahishvili against Maria Yakimova. So again, a, quite a big uh, rating difference. And I think in the first round we will have those big rating differences. However, we shouldn't forget that some of the ratings, especially of the young players, are not that uh, I mean clear uh, because. Well, I saw one of the international master is having rating of uh, 1400 uh, in the in the rapid. So yeah, well, let's just not always look at the ratings. But here, let's see what happens. Black went h4, nice attacking move. The bishop, of course, cannot take the pawn because the knight is hanging on d6. That's easy. Okay, so after h4, bishop probably has to move to f4. And then after knight takes g5, okay, the engine really loves black, black is better, but still, the game continues. I mean, it's not that clear. I mean, knight takes c8, it's possible. I think it's the game. I mean, black is better, but it's the game. Um, but here, white wanted to be a little bit tricky. So, white played knight takes b7. A tempo move, obviously, this is not a bad candidate move. It's an interesting move to, to look at. But does it work? This is the problem that, well, one thing is to understand different ideas in chess, and the other thing is that we need to really, really to calculate them precisely. Just one wrong step and, well, everything falls apart. So after knight takes b7, attacking the queen on d8, the queen took on g5. That's uh, the move white must have calculated. Now, of course, if the bishop moves, let's say to h2, well, uh, there is bishop takes h3 with the spin on the g-file, uh, yeah, that would be game over, and that's easy. But after queen takes g5, white prepared knight to e4, <coughs> just attacking the queen again with the tempo. Tempo moves are very important, very forcing in chess. So knight e4 is very nice, and where this queen needs to go? So there will be no longer the pin on the G file. Well, this this all looked very logical for White. A little bit shaky, but logical. But White missed a very nice shot here. So the question is if you can find what Black played here. Where to move the queen, or move it at all? Well, we need to look at the geometry of the chessboard, and queen takes C1 is the answer here. Because after queen takes c1, whoops, not here, queen takes c1, there is knight e2 check with a fork, attacking the king and the queen simultaneously. And uh, that allows black to get some nice material advantage. So knight e2 check, king h1, knight takes c1, and yeah, if white takes the knight on c1, there is still the bishop on g3 hanging. So. That's just not so good. Um, bishop d6 was played in the game, but then uh, knight d3, knight just escapes. Let's let's jump with this knight. Bishop takes a fate, so white gets some uh, uh, exchange here. But um, let's let's count the pawns. So it's three, four, five, three, four, five, and how many pieces uh, does black have? Black has all the pieces, and white has only three pieces. So it's, I mean, minor pieces, of course. So it's four against three. And black is essentially a piece up, minor piece up. And that's, that's easy win. I mean, rook d1, knight f4. I think uh, we, can, we can stop here. It was just completely winning game. Of course, during the game, you want to continue, especially if your opponent is low on time. You just want to make some moves. But yeah, the, the game is just decided already. So let's see some more games, and okay, let's move from the <laughs> women's section to the open section. I really like this position. It was very nice, played by Radosław Wojtaszek as Black, uh, the second best Polish player. And he was playing against Johann Sebastian Christiansen. 
and white seems to be attacking, but in fact, it's very difficult to attack. Black is just too solid, and also Wojtaszek is one of the most solid players. Uh, but here the, in, the, in the game, uh, after queen g4, which was very nice, uh, attack, I mean, looked like a nice attacking move, but it just wasn't good, because after queen a5, the queen attacked the rook, and queen attacked the knight, double attack. Of course, still, white tried to make things, things up, but uh, the game just wasn't good for white anymore. So that's all for me, and uh, yeah. The games are starting very, very soon, so let's get back to Katie and Lawrence. Welcome back. This is the World Rapid and Blitz Championships. We are day one of the Rapid, and we are already on round three. Uh, we've had two rounds, and there's been some minor upsets, I would say, Ketty. No massive shocks. But in the last round, we've just, showed, well, we've just got to see how difficult this mm -hmm. tournament is. Magnus Carlsen unable to win. Hikaru Nakamura unable to win. So they've dropped half a point meaning that some of the other big contenders are now in the lead. Jan Krzysztof Duda has been uh, playing phenomenal chess. We've seen some of his games. He's uh, had a, a breeze, to be honest. Jan Nepomnesi also uh, looking good at the moment. Uh, Anish Giri also up there, as is Fabiana Karawana and Radek Wojtaszek. So two Polish uh, superstars in the mix. Yeah, in the uh, female section, we had a big uh, upset. Yes. The first-rated player, Katarina Wachno, uh, lost the game against Ovi Devgenia. And here we have the pairings for the round three. And we can see that Jan Christoph Duda is now uh, playing on the first board against Andrei Wolotkin. Uh, and we do have Vidit Santos uh, against Jan Nepomnesh. This game will be very interesting, Lawrence. We we might focus on that one. Uh, and then we have on the board three, uh, another back against Fabiano Carvana. This, this game is going to be also very interesting. Uh, and uh, there is Giga Foparaza uh, against Alexander Grishchik. Uh, and then we have Timur Gariev against Richard Rapport on the next board. And the female section, we do have Goretzka and Alexandra now on the first board against uh, Ina Kaponenko. Uh, and uh, Azatonsky will face Alexandra Kostinik. And we have Turkan Mamedirova against Valentina Gunina. Natalia Buxa will play against Nana Zagnice. And Polina Shuvalova will face Evgenia Ovat, who just beat uh, Katarina Lachno in the round two. So very interesting pairings. And we do have already very serious uh, clashes in this round. Absolutely. Uh, it, the things are already getting very, very tight, as you said. Uh, Duda Velokitin is interesting. Andre Velokitin is, uh, Velokitin is uh, one of uh, you know one of those players that's been around forever. Actually, mm -hmm. he's more or less from my era. I actually played Andre Velokitin when I was ten years old, <laughs> and we went to the Ukraine. It the was junior time. It was the English junior team, and we went to the <laughs> Ukraine. And we played against the Lviv Chess Club. So it wasn't England against Ukraine. It was England against Lviv because they were so strong that they would mm. crush us. So Andre <laughs> has been around a long time. Very, very solid grandmaster. That's not going to be an easy game for Duda, for sure. Of course, Duda is a uh, is big favorite, but Andre is a very resilient defender. Vidit Nepomnishi is a very interesting clash. Uh, Vidit uh, is a, a very well-respected theoretician. He's helped uh, some of the top players, but he's a fantastic player. He's loved in India. He's now uh, on the streaming um, side of things as well. He's doing phenomenally there. He's, uh, he's a really nice guy. I mean, yeah. in, in the chess world, Vidit is one of my favorite people. Approved. 
of yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite people. He's uh, fantastic. Yeah, earlier today we had uh, we had breakfast uh, together with other people uh, from Chaspis, India, and Vidit just told us that he had 36 hours journey to approach Warsaw. So yeah. uh, he had quite a long trip, and um, let's see how how well he's prepared for the event. Um, yeah, that will be a, that will be a very interesting game because Vidit can be very dangerous with white as well. So this is going to be easily Jan's hardest game. Mm -hmm. And then on board four, very interesting game as well. Anish Giri, who has been playing well on two out of two, playing against a very informed Jaime Santos from Spain. Jaime, who I also know, has been talented forever, uh, is starting to show a bit of a breakthrough now, and uh, can you know he can calculate incredibly well. So that's going to be a really interesting clash. But I think you also said it, uh, Ketty. Abdu Saturov against Caruana. Now, this is a very fascinating uh, battle because a lot of people are saying Abdu Saturov has got the X factor. Mm -hmm. A lot of very experienced grandmasters are saying he could be an absolutely world-class player, top 10 player. So it'll be very interesting to see how he does against Fabiana Caruana. And after that, we still have, I mean, actually, to be honest, I should say something about this game. There are, there are two games left in this round that really look absolutely fantastic. One is Timur Gareev against Ricard Rapport. These two are two of the most creative chess players in the world. Indeed, yeah. So creative. <laughs> and another one, how about Van Forest against Duboff? That got what got my eyes to you. We have Team Magnus. Team Magnus playing, playing against, against each, other. each other. Yeah. On the screen, we can see Jan Christoph Tura uh, getting ready, and the players are in masks. Uh, but during the uh, during the play, it's not really mandatory to have the mask. And also on the on the background, you can see female board. This is Kaponenko against um, Alexandra Garechkina. So. Um, few minutes before the start and we have very interesting matchups. Yeah, I mean very we we, we really do. Even further down we haven't spoken about this young man, Ali Reza Faruja. We've not really spoken about it. Yes. So I don't know oh, what happened that. to Ali Reza. Did he drop half a point? Uh, I'm gonna check that really you, you quickly. Check that to see if Ali Reza uh, actually dropped half a point because I can't remember. We haven't discussed him yet properly. So the fact he hasn't appeared on the big boards means that well he he's uh, number two in the world nowadays in star standard chess, but maybe his rapid rating. Ah, uh, his rate. Uh, that's below. why that's his why rapid rating is a bit lower. Yeah, so and he dropped one uh, one a half point. He dropped half. Point. Uh, at the first round, he drew against the international master Kostachi. Wow. Main, okay, uh? that was that was a result we overlooked. Okay, so yeah. Ali Reza also. Well, he's on the same points now as Magnus, so it's it's not a disaster. And you carry on. Okay, by the way, Magnus Carlsen, we haven't actually spoken, playing the, the perhaps the most experienced player in this whole competition, Alexei Dreyev. Yeah. Uh, tell me somebody else who's more experienced, I don't know. Uh, this Russian grandmaster was a top 10 player for many years. Uh, of course, he's not anymore, but he can still play fantastic chess. Mm -hmm. uh, where should on the screen, and who's his opponent? Oh, Vidit. Okay. Vidit is his up. Nepomneshi is, uh, is playing Vidit, yes. Yeah. Vidit with the mask on, being very, very careful, doesn't want to. And uh, Magnus Carlsen just coming into the playing uh, venue with a camera. This is right. uh, what happens usually for, for this event. He uh, yeah. has the camera of uh, Norwegian TV. Where do you want to go first, Ketty? What, what game really uh, interests you? Um, I think Vidit's Nepomniachtchi is very Nepomniachi. interesting. Okay. And also um, Van Forest uh, Dubov is a very interesting uh, match. That okay. is a very interesting yes. Game. yes. We will keep an eye out for everything. Obviously, everybody who is watching at home, thank you for watching. Uh, it's a very, very long tournament. This is just game three. Uh, we have 13 rounds in the men and the women's section we have 11 rounds and uh, for the blitz we have more than 20 more, games. Yeah. Yes, that's going to be really crazy. 
Uh, but before that, we <laughs> we have enough uh, enough days to get in a shape to have so many games exactly. in one day. Also, the players will will get used to it. Um, uh, what do you? F how do you feel like when there is rapid in place right away? Um, is it hard for the for the players to switch from rapid to blitz uh, formats to blitz formats? Um, I don't think it's that difficult for them to do that. But one thing I do know is that. Just adjusting to rapid is, I think, the hardest thing because it's 15 minutes plus 10. It's in the middle of, it's not blitz, so you can't play super quick, and it's not mm -hmm. classical. It's, it's in that gray area, and mm -hmm. uh, Magnus talks about this a lot, actually, that it's very difficult to make the adjustment. But yeah. they play so much blitz online mm -hmm. that um, I think the adjustment to blitz is actually quite easy, but rapid mm -hmm. is actually the hard, the hard format. I do love rapid. Uh, you like rapid? Too. Yeah, I do love okay. rapid. Uh, You're not a blitz. Um, well, I can play, but I still need some time to find, like, to remember the lines. Yeah. It, it takes some time for me. Uh, so rapid is really comfortable. Okay. Format for me right. personally, because I, I like to think <laughs> over things sometimes. Um, Absolutely. E Waiting for the kickoff here, you can see Magnus Carlsen, Alexei Dreyev. Alexei in his typical pose, always with oh, yeah, one hand. Yeah, that's right. Usually has one hand. One hand in, in his here, mouth. And another one hand yes. on the stomach. Yep. Yeah, this is how I remember him yeah. from the tournament. <laughs> that's so interesting, right? He has yeah, the same he's pose. kept the pose for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder how Magnus is going to approach. Alexei is so solid as well. I'm very curious uh, what Magnus will try to do against Dreyev. He's probably thinking already, how should I, uh, mm -hmm. how should I play against Alexei? Yeah, but it's uh, a bit tough. Uh, so far, we have seen two, um, two games with endgame. Uh, in the first game, Magnus was pretty lucky. Uh, Very lucky, yeah. Yeah, that Blunder appeared on move 104. Mm -hmm. And the second game, the opponent was really careful, and uh, it ended with king against king. Uh, and we're going to see what's going to happen in the third game. I personally uh, expect this going to be a quite sharp game. Rather than it could be. It depends, it depends how Alexei is. I, I guess, you know, Alexei is probably thinking, yeah, let's have some fun, right? Why should I suffer a, a hundred move, slightly worse position against Magnus? So maybe Alexei will play some kind of Sicilian or something, or... Uh, I'm very curious to see how Alexei actually decides to open the game. I say Magnus probably plays 1e4 here uh, because I don't think Alexei is, uh, is you know, a Berlin player or a Petrov player. So I think Magnus will open e4. Mm -hmm. Very curious to see. Obviously, yeah. the, everybody's waiting yep. for the start. I just want to say, everybody at home, apart from thanking you for watching, of course, please do get involved. Uh, Twitter, uh, Remember to uh, tweet us at FeedHS. Um, yeah, and also share the link uh, among your friends please or do. on your uh, social media. Let's let's bring more people into the into the chess world. Um, chess became so popular lately uh, for the last uh, few years, and this of your action might also support to uh, to get more people into this sport. And we can talk a little bit about our uh, our venue as well. This is quite a special venue here. Yes, it's um, huge. It's <laughs> huge. We, I mean, we, we just had five minutes to get a small drink <laughs> because uh, you talk nonstop for two hours. You need it. And to get a drink, you have to run a football pitch. <laughs> so uh, we are in the national stadium, stadium. of Poland. Yes. Uh, how that's Stadium Naro? My Polish is not so yeah, good. Yeah, neither mine. But, but yeah. the Polish football team plays here, and it's, it's international stadium. It's an international yeah. stadium. It's uh, got lots of VIP areas and lots of different can uh, canteens. Stadium, Stadium Narodowy. Stadium Narodowy. Okay, Stadium Narodowy. Very nice place. Uh, huge. <laughs> so plenty of room for chess, and uh, even with the distancing. Remember, if you look at the tables. Yeah. Remember, years ago, we didn't have these distancing of the yeah. tables. No. So now, because of the corona rules, you need to distance. Yeah, it's quite comfortable. It's very comfortable. play uh, next to 
uh, next to other player and uh, yeah this tournament was organized in a uh, very short time not even weeks in a few days literally a few days right it's yeah. amazing that they've managed to do this I'm, I, I again I, I think it's I think it's really important because this tournament is the for many for many players is actually the the tournament that they want to play mm -hmm. you know a lot of the grandmasters in this tournament are strong grandmasters but they don't get the chance to to play against the elite so this is their only chance because they will never play magnus in a classical game or or any you know yeah, or true. whoever so it's a really important tournament and uh, just in the end of the year and after this tournament we're starting new year start and again. a new circle of the tournament so uh to end the um year with um one year with a successful event, it's quite important. Did you ever us. play uh, the World Rapid? Yes, I did. Yeah, you did? You played it, yeah? Did you enjoy it? Did you have fun? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. It's quite a tough event, I should yeah, say, sure. because it's it's uh, very long and your opponents are not easy. You lose your game, you just play against still very um, very strong opponents. I do enjoy that, uh, but I enjoy this more, <laughs> to be honest. Um, because you know it's um, these players they have trained for uh, for months for this uh, uh, tournament and I know some of them even had some special um, spiritual training. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. Um, wh where do you play five rounds in a in a day? Not not in every tournament, That's right? True, so yeah. it's rapid tournament. It's mm, it's okay, fast, not classical mm -hmm. control, but still it needs some effort. Uh, so I know that. Players, uh, they had beforehand very uh, intense uh, preparation. So. Yes, and oh, a bit of a delay. Now, I, I don't know why this is. It looks as though something mm -hmm. is. Yeah, we see Magnus Something Carlson. is happening. They've put the masks on. Uh, people getting up. Yes. Very unusual because I think we are ready to go so i don't know what the delay actually is magnus looking a little uh a little uh, he wanted to get going you know he's ready to go and uh yeah he put the mask and he just looked like happy a lot <laughs> of steps radic now with his radic with his look at this how uh oh maybe there's some opening no i don't think very very unusual they're looking at one all of them. I wish to know what's going on, but we are quite far from this, uh, uh, from the venue. Yes. And, uh, and also the playing venue itself is divided into top boards and the um, rest of the game, rest of the uh, matches. So maybe we'll get some information later on. No idea how this is shaving. Okay, well, while we wait for them, let's, uh, I see Oh, okay, the uh -oh. officers are... Uh, there is a uh, talking bit of chat. Informing the players what's going on. Uh, this is Magnus Golfen talking to the arbiter. I see Shara. Uh, Magnus not happy, and we do have some kind of issue. So oh, wow. I, I, I wonder what is actually going on here. Uh, for them not to have started, Rick, Rickard Rapport now getting involved. Clearly a, a few unhappy people here. So we will try and get <laughs> some information as, to, as yeah. to what's going on. This is the time when I really wish to have a microphone in the, in the playing venue to just uh, hear out what's going on. Okay, Magnus back at his seat. Look at his face. <laughs> and <laughs> pulling a typical Magnus <laughs> face. <laughs> Look at his face. Um, yeah, Ketty, let, let me ask you a question. Hmm. You can be, you, you don't have to be uh, a commentator for this. You can just be a chess fan. Right. Who do you want to win the, the main event and the women's event? Who, who are your favorite mm -hmm. players? Well, in, in, in women's events, there, there are a few of my friends and one of my best friends who is quite strong and of course I support uh, yeah. my friends um, and in uh, in in open section I support uh, I support young talent and a future so young uh, talented uh, so yeah. anybody young and talented is 
is <laughs> so there are so many though you know look at look at even this round we have yeah. Abdul Saturov he's absolutely super absolutely we need to, we need young people to Ali be Renta. more um, more supported and uh, we need more more of them. Yeah, also um, myself, I live in Poland, and um, Jan Christoph today is doing uh, such a great work for chess, and he's That's a great, great ambassador of, mm -hmm. of chess, so um, clearly. Um, so Jan Christoph as well is, yeah, is, is, is on the list. I can tell you there's only one English player playing. Really? Yeah, I think oh. so. David Howe. Oh, he's playing, I okay. Well, yeah, he was here, so unless he's just come for the for the company now. I, yeah. know, I know he's playing, but I don't know how many points he's got. So let me check that really quickly. And uh, yeah, you know when there is uh, your friends are playing or yeah. uh, or your uh, people from your fa uh, country, of course, uh, the heart goes to, to So we want David them. to win, but I don't think we've got any in the women's section, if I remember correctly. Oh, is that? Um, it's an interesting, well, we can talk about English chess another time, but <laughs> I'm for the English <laughs> Yeah, Hall is playing, and he doing? Uh, he's doing okay. He he won the fr uh, he drew the first uh, he game. Lost the he lost the no, second. No, he's not doing okay. That's bad for David. He lost it. Uh, I wanted to be polite. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> we are realists. That's a bad start for David. That's okay. I thought all English people are polite, so that's that's why I tried to be one. And here we have uh, the chief arbiter on the screen. This is also Georgian Marika Chaparita. I wonder what has happened because something has clearly bothered. Oh, me. some some some, some noise maybe outside or can be. Oh, look at him. We need we need a person who can read. So, are you, you're not good at lip reading, Katie. I'm not. How about you? I'm very good. <laughs> so what do you see? What is that? I think it's to do with noise outside. Mm -hmm. I think there's too much disturbance. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a place uh, for uh, spectators. Exactly. You think it might be some uh, some noise, but uh, he will not hold the hold the uh, game, the round, right? I think maybe there is some um, some issue with the pairings or with the results. I'm not sure it's with the pairings. Very we we very need we need an arbiter on the yeah, on I, team, I'm, you know, I'm just to check what's going I'm on. I'm very very curious. Oh, Lars, there is a, there is a, the tournament I was commentating uh, uh, with uh, uh, Miros Nichenko, and for two hours we were just commentating uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia. There yeah. was one, one, one issue in the game of uh, Inarkiev and um, Carlson, and uh, this lasted for like two hours, and we had no access in the playing venue, and we had no idea what was going on. We need a reporter. Yes. Kessie, you can run down there. Get your on. mic and <laughs> we'll find out what's going on. Oh, they're moving tables now. What? So something has something has really bothered either it goes Christoph or what is I going know on? what's going on. I know what's going on. Young Christoph did that place on the first board. But as I know, Carlson, Magnus Carlson, has to be always on the first board. Because of uh, the, the TV, TV rights. Factors, yes. I see. So that might be an issue because... Uh, um, they just switch their places. But now, okay. Well, we we will find out after the game what happened. Because Maybe our chat knows about it. Yeah, chat let's always see if chat knows, knows about this. So yes. I will just go to YouTube. And uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> Carlson is getting bored. <laughs> He's getting. It, but it is. It's an, you know when you're sitting in your chair and you want to start and you yeah. can't start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit frustrating sometimes. So. Yeah. Rickard is up and Jan is up. They don't look like they're even close to starting yet. Wow. So we're probably uh, quite some time behind, actually. Uh, we're running mm -hmm. at least 10 minutes late. Yes, yeah, so I'm now in the chat of uh, FIDE YouTube. And um, let's we, see you, if you we have some spectators. Chat, I'll, I'll tell you. Magnus growing even more. Uh, frustrated because he just wants to start and all of this delay and delaying your rhythm is, is very annoying. Jan Chistov there playing of course the hmm. 
it's solid. interesting because yeah, girls are not really um, complaining uh, about about anything. If it's noise, is there? I'm sure girls are the first who are going to complain about it. The girls complain more than the guys about. Oh, noise. we do, we yeah. do. <laughs> what else do you? <laughs> what else do you complain about? Okay, we have. Oh, we have, right, it. Here we we have it. Good news, Magnus. Hi, he plays. Uh, a system that he kind of uh, uh, kind of experienced, let's say, or in the World Championship match. So I think the game kicked off with uh, we'll get we'll get the exact move order. Yeah, d4, d5, knight three, knight six, and now this very quiet pawn to g3 move, which uh, he's done quite a lot of work on recently, and there are a lot of different subtleties. Of playing this particular move order, and yeah, uh, we won't get into those now today, but I can tell you that it's uh, it's it's something that he's done enormous work on. Mm -hmm. So now we'll see Alexei Dreyev what he decides to do. Let's quickly go to Jan Chistov Duda, who's got a very classical opening of Queen's Gambit decline. So we'll see. Uh, Volokitin goes for uh, the Ragozin, Bishop d4. Mm -hmm. So again, we are just in mainline theory, and we have a Ragozin Rogozin mainline. So we'll see what happens there. Vidit Nepomnishi, another Ragozin. Wow, so we've got two yeah. almost identical positions, except there was a capture. Uh, Vidit playing white. I just captured the uh, knight. Correct. Giri against Jaime Santos is, a, uh, is a, an Italian game, very uh, sort of popular. And wow, I mean, Abdu Saturov against Fabiano is a funky English. Really interesting. C4, E5, knight C3, bishop B4, knight D5. And now bishop E7, this is a move that Vichy played a lot. D4 is the main way, D6, knight F3, E4, knight D2, and now C6. Okay. And the idea here is that uh, you have to take this bishop, knight takes e7, queen takes e7, and now apparently a good move is to undevelop the knight to then be able to bring it to a much more pleasant square, and of course the bishop can come out. Oh wow, this is uh, this is such a heavy theory here, like because you don't play knight goes backwards at this point. Like yeah. e three looks here like a normal move. Right, e stop that right. But in the same lines, as you mentioned, this bishop stacks and on c1 and cannot develop. Uh, and he goes for it, knight Abdul d1. Saturov does know his stuff. And he knows the knight stuff, knight. yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so where should we sit? Uh, how about uh, Dubov and... Uh, uh, Dubov. Dubov and Van Forest. Let's also go. quite, uh, actually, they're playing... <laughs> A lot of the openings they've uh, they've studied together recently, so that's very interesting. So that's not too too much going on. That's another um, Spanish Italian structure. And actually, I have to say the Magnus Carlsen game is quite interesting because we have a, uh, a Slav, and I'm I'm really happy that Alexei Drev is testing Magnus here, but I'm also a bit worried about for Alexei because. I mean, Magnus has just been studying these positions for a long time. Yeah, he has uh, also played something similar against Nepomniachtchi, right? Um, we had in that. The, in the game win when Is it game two? won. Oh, oh you're talking about game six? Yeah. Or eight. The it was also uh, Catalan. No, that was, uh, yeah, that was a slightly different Catalan, right? Mm. So. But this one with this pawn sacrifice, this is very interesting. So look at this by Magnus Carlsen, pawn to b3. So you, you've, you're already a pawn down, and you offer another pawn. And when you take, the idea is to take back with the pawn now. On the face of it, it looks as though black is OK. But black has actually got some serious long-term problems. Yeah. This diagonal, this pawn. Development, yeah. And white has got two squares. Very key squares. If he can control c5 and a5, sometimes getting a knight to one of these squares is a really pleasant position. Mm -hmm. uh, is there also bishop d2, bishop a5, most like that? Oh, 
possibly, I mean, we just have to be a little bit careful about mm -hmm. this move, but it might be there. But it's one of those positions that apparently you can just play, and the engines just play it. You've got a central majority as well, so you can get some initiative in the center and on the, and on the queen side. Uh, so I'm very curious as to how Dreyev will uh, approach this position. But uh, it can get very unpleasant very quickly. Try. So I'm very, very curious. Also, the other knights uh, from b8 has to really uh, guard c6 pawn. Otherwise, like if knight is 7 or development, then c6 pawn might be hanging. Sometimes you can actually give it up. For example, the move knight d7 straight away might not be a blunder. Because if you take on c6, mm -hmm. I can play the move queen b6. Mm -hmm. And it's not clear that this is terrible for black. Because the knight is actually kind of trapped. If you go I knight a5, then I'm just doing fine. I can just take, mm -hmm. take, and just play normally. I have the d5 square. Mm -hmm. I can put a bishop on b4 or play bishop b7. It looks completely, looks completely fine. So, yeah, I mean, you can go knight bd7. It's, it, it's a standard idea. Mm -hmm. There's also knight fd7. Ideas knight to play F against knight. Oh, he knight does go knight. knight. There you go. He does go oh, knight. Oh, nice. Seven. Nice, nice, nice. So now Magnus will decide. Uh, of course, he's going to take on c6, but. Uh, How about bishop takes on c6? There's another move we can check out. Um, it feels weird to take this way. Takes, mm -hmm. takes, queen b6. I don't know. It doesn't look like black has got any big troubles here. So let's see how Magnus decides to to continue. Okay. Let's quickly check in with the Vidit versus Naponishi game. And uh, we had a. Uh, Rogozin takes and queen a4 check, forcing the knight to come out to c6. Mm -hmm. uh, these kind of positions have been played a lot. Okay, a bit of jostling, and white gets the center. So white should be reasonably happy. c4 is an excellent move by Vidit. Queen d2. D5 and Queen B2 and Knight C5. And we have this position here. And I guess Jan is basically saying, I'm not really worried. I'm not fighting for an advantage or something, but I'm, I'm just not worried. Mm -hmm. yep. Because your E4 pawn is on free, and it's very difficult to defend that pawn. Because if you go Knight D2, then you lose your attack on the E5 pawn, and black has got perfect pieces. Yeah, Queen can get up to so uh, not not a particularly exciting position just yet I'm having a quick look at what could be extremely exciting to look at nothing just yet is mm. screaming out at me yeah the most um, exciting for me is to to find out what was going on <laughs> Yeah, beginning. I'm also. And it's going to happen right after the end of the this round. So here we have this position with queen b6. Uh, yeah, so queen b6 was in fact played. So we've had this position already. And now the big question is, does have Ma Magnus have the move pawn to d5 here? That is a huge question. And he has played it. Mm -hmm. So this is very interesting. Knight takes d5. Okay. And now... Wait, he played d5? Yeah, but well he's got an idea. Knight takes d5, knight a5. This is, this is a theory or a... I have no idea. Oh, wow. But d5. it's a genius idea. The idea is now the the bishop is, uh, is dropping and I'm pretty sure Magnus has kind of had this position in his preparation. 
So I'll remove, like, let's say bishop to e7. You can take, take, and go knight c3. And the point is, if you take, I take, and if you take, I finally take the rook, and I win. Yeah, that's absolutely winning. So that's, uh, that's just winning. So this is a genius concept. Look at this, Ketty. So he blocks the diagonal to be able to play this knight to the rim move. Uh, this is just very special. I think this is, uh, this is um, one of his uh, home preparations. Yes. With him for the right moment. 100%. 100%. He played so fast. Yeah. This move didn't even fast. Yeah. Now Alexei has got a real problem because solving this over the board is really not a fun task at all, especially when you know Magnus has has looked at this and this is part of his world championship preparation. Yep. Nice man. Very nice. Yep, I, I love oh this. Yeah. And Alexei <laughs> uh, with the uh, leaning back in the chair and thinking, ah, mm, well, that's new. <laughs> how am I going to solve this one in 10 minutes? Yeah, that's This is new. just very unpleasant because why does God just a direct threat? taking on b7 and going knight c3. So what about a move like rook c8, let's say. Let's say I take, because otherwise bishop a8 maybe. So let's say I take, take. And now for sure Magnus just plays bishop b2. Mm. Firstly, it threatens knight c3, exploiting the pin. And secondly, you stop black being able to develop. Now, this position to my eyes just looks humble. Look at these bishops. Yeah. Yeah, for a Catalan player, this is a very comfortable position. That's true. Is just, just to sacrifice the pawn and then to play pleasant. Position. This is just and this is extremely pleasant. This is so lovely. This is the yeah. dream, basically. So I have got uh, really high hopes for Magnus to win this game. Uh, do you want something interesting? Yes, tell um, me. Let's go to Nadir Black against uh, Kalana. Yes. Oh, wow. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> What is this? This looks unbelievable for white. What happened here? So we had this idea in the opening of knight b1. Yeah. Okay, they got their pieces out. Okay, Flaviano went immediately to try and uh, kind of refute this. Okay, bishop b2, queen b2. This is all kind of standard. And Flavi just gave the b7 pawn. He played knight, uh, knight c7 here. Obviously, he didn't blunder it. The idea... I don't think he blundered it. Or did he just blunder? Because this is quite easy to calculate. And if rook b6, queen a4, you have to show me where the compensation is. And I don't see it. I don't see it either. So what did Fabiano want to do here? What a strange decision. Rook b8, queen takes c6. Yeah, bishop d7, you lose the knight. Rook b6, I have queen a4. Mm -hmm. So rook takes b2, so you win a pawn back. But bishop c1 simply. He, he played quite fast, this move, and he just started to yeah. play now. And they have made several moves. Yeah, so rook b6, queen a4, rook f8. And now this is another great move by Abdusator. C5, b c5, bishop a3. Bishop I mean, a3. this wow. is unbelievable chess by Abdusator. This is unbelievable chess. Uh, Fabiano's position looks just dead lost yeah. because I'm controlling this. There's no rook a6. How do you stop me going bishop take c5 on the next move? And uh, if you play knight d7, yeah, knight d7. I was thinking might that. Queen, you know, you felt like d takes c5, knight takes c5, so queen d4, queen d4. Looks crushing. Yeah. Takes even taking on a7 possibly or some queen a5 or queen b4, queen b4 but yeah. I mean there's just a, a nasty pin here yeah. like queen d4 rook c6 what if we just keep on adding to this pin just looks completely over to my eyes because rook d8 I've got bishop takes c5 at least maybe I can even just drop back maybe I can even just go queen c3 because this is pinned everything is pinned everything is loose Unbelievable. Yeah. And this I don't have a feeling that uh, uh, Fabiano actually planned this one. 
Like I mean, how can you his, plan this? Uh, his, his no, I mean, preparation no, or uh, calculation. Queen d7 on the board, but this is a, an, a, an admission that uh, he hates his life because you can just take. You can take also with the pawn. Yeah, take with the, the pawn, but there, yeah. this is just two bishops, extra pawn. Actually, a7 is vulnerable as well, so you have to think about that. But let's say you Seven. go here. Now you can just bring your pieces into the game. How about bishop d6 to queen the knight with idea knight c5 next to me? I love it. Yeah. I love it. And this is, uh, this is just uh, pretty much uh, game over. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a technical win. So Fabiano is going to need a miracle. And bishop takes c5 has been played. The very disappointing for Fabi fans uh, so far. And Abdul Saturov, who knows what he can do in this tournament? Is he gonna, do, is he, is he gonna play like uh, Ali Reza did a couple of years ago? It's very possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gareev Rapport is a bit more calm than I thought, although of course it's not a, it's not a, um, it's, it's a classical crazy, structure. It's crazy, yes, yeah. uh, as we expected. It's, it's not a classical structure, that's for sure. Yeah, not so not many of our viewers know about uh, Timur Gariev. Uh, he is a uh, very extraordinary person and he plays uh, blindfold chess uh, yep. over 20 boards. At so, the same like time, that. he's yeah. also do some, some workout on the bicycle. So that's quite impressive. Yeah, and he jumped out of a plane. Oh yeah, with a chessboard. With a chessboard. Would you ever do that, Kirsten? Never, never. No. I've been asked that, and I was really? like, no way. No, it's not your thing? No, no way. No, I know. <laughs> no way. <laughs> okay. Well, how about you? Um, you might think? I think about it, but I would like to do it without the parachute. <laughs> <laughs> last game. My last game. <laughs> there we go. Let's go. No. Uh, yeah. I would do it actually. I think, I think I would do it. Yeah. I, I, nice. I, I, Maybe you can play. Um, you I'll can play, play Timo. Yeah. Against him. Okay. Where should we go? Let's have a quick look at Giri against uh, against Santos. And uh, looks like a very pleasant position for Anish. Big grip on d5. Uh, black cannot organize b5. Mm -hmm. Uh, white is uh, has got the key squares, so it's one of those typical positions which look uh, just very unpleasant for black. It's very difficult to play play accurate moves. Mm -hmm. So all yep. of you Giri fans out there, and there are a lot of you, you should be happy with this position because Anish is doing well. Duda Velocatin, very solid position. As I told you, Andre mm -hmm. Velocatin, you know, he's, he's a solid guy and uh, very solid position. Let's see what happened in the Magnus game because this got very interesting. So, Rook D8 did happen, I think. Uh, knight A5, Rook D8, takes, takes. Knight C3. And he did take. Okay. Okay. This time he doesn't lose the exchange, but a7 is basically on freeze. Bishop c5, and here bishop to b2. Now the engine bar Drops really right. didn't like that. How about castle here? Yeah, so castle is what Alexei did. And I guess the idea is that if bishop c6, uh, attacking the knight, attacking the pawn, can you just go here and say, if you want my pawn, I'm never going to lose this position. I can park my bishop on b6. 94, I can, I 94, I can exchange rooks. So, of course, Alexei would be very happy with that. So, Magnus, maybe, after bishop c5, why didn't he play bishop c6 immediately? Does it make a difference? Maybe it doesn't make a difference. Okay, well, he's played like this, and rook a c1. Play so fast. He plays really, really fast. All these Playing moves. very, very fast indeed. Yeah. yeah. Rook AC1. 
How about Bishop D6 right there? Yeah, that's the that's the most natural move. And I guess he wants to go Bishop ah, C6. Ah, Bishop A3. Or Bishop A3. That's what he wants to do. Well and played. then Bishop Yeah, and C6. then Bishop C6. Well done, yeah. yeah. Bishop A3, hitting the rook, mm -hmm. and Bishop C6. And a lot of pins. Yeah. Yes, that's what he wants to do. Tricky. Very tricky. So where do you put this? Uh, he, he's so so dangerous player. Like you think he just makes in just a random move yes. really fast. You think you feel comfortable with your position, and after a few moves, not even a lot of moves, you just feel that you you, you fall for his trap. Indeed. Goes rook d four. Oh, okay, yeah, bishop b four and rook d four with a si with a listen. similar similar idea. If bishop a five, does he want to go bishop a three? Possibly. Rook d1, knight somewhere looks plausible. Or does he want to do something really genius? No. Uh, does he want to ever come here or not? To provoke some mm -hmm. weakness with f6 After and then this just F6 come back or something. Takes the square from the knight. Yeah, exactly. And you weaken the light squares. So I wonder, I wonder what he wants to do now. Let's go to the current position, rook d4. So and uh, actually, bishop a5 looks quite uh, quite logical move. Otherwise, rook gets on c7, and this will be a very tricky position for black. And uh, um, but now bishop c6, knight moves I can take. But even this bishop b6, how bad can life be for black here? Or is this where I just show that I don't understand chess? This well, might be one of those. <laughs> no, no, I think black. Uh, this is uh, something that doesn't black look would like bad. to it would like to have. Although, like Magnus can still play that position for win. Uh, but how about like to play rook g4 here, bishop a3? Maybe that's. Uh, if this is still his home preparation, I expect one of those moves rather than Bishop I don't C6. think. Do you think we're in preparation still? I think, yeah, he knows do? some. Do yeah. you? I think, yeah. Really? Like, he knows that something is wrong and he okay. can go to this end game. Okay. For instance, after Bishop A5 and Bishop A3, do you think D4? Yes. Does? Okay, and That's in this end game. That's why I didn't want to play Bishop A3. Yeah. I thought Black was doing okay here. If you take, 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 the knight is, I mean, how can I be doing too how about How about to press on a7 pawn then, rook a1? After, instead of bishop a3? No, 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 in that position, in that position. Maybe he knows that that's oh, better sorry. end game. Oh, we had some We had some moves, actually. Sorry. Let, let's go to the moves. Because, yeah, sure. Knight c5. Uh, he decided to go knight c5 and take on b7 and get this end game. So... Again, an endgame which uh, doesn't look too bad for black to me, except that he, if he could put this knight on d5 successfully without mm -hmm. being pushed, he would be okay. But the knight at the moment doesn't have... Uh, yeah, it takes, it takes long to get in there. And how about to, to attack on a7 pawn now? Rook a1? Yeah. I guess knight d6. And rook goes on a5. Yeah, but I think the problem with that is, let's even say here I just played h6 and mm -hmm. I let you take. Mm -hmm. Ah, you've got bishop e5. Yeah. Sorry, I wanted to do this. And rook a8. b8. Rook b8. Yeah. And if you have to go rook a3, I'm probably doing quite well. Nice e4, right? Here, yeah, bishop e5. Yeah, well, knight c4, I might not even have to do that so quickly. I might be able to improve somehow. But yeah, bishop e5. So we can't do it like this. So we'd have to go with f6. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, this is a position? Yeah, bishop a3, rook f8, rook c6 by Magnus. Okay. Well, still, you would take white because my bishop is better than your knight. I love how he's playing bishop a3, rook c6. Yes. That stacks the knight on b7. Yes. Knight cannot really freely move. 
yeah, he has right. to calculate so all these lines because there is a problem on the back rank. Exactly. There will be a checkmate. And checkmate. Yeah. So. So this puts very into a very uncomfortable situation to you or to Alexei. So he plays h6, giving himself yeah. room, and rook a6. Oh, now and we're going to get pawn. this, and we, he's winning a pawn now. So Are you convinced now? <laughs> or not yet? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not convinced that this was uh, all done at home. But now look at the, the situation we have. We have rook takes a7. Ooh. Ooh. I wouldn't want to be Alexei here. Mm -mm. Double rook ending a pawn down against Magnus. Four minutes on the clock. Uh, very unpleasant. Yeah. Let's go back to the Abdus Saturov game. And basically nothing has changed. Abdus Saturov just has... Pair of bishop and uh, one extra pawn. Extra pawn, pair of bishops. Now, there of course there are chances for Fabiano to hold, but... Uh, there. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to need... Real lot of help. Uh, over here in this game oh. between Vidit and Nepomneshi, it looks as though Black has solved all of his problems, and White's king is a lot weaker than Black's. White's pawns are bigger targets. This looks very, very bad for White. Can I, I would try say. bishop b1, queen, queen c2? this battery it's never even mate that's the problem mm, it's, it's never even mate, and it takes forever yeah yeah mm, yeah this this pawn structure is not really good for uh, for whites because the bishop is also light square and it's quite limited mm -hmm. f h4 h3 was played uh, yeah he wanted to give some look okay king f8 is a really nice move by yen who uh, well, that just kills my idea of bishop b1. It, it just puts the king on a nice dark square. Very nice position for Jan. This would be a huge win, actually. That would give him some serious uh, momentum. Giri against Santos is still slightly better for white, it seems. This bishop uh, hitting here, but it's well protected. You know what knight f5 might be a threat here? Yeah, knight f5 and rook g3 check actually looks... Uh, knight g4, queen g5, queen g6. Again, it's, it becomes very, uh, very concrete, but it, it's the move, isn't it? Knight f5 that you're looking at. True. Yeah. So Jaime Santos now having to also... Uh, at least he he's thinking. Uh, he's thinking and yeah, he he's, he's think. losing some time. Uh, maybe Kiri will just play rook d1 next move and target d6 pawn, but uh, uh, Santos has to think he routes what happens after knight f5 sacrifice. Yeah, very very tricky indeed. Oof. You know what Say he's going to do? He's going to do king g2, king g2, king f3, king g4, king h5. No, he's not going to do that. <laughs> no? No. It's too much. It's too much. Okay, he'll uh, bring king for sure in the center. Well, he might want to fix with g4. This is the typical move that okay. they play to fix the pawns. And if rook d4, h3, and claim that this uh, fixing of the structure is, works in his favor. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the advanced black pawns, for example, um, let's say you go king g2, maybe black can just go h5 here. I also but feel like after this you can just provocate this uh, once uh, f f one, and after f six you can get the rook on the back rank. Where sorry? On like I mean, in case of h five, then what yeah. can just attack the pawn like yeah. a five? Yeah. And just provocate f six pawn f pawn, and yeah, then and to then go gap back. back. Yeah. Exactly. That would be very bad for Black. So let's see how Alexei. Yeah, Magnus didn't play that. He played rook e7. He wants to get into the uh, rook end game with uh, Now the question rook. is, is this single rook ending with a b pawn very, very good for white? Or is this 
actually quite a decent version of black. I'm not so sure, Ketty. I'm not so sure. With the A pawn, black would be happy. With, yeah. the, with the B pawn, I'm not so sure. And in fact, we're going to get this. Maybe he, he plans to push g4 to fix that weakness on h6. Mm. I'm so surprised that he, well, he goes with this rook end game. Yeah. Right now, without king g2 moves, g4 move. Although the bar says that this is still uh, quite a... Yeah, but I think this is one of those ones that the machine doesn't really <laughs> truly yeah, appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is another thing that the pawn, pawn is on b3, so the rook, if the rook comes on b file. Doesn't and have there's much G4. of the space. Yeah, G4 looks uh, quite natural here yeah. to fix this pawn. And how about to bring the king then um, Over. on D3, let's say? Yeah, or from, yeah. Not to push the B pawn yet? Yeah, so for example, he might go E3. E3, first. king F1, king E2, king D2 yeah. to control that uh, square. Uh, because black's king is, uh, is uh, very passive here. Yeah, rook d3 is a um, very interesting move. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so curious that why he didn't went for rook c1, rook c1, right away. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, so he maybe he just d4 goes d4 immediately. Four. Well, he can get behind. Yeah. But it's one of those ones where Magnus has got a lot of space for his king to mm -hmm. come in. So... Okay, well, uh, maybe we can. Well, we can watch it, or maybe is there another? This is kind of long, maybe longer, and we can go some other game. Yeah. About Caruana. Okay. Uh, and we had an exchange of minor pieces, and Abdul Saturov now trying to create the pawn center. Mm -hmm. And black cannot really hold this position, no, this center. Not. Like in case of f5, there is g4 check, right. and then uh, uh, black will fall. Um, still, yeah, we can take. And bishop e7. And bishop e7, yep. Mm -hmm. That wins immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, so f3. And bishop d6, and f takes e4. What? <laughs> what have we missed? Sorry, what, he's won a second pawn. That's and nice after knight f6, you just go... E5? E5? Is that what... No, you can go Bishop king d3, Ketty, look. Oh, you can no. go king d3, and on king takes d6, now I go e5, e5. check. That's king e6, I take, take, and you can resign with black, yeah. because I go king c4, I have the passport. Yeah. Wow. Now, um, there is another line. And he played it. And he no. played it, sorry. <laughs> he played okay. it. This is just a uh, game. This is just over. What's the time situation? I see eight, almost nine minutes for white. And uh, yeah. Karana has two. This is, is that two or five? He two. goes a4, but now you can keep the bishop on the board even. You can play bishop a3. Uh, it's just the most natural move in the world. And now you're ready to go d5, bishop d2 check. Uh, it's wow. just... A catastrophic game. For it's quite an upset uh, yeah. for uh, Fabiano Carana. Huge. Huge. There was, uh, there was a blunder on b7 and then on c6, and then after that he actually never had a chance to right. fight back. And now the sponsor is just uh, unstoppable, right? Yeah. Uh, what is simply pushing with you the help of the bishop and the king. king d4. I think he will just ignore h2 pawn and push bishop b2 and then uh, king d4 even. Ah, you could ignore it if you want, yeah. Mm. I like that. And just king d4. Yeah. Yeah, and Fabi's had enough. <laughs> he just said that's, that's just too much. So, wow. a, a fantastic win for the young Abdus yeah. Aturov from Uzbekistan. Um, I said it before the round, Keti. People are saying this guy is the real deal. And he played just a perfect game mm -hmm. against Fabiano today. Uh, Fabiano, of course, blundered, but even still, he made it look very, very easy. No mistakes.
mistakes. No mistakes. It was very clean. Very clean. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's go to. Yeah. Yeah. This young uh, young players, they just they they, they don't afraid, and um, if you give them chance, they will use it. Like Absolutely. Professionals, yeah. like well experienced players. That's that's so impressive. Yeah. Let's go back to Magnus. We've got the camera. Let's see. Okay, Alexei playing a very, uh, yeah, I, I like what Alexei has done, actually. Uh, to trade as much pawns as yep. possible, right? And to actually make the pawns less dynamic for white. So after takes, takes, these pawns are not very dynamic. Uh, uh, but rook b8 might be a problem because I'm threatening that. Yeah. I think uh, white king will sneak on e5, d6, e7 at some point. Let's say b7, king, king g7, g7, and now king can start, like, let's start with e3. Mm -hmm. And you come over? Yeah, you get the king on d4. Like so let, let me just, avoid that. I, will let you, yeah. I will let you get your position. And uh, king b4, you might start checking checks here. Well, let's say I go rook b5. Okay, now we king c4. Win. Yeah, let's say so. King c5. And now the point is you come in behind. Yes. That's what you want. So and if I check on top you, of it, e6 pawn is and a and e6 is lo yeah. This looks horrible. And the problem Black has got here is that he can never uh, move the king because it's check, and I queen the pawn. Yeah, the king can only move on h7, and that's even far far from. Uh, all the action. Precisely. And he goes we have right, B7. B7 King G. We have this on yeah. the board. Yeah? Yeah. Well, if we have this on the board, it's That's it's all over. It's on the board. It's just all over. Drev is, is dead here because he's in total Zugzwang. And yeah, the White King finds. Uh, he tries E5. He pushes the pawn now. Um, you can actually grab that pawn, but just ignore is, I think, is... But that would be a sure. bad decision. Rook e8, rook takes b7, rook takes e5 is mm -hmm. quite an easy draw for black after king f6. Mm, yeah. So you can't, mm -hmm. you can't do that. So Magnus plays f3, which is a class move. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to come over. And he stops the pawn on e5 not to be uh, pushed on e4, because e4 is... Exactly. Uh, it's create some, some something. And now... Yeah. It's only Rook who can move. Rook b1. Okay, now he's just going to walk with the king. King c2. Then king will go on c5 and king will go on e6, I think. And the king will, st or d5 even, and start to collect those pawns. Is there a way to uh, create a counterplay for black? Oh, he goes with, he goes e4. with e4. Not sure that's necessary, but it's probably good. What does he want to do? F4 and just king F2? H4, H4 king, king H3, maybe? Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a really beautiful <laughs> solution. No, that's yeah. really beautiful. King H3, king G4, that's, that's yeah. hard to stop that. That's king. really beautiful. Yeah, and the king just comes in and Pac-Man. Yep, this is just no doubt Magnus is going to win this. Okay, this is... Very impressive. Let's have a look at Duda. It's been a while since we've been there. And, well, Duda with what looks like a lovely position, but is it good enough? So what happens, yeah. Um, Bishop c3, preventing mate. And the locket in also with 10 seconds. So he has to play quick. Maybe rookie two knight f four makes some uh, some danger. No, rookie two think. drops a knight. Oh yeah, knight, knight f four is a better no, no, this better is, start. This is a much better idea. Yeah. But now uh, it's a key, uh, And Magnus Carlsen uh, end the game. I yeah. suppose he won that. Was I truly beautifully played by Magnus yep. Carlsen. Mm -hmm. It was. It was really nice. Really, yeah. Really nice. Yeah. He must be very proud of his uh, technique. Uh, starting yeah. from this beautiful sacrifice, d5. That's the position. Yep. And uh, he totally outplayed after that. 
without out the pawn. It was truly top level game. Beautiful game. Hold on, rook takes f7 here? Excuse me? Why can't I take? Because if you take, I go king f1, uh, king f1 and Can you lose. Piece? And if you move the knight, then uh, I take on g7. This is just over. So Andre has just blundered. Yeah, Andre has just, uh, just made a, a one move blunder, which mm -hmm. is not like. Ah, he had very low time. Okay, he's just playing some. So move, 96. Okay, but the, an extra pawn, b7 is hanging, b6 is hanging. Uh, this is uh, an easy win. for you. So Jan Krzysztof will be yeah. on 100%. He, he, no question he doesn't convert this. You could just take on b7, you can take on b6. Yeah, this, I, this bishop. I, oh, I, he goes for a pin. Uh, I would grab this pawn on b7. Did he go knight b4? He probably played knight b4, rook takes b7. Yeah, okay, Jan Krzysztof, very, very comfortable. Uh, Jan Nepomniši won, so yeah. that's already over. Garev against Rapport is uh, a mess, but probably Rapport is doing well. So. Too many pieces. <laughs> so Nepomniši, Carlson, Duda, all going to win. Giri, let's look at Anish. What happened to Anish's position? Wasn't he doing fantastic around here? We looked at this. Ketty, queen h6. Oh, he queen went for seven. knight h5. Sacrifice. And it didn't but work he out. A pawn. He's a pawn up. A very good play for black. Look at this knight getting on e6 and then f5. Very aggressive. But he's a pawn up. But that's all h pawn. If there is h7, would you like this position with black? Yes. Yeah. But I have absolutely no idea what's going on. It, it looks and like black. I mean, it looks as though Anish is really losing. Uh, the plot in this position. It looks as though Anish is just, uh, he's run, he's, his pieces are all... It's too squeezed, squeezed when there's yeah, no uh, space for Something happened. And knight c7, look at this move. Oops, sorry. Oh. Knight c7. Oh, wow. We've, move 40. We've had move 40. Move 40. Beautiful move. Looking to recapture here. I think in the b4 pawn as well. I and mean, actually, I the rook is nearly e3. trapped. Yeah, e3, d2 is hanging. Uh, this is a, this is a, uh, what? you have knight and a5. A5. What? This is beautiful. Uh, it's great. He wants to push b4 to, to kick push the B4. knight and then take this yes. pawn with the knight. This is wonderful. B takes a5, b4, knight. No. What? Now he re-sacked. <laughs> he re-sacked, but this might wow. be genius. This I love this be genius move. Because king f5. I uh, love this move. Maybe g4? g4, king g6, f5, f5. and let's just go. We've got three pawns, two knights, and a, uh, a knight. And two I love moves. this position for a while. Yeah. There's knight c5, knight c6 moves. What and a now game. what's going so knight d5 and rook e6? Ah, this is just spectacular by Anish. Because yeah, it looks as though things were going screen. very, very wrong, and now, and now they're not going very, very wrong. Okay, rook f8. Uh, yeah, uh, rook, sorry, rook b7. Now what do we do? Just push the f4, no? How about rook d... Okay, rook g6, yeah, yeah. rook g7. So f5, f6, f f7. F5 looks... Uh, yeah, just go f5. f5. Just push. You have four pawns for the piece. I mean, That's more than enough. More than enough. Yeah, 94 wow. was Let's, have, was let's put that, that move back on the board. So here... A bad move would be to move the knight away, because then after knight, let's say like here now, now knight takes d5 is just crushing for black. Actually, this is just winning for black, pretty much. So you've had the foresight to find this great resource, knight c takes e4, and get push all of his pawns. F5, bishop f5. Is, uh, c6 on the board. Hmm. 
Yeah, Still. there was a threat of knight e6 and then rook g8, rook g7, jack to get this rook. Mm -hmm. So he had to play. How about rook c2 now to pin that bishop? Looks like a good move. Or knight e6 first and then... What about just going h4? What about just... Maybe you want to go a6? The step on is even closer. What are you doing to stop h4, h5, I don't know. h6, h7 just queen? Goes away. It's just winning. There's rook, not rook g7 move. Of he went f6. This is also good. Ah! F7, rook j to the he wants to go takes, check, f7. king f7, check, g7. king e6. Ah, uh, is there knight g5? Knight g5, five. king e5, knight, knight f7. f7, king e6, probably rook okay. e2, just to add insult to industry. Okay. King d7, okay. knight e5, Double check, king d8. Is there any mate here? You want to check mate, right? Yeah, I wanted to check mate, but I can't see it. In the worst case scenario, I take take and I win this Push position. Yeah. Uh, so, and oh, it we, looks like you might get it. Hi, Miss Antos will be very disappointed. Yeah, there was quite fancy to push a5 pawn, but it didn't really work out. Okay, Anish. In uh, red uh, looks very sharp. So Harker's calculated a lot of moves now. Yeah, but he's not he's not worried. He, it looks like he might be worried, no. but he's there is also F seven move just to play F eight the next move. But he's going for G pawn, is that? No, I mean we haven't got the exact position on the board. Rook G seven checking. King, uh, King E6. Oh, he goes for G3. It was a while ago. Maybe we can talk, uh, just zoom a little bit more on the board. This is the position. Uh -huh. Ah, and Anish played G3. He That's is. so lovely. He's threatening. He's threatening G5 mate. <laughs> wow. That Impressive. is so lovely. Checkmate in one move. Knight. Knight takes f6. Uh, he let him checkmate him as ah, well. Ah, beautiful. Nice. And, and uh, Jaime Santos saying he just, yeah. he probably just missed this knight takes e4 idea. Well played, Anish. Okay. Anish on three out of three as well. Shakmir Mamajarov beat uh, yeah. Sahakian. Yeah, I just love this, uh, what we're seeing right now after the game, after a very intensive game. They are still talking and analyzing. <laughs> It's quite nice. Indeed. Now, of the top games, Ali Reza has also won, so he's on two and a half. What about Artemiev against Naya? Well, this is uh, this is not going well for Artemiev. Let's say it like that. This is a very easy win for Yevgeny Naya with an upset, beating the heavily fancied Artemiev. Mm. Let's have a look at the uh, women's section. Let's go. On we? this screen, we have the, uh, the video of Alexandra. Uh, Kostinuk, we can maybe go in that game. And, and this seems to be one of the last games. Playing against Anna Zatinsky. Yes. And, oh wow, you know what we could get here? Why? No, we can't get Rook, and Rook, Rook versus Rook and Bishop. Bishop. It just doesn't look like that. The pawn is too dangerous. So. Yeah, that's not going to be. C3. Possible. But this is an easy win for... Alexandra. Yeah. King A3 is very good. Yeah, there was a sneaky move, this Rook B6. There was a checkmate. There was a checkmate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. At a <Okay>. sudden, <laughs> there was a checkmate there. But now C2 is a threat Rook C3, and just to remove that one. Yep. And that's and it. Yeah, another game, uh, Gretchkin uh, Gaponanko, do we have? Well, this one is a dead draw. All right. So that probably has already finished because there's really nothing to play. Gunina uh, won her game. Gunina won her game. It's always good to see Gunina in her best shape because uh, she can play She's really very nice yeah. chess. Muzichuk beat Ozmak. Kashlin Skaya won. And. Well, you actually can drew, so it looks as though Kostenyuk now of the favourites is going 
going to be the one on three out of three. Let's have a look. Elizabeth Pitts still playing Lizzie uh, with a winning position against uh, Kameli Denova from Kazakhstan, it looks like. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Kazakhstan. Yeah, night, night in games are so, so tricky. I think this uh, should be an easy win for, for Lizzie because she can create another pass on and... Uh, He's going for, or she's going for uh, king b5, king b6. Completely fine. There are B5 many ways to win this. She doesn't have to be that precise, I don't think. Yeah, now king b5 is a Or b5. b5 seems, and f6 looks also quite yeah. winning. Yeah, there's anything wins here. Okay, mm -hmm. let's... Uh, okay, let's go to the game of uh, Goryev and... Uh, Goryev, okay. Let's do that. And Rapport, we have that on the screen. Soon we'll get in there. And this is round uh, three, isn't it? And we're going to yes. have round four in the female section, the last round for today. Oh, yes. And round five, we need, we're going to have round five Just in the female section. Yes. Yes. Oh, the game has already ended. It's over. Timor has won. So actually, oh. this is a huge upset. Something went wow. horribly wrong for Richard Rapport because he had a wonderful position. Around here, it looked very good. King f5, okay. So he's winning. Oh, we don't have it on the screen. Maybe we can put the game on the oh. screen. Um. I'm just trying to find out where yeah. he was completely winning. Gareev won this position? Uh, how did this happen? This is just completely crushing. Still looks great. Uh, maybe we can bring the uh, board on. Oh, the right, screen. yeah. Another game has been ended also. Irina uh, Bulmaga lost the game against uh, Osmak. Is that Osmak? I can't see who that is. No, it's not Osmak. I'm not sure who. I think this. Uh, All 24, so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know who she is. Oh, it's a Spanish girl. That's a Spanish girl. Is that Marta? Yeah. I didn't recognize her <laughs> from this angle. Yeah. Okay. Marta's very strong. Oh, she is very, she's very, very strong. sharp player. Uh, but this position here in uh, Gareev against Rapport is, is very strange because Gareev was, I mean, Rapport was completely winning. And then at some moment there was a horrible blunder. Let's see. Yeah. Very, very strange. Oh, that was so bad blunder. Our viewers what? cannot really see that. He played, ah, he wanted to play knight takes a2, rook takes a2, and d2, and queen the pawn. But Timor hit him with the intermediate 90. move, knight e3. That's painful. Oof. Okay, a devastating loss for Rapport, actually. Yeah. To have a winning position and lose is the worst thing. Yeah, well, our viewers cannot really s could not see that yes. uh, for for some reason. So maybe we can ask Peter if he has something interesting for for us, and okay, he can also s show us this uh, this game uh, report and uh, Gariev. So uh, going now to big screen with Peter, and we'll come back from the beginning of the fourth round. Welcome to 100 End Games. You must know. Over 200 mini videos that our Chessable team edited together, synced with our Move Trainer, and made it a seamless learning experience. So thanks for watching, happy studying, and enjoy the material. Hello again, this is International Master Piotr Gwen, and I will be be bringing you some highlights from previous rounds. So, uh, yeah, there are so many games, not every game can be uh, analyzed live. So, yeah, this is the position from the game Anna Jakubowska playing as black against Anastasia Rachmangulova. And I found this very interesting because, well, this is the position from the Karakan, a typical position. And, um, yeah, white is pressing, having some space advantage. 
And it's very instructive how this position can collapse very quickly for black. <coughs> so um, black played a very typical break f6. Well, if you play the French defense or the Karakan, you know that f6 and c5 is so typical because we need to fight for the center. However, black's king is in the middle, and you cannot always consider just positional um, aspects of the, of the position. You just need to think also about tactics, dynamics, and f6 was just completely wrong, and that's, I think, very instructive to understand why. Uh, the better move was queen a6, uh, which is a typical move, although after queen a6, um, b takes a6, the pawns are ruined, but with the move c5, some pressure down the b-file, half-open file, I think uh, black is very, very solid. Maybe white has little something, but that's, that's not much. I mean, black is just very solid, as I said. Uh, first of all, he has very compact pawn structure here. I mean, the a-pawns are doubled, but, but in the center we have very nice pawns. And after c5, we can undermine the center. And we don't have the bishop on c8, so all black's pieces are just complementing uh, the pawn structure. This is very nice. But uh, this is a completely different game. And the move played in the game, f6, as I said, this is completely wrong, because now e takes f6, g takes f6, and OK, attacking the bishop. First of all, even if the bishop drops back, <coughs> I think uh, white has a nice position, because the e6 pawn, even though white lost a very strong central e5 pawn, it's I mean, white still has nice pressure, but, well, we are not forced to move when we are attacked. This is important. When you play chess, don't always consider moves which, I mean, you don't always need to react to opponent's threats. You can make your own threats, and if they are bigger, well, uh, you may find the better move. So here, very nice. Rook e1. So what's the point? I mean, if f takes g5, well, I think, uh, Rook takes e6 is nice, but also queen takes f5 immediately and then taking on e6 uh, is maybe even easier. So that's just devastating. I mean, the king is still in the middle, all the pawns are falling, that's just wrong. And the queen on a5, you can see it's just not doing anything here. So, mm, yeah, f6 was just completely wrong. And let's see uh, the game, a few more moves from the game. So rook e1 and then castle long. But there came um, rook takes e6, you see. The pawn has fallen, the knight is hanging, everything is just collapsing here. So f takes g5, queen takes f5, well, bishop g7, the engine already gives like a winning position. And for white, and yeah, like there are many moves. We could just take on g5, the pawn, but uh, knight b3 was also nice, just attacking the queen. As I said, everything is just collapsing here. Queen c7 was played, and then knight takes g5. And I think we can already stop here. Um, white is just completely dominating. I mean, three for five. Um, there are already two pawns for white, and the domination. You see, there is a pin here. The rook is already active. Knight f7 might be a threat sometimes, or knight may jump to e6. It's just completely lost for black. It's all because black played f6. So it's not like white's attack immediately was so strong. Black allowed this by trying to counterattack in the center, but she just wasn't ready for it. And as I said, I think it's a very instructive example because we are learned that f6 is a typical breakthrough in those Karakan French structures, but we always need to consider dynamic features of the position. So let's move to some other examples. And uh, this is the game between Maria Muzichuk and Yulia Osmak, two very strong Ukrainian uh, players. And uh, yeah, that was very nice to see uh, how White handled uh, the attack here. Um, here we can see that White is pressing. I mean, the rook on c1 is eyeing the queen on c8. The rook on d1 is also pressing the pawn on d5, which is isolated and a little bit weak. Mm. The engine still says that after such a move like queen g4, maybe not that easy to, to play such move. It's very artificial. But mm, somehow, black is OK here. But after the move a5, 
a bit preventing before, maybe sometimes thinking about night before, that was just way too slow. Because now came night B3, putting more pressure down the C file. So this is one thing. Now G5 came. Okay, there is no problem. The bishop drops back, but there are some weaknesses here. And let's see further. Rook came to D8. Well, just defending the pawn on D5. But now, knight takes C5. So, well, if black recaptures, white wins the pawn and keeps more pressure. But black was relying um, her calculations on bishop f8. So now if the bishop may recapture on c5 or the pawn will recapture, maybe that's okay. But now white found a very, very nice move. Knight takes b7, sacrificing a queen. So what happens? After bishop takes a3, let's make this move, well, taking the queen. Knight take, took on d8, queen took d8, and b takes f a3. So let's evaluate this position. What's happening here? So white has rook and uh, two minor pieces, right, for the queen. That's way too much. I mean, rook and a minor piece might be equal to queen. Okay, depends on the circumstances. Sometimes two rooks even are worse than the queen. But um, here, rook and two minor pieces are um, usually, usually much, much better than the queen. And uh, also, you can see that black's pieces are just not coordinated well. Um, they are not doing anything. There are no weaknesses in white's camp. I mean, you could argue that the pawns on the a-file are weak, but, well, the knight, for example, has no way to attack it. The knight doesn't have any outpost. The queen will be easily parried by those minor pieces, white minor pieces. And uh, yeah, uh, some after some knight e7, you see the knight is passive. Knight comes to d4. This is the place for the knight in front of the isolated pawn. So white was just dominating here. Okay, rook c8 came, but then okay, there are many moves. Bishop a6, just forcing some exchanges. Rook c5. Okay, the knight can drop back. It can return to d4 later. Now we just we are just forcing some exchanges, uh, which is just very nice. Queen d7, knight came to d4 back. White is just completely dominating, and soon uh, white won a very nice game. Okay, um, as usual, you can see that I'm showing some games from the women's section, but that, that wasn't planned. I am also looking at the open section. Uh, it just happened that I found more interesting positions in the other section, <coughs> but let's see. And the position from the Salem Saleh, Ariantari, uh, very strong grandmasters. And um, here white is pressing, white is much better here. Um, but um, I found very nice touch by Salem after black made an, an inaccuracy here. And for now it won't be easy to find the best move for black. Uh, the best is knight g6. And if you look at the position, it's hard to understand why. But once you see what happened in the game, then you will understand why the knight g6 is the best. And you can see that even such a strong grandmasters, if they don't think about prophylaxis, it's just not easy to find the best moves. So let's see why the knight d7 is, is wrong here. Well, it looks OK. I mean, knight is protected. But after knight f5, well, attacking the queen, you can see there might be some issues. And after queen c5, still, it looks like, okay, the knight on d7 is protected. Rook is attacking the knight. So what's happening? I mean, objectively, even if white returns, white is better. But, mm, you know, having better position and winning the game are not, like, you know, the same things for sure. So how to continue as white? Sometimes you need to find the killer blow. Otherwise, your opponent can you know, escape even from a relatively bad position. So what was White's move? You can think for yourself for a few seconds. <coughs> you can try to look at the geometry of the position. This is very important. Because for now, Black's position okay, is worse, but somehow everything is I mean, protected. 
but there are some tactical tricks possible. The e7 square is weak, and it's only defended by the queen. And Grandmaster Salem uh, found nice shot. Rook c6, I really love it. So after rook c6, well, the point is you cannot take because there is knight e7 and well, when the knight attacks the king, queen, and the rook, I think it's called royal fork. Okay, the rook is not that important here. Anyway, we'll just grab the queen. So, yeah, so this is the first point. And, okay, so the rook cannot be taken. But if rook is not taken, queen came to a5. But you see, e7 square was weak. And after knight e7, check. King had to move to h8. And, okay, um... Yeah, th this is uh, hanging here, but white even played rook a6 because this is protected, just attacking the queen. Queen c5, now just took the exchange, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, and rook d1. It's a very nice touch because if the rook was on c6, the rook was, would be hanging, so white won a tempo by playing rook a6 first, putting the rook to protected square. Now the rook is attacking the queen, and yeah, uh, having an exchange up and actually this knight on d7. I was talking that it was kind of protected, but by some forcing, you know, uh, sequence, um, yeah, the exposition just completely collapsed and the knight will also fall. Yeah, I think uh, that was the end of the game. Very nice. Um, yeah, another game mm, between Badur Jabava and Martin Juba uh, also caught uh, my attention. Um, here, the position looks normal. I mean, okay, three, six, six pawns per each side and three minor pieces, both rooks. What can be wrong here? So, black played rook a to e8, which also looks normal, just, you know, to to look at the e file, well, preventing, I mean, and knight e6 potentially here. Like, if knight e6, then, okay, nothing is happening here, right? Queen e6, like, king, king can ha go here, nothing. But it's, it's an illusion that the rook protects the e6 square. Actually, actually, after a5, dislodging the knight from b6, the knight has to move, and where to go? I mean, the knight came to c8, but okay, a8 would be just terrible square. I mean, the knight in the corner just has two squares to go to, and actually b6 is not possible, so knight on a8 would be just completely wrong. But knight c8 also does not help here, and that's just a bad position, because now there came knight e6, a very nice move by Badru Jobava. So, the knight attacks the queen, and if f takes e6, there comes a check, and compared to the other variation I've been showing you, now, after let's say king h8, this guy is hanging on d7. So we sacrifice the knight for two pawns, but then we can just take the free knight and essentially be two pawns up. So, um, yeah, rook d7 would be just... Uh, rook d7 would be just winning, okay. Rook d7, like this. Okay. Uh, queen d7 actually might not be that uh, that good because after rook d8, there would be some issues on the first rank. So we need to be always precise till the very end. So, um, yeah, so in the game, after knight takes e6, um, after here, knight takes e6, whoops, not here, knight takes e6. Well, wh why I'm jumping here? Let's maybe use the arrows here. Okay, let's... Okay, knight takes e6, that's fine. I mean, a5, knight c8, knight takes e6. So in the game, um, Grandmaster Juba did not take on e6, but uh, he played bishop f6. Using the pin down the e file, <coughs> yeah, but his queen was under attack, so after knight takes c7, uh, rook takes uh, e2, and now, okay, king f1. Also, taking on d7 was possible, but then the rook is on a1 also hanging. So king f1 was nice, just attacking the rook. 
rook e4, and just rook a2. I think that that was just a simple, simple play. Um, white is a pawn up, and it's not just about the pawn. You see, black's knights are terrible. Uh, white is just dominating, having access to, to d5 square. Um, yeah, so after knight e5, bishop a3, you see white's pieces are very active with the pawn up. Rook may come to d7. Yeah, this is just just a lost position for black. So very nice win for Badur Jobava. Okay, um, some more positions. And here we have mm, Shimon Gumulash. I think he's still not having a Grandmaster title, but he's just waiting for it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he was playing against Artyom Timofeyev, a very strong Russian Grandmaster. Um, but here, it was not easy for black to play, because his king is, is quite weak. Um, but he has a nice asset, c pawn, and he decided to push it, and that was wrong. And before I move to, to the game continuation, I'll show you what you should play in such positions. It's sometimes more important is just to keep the control over the, the game. I mean, I said black's king is weak, but white's queen alone cannot do much. So it is important to, mm, I mean, fight against white's rook. And the best defense was queen d1, check, forcing king g2, and coming back to d5. So you see black's queen would um, well cover so many nice squares. Just uh, look, I mean, pinning the king. And I mean, queen on the central squares, as I said, covers so many things here. So um, then, of course, c3 might be a threat. But in the game, after c3, um, there came queen c6. And you see, it is white who was dominating the position, and the pawn on c3 was just yeah, under attack and just couldn't be saved after queen d1 check. King g2, you see queen covers this long diagonal, and after c2, rook c3, the pawn was gone, so a huge asset for black was gone, and then black's position uh, was lost. I mean, he still tried rook g3, some desperado, but that was the lost position. So I think it's all from me. Now the next, guy, next game is about to start, and I will see you during the next break. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top grandmaster from the Netherlands. The lines and the recommendations that I give are well suited for players of all levels. So I really explain a lot of concepts, but also a lot of basic things. Now it's your move. Don't waste any time. Hit that buy button. Hello everybody and welcome back to the World Rapid and Blitz Championships here in Warsaw. It's round four already of today's action in the World Rapid Championships. Uh, we've had a lot of action so far. Still got a few players on 100%, so a few players flying the flag. Um, some minor upsets along the way, nothing too dramatic. A lot of the names you'll see at the top are the well-known bread and butter elite names. Got some very interesting matchups as well this round. And in the women's event as well, a lot of top players still up there. Of course, we had some accidents, though, along the way. We saw already how um, uh, we had Katarina Lachno losing in uh, round two, I think it was. And, uh, well, we still have World Cup winner and former world champion uh, Alexandra Kostenyuk still doing very well. And she is playing, by the way. Polina Shuvalova. Now, for a lot of people, that might be a new name, but Polina has established herself as one of the young upcoming talents. I believe she's world under 18 champion, if I remember correctly. Yeah, world she's all yeah, world champion. She's already well over 2,400. So she's, she's very close to 2,500. I think she's 25. Yeah, she might even be 2,500 already. So she's a serious weapon, um, and she's going to give Alexandra a tough game. Uh, let's continue with the ladies. We've got Gunina, who's playing fantastic chess, playing Lizzie Petz. Uh, Lizzie also, by the way, completed her third Grandmaster norm mm -hmm. very recently. So Lizzie going to be um, a full Grandmaster soon, so congratulations to her. She's going to have a fun game against uh, Valentina. Nana Dagnitze, who you know 
Very well, of course, Ketty. Uh, she's been a top player for 20 years now, I would say, probably. Yeah. I mean, she's just been unbelievable for years. Playing against somebody I don't know that well, Pavlido. Ekaterina Pavlido. Uh, yeah. She's a great player, the member of national team. But she is lower rated, uh, way lower rated than the other girls. And mm -hmm. I was very surprised to see her uh, among the uh, top board mm -hmm. with 100% uh, score. But yeah, that's Clearly good. underrated, uh, yes. probably like a lot of people. So that will be interesting. Uh, Bodnaruk playing against Goyachkina, so two Russian players there playing. And then a name that, again, might not be familiar, Vaishali. But Vaishali is the sister of uh, Pragnananda. Exactly, the sister <laughs> of Pragnananda. So it runs in the blood in that family, playing against Maria Muzicic, which is a, a dangerous game for Maria, actually, playing black against Vaishali. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and in the men's section, well, we've got uh, some really interesting games. Rapport against Van Forest. That has got uh, potential to be uh, really, really exciting. Uh, we've got Nakamura against Magsudlu, mm -hmm. which are, uh, you know, two absolutely electrifying players. Jan Napomnishi against Abdul Satarovo might be my favorite game of the round because uh, Abdul Satarov just played a brilliant game against Fabiano Caruana, absolutely killed him. Mm -hmm. And he's just very, very good. And now he's going to have a big test against Jan. And look at this. We've got two more games as well. Aronian Frugia. Now, that is a pairing that we're going to have for, the, for 10 years to come. I mean, these guys are going to play each other all over the place. Uh, Aronian Frugia, who knows? Uh, Ali Reza still up there, uh, which is important. And Magnus Carlsen is playing Harsha, who's a grandmaster from India. Uh, this is a pretty good pairing for Magnus, I would say. Not to take anything away from Harsha, but Magnus with white uh, playing uh, Harsha is about as much as you want at this stage on day one. Because Magnus has only dropped half a point, so if he wins this, he's still very much in the mix, uh, as well as some other top game. Duda playing black against Alexienko, I should point out. Oh, and there is uh, uh, there are two more games, sorry, I, I want to talk about very quickly there. Uh, one is Grishchuk Gareev. Grishchuk, as of course we all know Alexander Grishchuk. Gareev, we've spoken about one of the most creative and underrated players, actually, mm -hmm. in the field. And then we have Mohamed Muradli coming from absolutely Nowhere. Now, if you look at his rating, it's something like 2250. Oh, yeah, I can see this. Yeah, he's 2250 rapid, but that, of course, is not his rating. In classical chess, I believe Mohammed is over 2500. He's beaten two grandmasters already today. And now he's got white against Badr Jubava. Now, Badr is a fantastic player and a good pal of mine. Badr can beat anybody on his day, as we know. Yep. But he can also have accidents. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if this game against Muradli is a bit of a trap game for Badur, because Badur will think, oh, this is a great spot for me to go a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And Muradli has beaten already two 2,600 Grandmasters. Yeah. So Muradli, if, he, if things go, well his, go his way with White, he could be on four out of four at 2,250. Anything can happen. Yeah. It's rapid chess. Well, Jobby doesn't really need a uh, very tough uh, opponent or uh, a lower rated opponent to go crazy. It's just his moves. He just like likes to play some, um, some some crazy crazy chess on the lines. And so good to see him on the top boards. Uh, in the open section, we do have ten players with one hundred score uh, person score for now, and in all in female section we do have um, just five players with that uh, 100 person score so we do yep. have a lot of uh, draws and um, that makes that that, that 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 means that it's not easy a tournament um, you know you can tie the, the the match with the lower rated player just because many of those players are underrated in rapid splits Absolutely, and here we have a close-up of 
Yana Pomnishi and Abdul Saturov. Abdul Saturov playing with the black pieces uh, from Uzbekistan. I don't know him personally very well because he's still a, a super young guy, mm -hmm. but uh, very focused on his chess and uh, really aiming very, very high. Yeah, he had an amazing tournament uh, back in Sochi at World yes. Cup. Uh, he, um, he, he break down a lot of top players he and uh, get through to the uh, next and next uh, stages, uh, stages. And now we have him. Actually, these young players, they do like to play uh, rapid and loose even more than classical chess. And they train a lot and they play a lot. So, uh, yeah, no problem. She seems to be in very good form. Uh, now she's facing against um, young opponents with white pieces. It's going to be a very interesting uh, in interesting round. And uh, well, for, for, for women, this is the last round, fourth round. And for men, this is we're going to have still two more uh, games to, to check. And here we have uh, Nana on the screen against Ekaterina. Ekaterina was here at uh, European Championship okay. in Poland. Uh, and then um, she, uh, she just got the confirmation that she can play at this event so she went back in Greece and came <laughs> came here after oh, right. like two okay. days after so that was quite a trip for her but it seems like she really enjoys here and she's having a good tournament and yep. Nana herself was the champion once world champion in Saudi Arabia in uh, rapid uh, four months um, she is considered to be one of the favorites of the female section no question. I mean, Nana has been uh, just one of the top women players for, yeah, as long as I can remember. I, I think I played her about 10 years ago or something. Actually, I played Nana even in the World Junior Championships years ago. Really? Maybe 20 years ago, yeah. She, she crushed obviously me. Obviously, she played the you know, open section. She right? crushed me on okay. every I never got close to Nana. She just killed me. So, uh, I mean, Nana is, I mean, she's been 25, yeah. hundred for years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's a big favorite, in my opinion, a big uh, contender, I should say. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, when, we, we, when we played junior championship and youth championship, uh, uh, we were in the same federation, and I remember that the opponents of Nana were so afraid of her. Yeah. Um, not only because of her achievement that he already had at the age of 16, that's when I yeah. met Nana, but also she was she was quite a big girl yes. <laughs> physically, and yes. it was like she was always holding um, until the last moment when everyone was, you know, feeling tired and without energy. She was still uh, you know, fighting for it. And here we have the uh, the games has been started, and Magnus Carlsen is adjusting the pieces. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got so many interesting games. I mean, Nakamura Maksudlu looks very yeah. interesting to me. We promised that we're going to bring the information about the uh, uh, delay that we had on the uh, third round, and it was uh, it was because of the first board uh, um, first board uh, issues, right? Yeah, because of yeah. for television purposes, and there was a slight confusion, but that's all been uh, rectified and. We do have uh, liftoff. The game moves will come to us any second now. Uh, Shall we start with Aronian and uh, Ali Reza? Sure. And, and uh, this is the first tournament, first official tournament, where uh, Levon plays with a new flag. Levon is playing under the US flag. Now, that is a very strange sight to see Levon playing with the US <laughs> flag. I mean, since I've We're been not in, used to it yet. <laughs> uh, since I've been in chess, since I was a junior, Levon has had that Armenian flag, and for him to have the US flag is a little strange now, it must be said. Yeah, that's a quite a big loss for uh, Team Armenia. Huge and, loss. And uh, a big uh, addition for uh, Team uh, USA. Yes, we will indeed. see how the thing's going to go. And uh, this is the first time we see the game of Ali Reza. Uh, the rising star who is having an amazing year and who reached uh, second rank higher rated player this year. Yep. Second in the world, published, 18 years old. 
the youngest player ever to be 2,800, qualified for the candidates, it's been quite the year. I mean, you, you can make the argument that he's had the best year of anybody because who, 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 who earns 30 rating points in one tournament? At, yeah. You know, when in the tournaments he plays, it's, it's quite spectacular. Okay, playing black against Levon. Levon playing uh, the exchange Karakhan and this quiet system. Queen b3, queen c7, h3, bishop b7, knight e2. And we have a fairly uh, well-known structure, so nothing major at the moment, of course. Levon wants to try and play bishop f4 very quickly, hit the queen with tempo, and force black to uh, preoccupy himself over this b7 pawn. And it looks as though Ali Reza is content either with offering the queen on b6 or just dropping back to c8 and saying, I'm not too worried. Uh, you've, you, you haven't got that much initiative. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's still got to get his pieces out, so there is a slight concern that he could be a little bit slow here. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you tell us why bishop goes back on b7 and not on h5 and then b6? Um, it's a good question. The answer is no, I can't tell you. <laughs> My original instinct was can we go g4, mm -hmm. bishop g6, and now give this check. Mm. But I don't think it's anything special. Knight c6 or knight b7, I, so I don't see it. So Maybe I take on g6 and then g5 to grab b5. Oh, five. you can just win a pawn like that. So bishop takes g6, h takes g6, and g5. A very computer way of playing. But it might be good. But it, you, you're very stretched, you know. So even if I do this and you win a pawn, you've really left a lot of space behind. So I don't even know how good this is, objectively, for white. doesn't feel that great for white. Okay. Anyways, uh, we will see what happens there. So it's kind of a bit quiet, actually. Well, the game, Van Forest and Dubov, that ended uh, in favor of Van Forest, as you can see, according to the uh, pairing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I thought okay, that's gonna, that's, that was a drawish uh, game. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, actually. <laughs> no. Okay, we have a position here which um, looks absolutely fantastic for black. Uh, if you could get this position playing 1e5 every day, you would. Now, a move like a4 looks very tempting to me to fix this weakness here on a3. So I'll be curious if he does that. He doesn't. He plays h6. And now I actually do expect Rickard probably to play a4 himself. So I think this structural fixing makes sense, but I could be completely wrong unless he's got a much more useful move to play. Maybe a move like knight d2, knight c4. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of moves here. Or rook b1. So rook b1 also makes a lot of sense. So now the question is, how do you get your pieces out with black? Not so yeah, easy. Not so easy. The bishop cannot develop from c8 because right. b7 pawn is hanging and okay, he goes rook b8. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so he wants next move bishop to be out. Yep. I think Jordan will be very happy with this position in general. Of course, he knows Richard wants to play a long game with him, but he can't complain having this position. Okay, mm -hmm. now knight d2. Bishop c6 now is a threat. Little, Correct. little trick over there as the rook on b8 is uh, is hanging. So bishop moves away. Probably it's quite logical. D6 or d7 is the question. Yeah. Because knight c4 is coming afterwards. Maybe e6 to stop knight coming from on c4. Yeah. And now maybe a4. I'm obsessed with playing a4. Maybe I should maybe I should just not touch this pawn. Because but you don't like when black plays the yeah, a4, right? And I just two, don't two. like him fixing my pawn yeah. here, but I could be wrong. He did put the bishop on the e6. So we will see. Uh, what uh, Rickard what's, wants to do there. Let's see if there's action. Well, we do have some action. And that is the game that Pominishi 
versus Abdul Saturov. Let's go from the beginning as we're so close. Hmm? We had a Spanish and an open Spanish. So uh, knight bd2 variation, c3, bishop e7, bishop c2, d4, all very well known established theory. Knight b3, and now d takes c3. One of the moves there for sure. Uh, and we get this position after move 16. And the position looks um, pretty standard, but a little bit dangerous for black because you still have some problems to solve. Castling, I'm not even sure is possible because the h7 pawn is hanging. So I'm not sure you can castle. And if you take on e4, after queen takes e4, and now castles, let's say, I wonder if now you're running into some knight g5 trick by Nepo. g6, let's say, and now something like, I don't know. Queen h4. Queen h4, h5, and knight e4. Knight e4. Typical idea. Looks very, very dangerous. Bishop e7 is forced. I would probably still go knight f6 check. Um, or do you put the bishop in the way? Bishop g5. Bishop g5 is also, looks also possible. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can lose very quickly. And I'm curious if this is all in the preparation of Jan, if he prepared against a, an open Spanish for the match. In any case, rook d8 was played, and bishop g5, knight e7. It feels as though Abdusaturov is kind of freestyling it a bit too much here. And I have to say, it feels as though white should have something. But I can't really see what that might be. Tricky one. Very, very tricky. For example, like I want to try and make e6 work. I know this is crazy. Queen takes e6 and go like queen h4 and try and open up some lines and play rookie one next. Again. Um, can we try a4 there? In to this position? Mm -hmm. A4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To try to create. A Looks standard and sensible, but. Oh, I did. Then the castle and. It's yeah. I'm, uh, I, yes, it takes, takes. I'm just saying I'm okay here with black. Mm -hmm. rook, rook d1, I can always take. That's the problem. So, Jan now, uh, he's not thinking. He played knight d4. Wow. That's unexpected. And if I take, take and put a knight on d, oh no, sorry, I can't. Maybe rook c1, rook d1 instead of taking on d4. Rook d1. Is it possible? Or there is bishop f2. Ah, bishop b4, rook d1 here, you mean? Yeah. Hmm. Bishop f2. Clever move. Yeah, then. Very complicated, isn't it? All of a sudden. Bishop f2, king f2. You can't go queen f5 because d8 is hanging. Tricky. Very, very tricky. I don't know. I'm not sure about this move, though. Okay. Um, you know what? We can go to the game of Muradli and Jobava because there is also a very interesting situation there. Okay. Muradli against Jobava. Now, just have to find that because for whatever reason, it was not put on the on the top boards and hmm. Unless you can see it, because I don't. I can't try. see. No, I can't. I can't actually locate that that game, which is very frustrating. Fabiano's game, I can. Aparin. Okay, I don't know what board they put Muradli on, because he's on three out of three, so. Theoretically, yeah. he should be... Let me check that really quickly. Okay. In the meantime, le let's check in with Hikaru. Uh, ooh, oh, we haven't seen Hikaru's game for a while. Not for a while. 
He's uh, playing white against uh, Magsudlu. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've actually got a very, very calm position, which I think suits Hikaru much more. Uh, calm position? It's a kind of calm, yeah, it's a calm position. I mean, we have a... I think he's like more uh, active and Who? aggressive, Hikaru. Magsudlu. No, I think oh. Hikaru nowadays is, is, is much less that. Mm. Actually, I think he, he appreciates the slower positions compared to a few years ago. And uh, he's, got a, he's, got a, he's got a very nice position here because actually b5 is a very committal move from Parham. Uh, I think the reason he did that is because he wants to play a5. Mm -hmm. But now can Hikaru actually exchange a pair of knights? And the reason you want to do that is because this knight is theoretically on a bad circuit. That being said, it also has got a good circuit here. Yeah. So if I go here trying to get round, he also has got something like this. And... Uh, I found it. I found it. The position is... <laughs> okay. Where is... Uh, it's uh, board 51. Okay, so all the way down. Wow, they for put us? No, it's just for us, I think. Uh, d n not this round. This is the end of the. Oh, sorry, I wasn't finding that. Yeah, here, just a little bit up. There we go. No, oh. still not there. Can't oh. get. <laughs> can't get. Ah, oh, there is. There is fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Yeah. Right. So for some reason, this this game is on board fifty-eight. Yeah, I see. And they're both on <laughs> three out of three. Now. What did I tell you about how dangerous this game was for Joby? Mm -hmm. This position is already very bad for Jobawa. Yeah. Knight a6, and now if you go knight h4, hitting this bishop. Look this at the rook and the bishop, bishop another takes bishop, the queen pawn e5. Yeah. This looks catastrophic for Joby. These four pieces in the attack. Rook g3 might rook g3, be Rook g3, bishop f6. Knight f5. Bishop f6, knight f5 is coming. And I think Jabab is super slow in getting organized here. Yeah, he wants to play knight c7, knight a6 to uh, try to um, guard g7 pawn. Yes. But, but even, even so, this is so passive. I agree. It's, it's really, really strange. No idea what's going on. I, I, I mean, Jab and knight h4 played. I mean, this kid, I'm telling you. <laughs> you might he might win the tournament. <laughs> no, he's probably not going to win the tournament, but this position just <laughs> He's going to win a lot of games against he's gonna Grandmasters. Win, he's going to win a lot of games. I mean, he's rated 2285. I wonder what his rating will be after the tournament. All right, so that's board 58. We'll keep that one uh, at least available. Now, there is another name that I haven't spoken. I haven't actually mentioned this guy yet. That's Boris Gelfan playing white against Shak Um Of course, Boris, one of the most well-known, respected grandmasters out there, nearly became world champion. Well, he got to the world championship finals. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't win it. Oh, is that a camera of uh, Jabava and Muradli? I think we had a camera of Jabava. Oh, right, okay. Muradli. Well, in any case, uh, Boris also in with a shout, Form is permanent, class is, sorry, form is temporary, class is permanent, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and Boris oozes class, and I think, uh, <laughs> you know, he's, you know, it's difficult, of course, when you're in the latter stages of your career, but he can still do it. Let's see if there's any super interesting positions in the top boards. I don't know if you can see any potentially uh rasmus svana is actually playing anish giri and uh, should say a few few words here about svana uh for all of you guys who don't know he's rated 2677 mm -hmm. young grandmaster from lubeck i met him in hamburg years ago I've played him a few times we came here on the bus together Oh, that's the guy that's who was Rasmus. sitting next. That's right. That's really. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> extremely talented, extremely talented, very solid, very difficult to beat. Mm -hmm. Slowly, just creeping up in the ratings, and now he's got uh, 
what looks like a pretty good position mm -hmm. against Anish. I mean, after bishop takes g5, for example, you're threatening h5, winning. So you have to go, is it winning? It looks close to winning anyway. Uh, queen c7, maybe, with the counterattack. Here we can see Rasmus on the screen. So he does he's, take... Uh, he's a very active online player, and I have seen him. Yes. Uh, on the top, among the top players at Tidal Tuesday or Arena Kings, um, yeah, he's always on the among the top guys. And now we have a very interesting position, because here, if I take on f6, which is what Erasmus has just done, you have to take with the g pawn. It's forced, because if you take with the queen, h5 just wins because you can't move the knight because you get mated. So you have to take with the g pawn. And now the point is that after h5, black has got the move pawn to f5. Yeah. Blocking and saving. And actually, it's very difficult to save this bishop. Oh yeah, queen, queen can't find any proper... Queen has got no squares. Yeah. So uh, h5 here loses the game, so it means yes. that we, or with white, we have to take care of the bishop, and he, and he goes with bishop b3. Uh, at some point, he also looks for a bishop b6 sacrifice, if possible, uh, but for now, it just uh, doesn't give anything. Um, so maybe he will try rook d1, d5. I think so. Expose I think playing d5 is definitely on the cards. Rook d1, d5, and open the position up, and uh, I would say that this position is still a bit tricky for black. He could try f5 and win a pawn, but how good is this? How about d5? Oh, yeah, no, d5. Rook. no, d5 is very interesting. Rook is not there on d1. But it's interesting here because the knight momentarily is away from the action. Mm -hmm. And if you take, you could even play something like knight d4 here, like super, um, or rook a d1 here. Black's pawns are an absolute mess. And you just clean them up. Looks yeah. very nasty for black. I like this d5 and then to get the rook on d1. Yeah. Mm, quite quite tough pawn structure in, in that case. Um, if Kiwi tries to get h4 upon, how about bishop c4 to, um, to try to trade the bishop? Bishop c4? Uh, yeah, so we probably have to take. Mm -hmm. Take, now we can definitely go h5. Yeah. Let's say knight e7. Mm -hmm. Also looks like kind of respectable try for black. I think, yeah, I think you're right, Ketty. Strategically, this is probably desirable. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, the king is exposed, black king, but it's for now it's so not so dramatic. Like you can, um, you can play queen d5, knight f5. Next move, get the rook on d8. Yeah. And try to play against uh, isolated pawn on d4. Correct. So yeah, so I don't think that this is anything particularly special for Rasmus. We'll keep an eye out for that one. Let's go back to a more uh, critical game. Let's quickly check in with Ali Reza. Mm -hmm. Playing black here against Levon, and we have a an interesting position here where we have this standard isolated queen's pawn, but the problem black has is he doesn't have that many pieces. So this is definitely a weakness, and all the exchanges tend to tend to help white. So for example, rook a d1 followed by queen f5 uh, check must be on the cards. Mm -hmm. um, h5 was played here, yes. and uh, I, I lo like this move because th there might be some moves like rook h6, rook g6 to attack on g2. Um, but queen f5 is always there, so this sort of stops uh, this flex idea, right? Yeah, I don't think his idea is to is to move the rook. I think his idea is just to maybe play g6 on the next mm. and set up this very strong structure and stop any knight f5, put all of his pawns on light squares because he's got the dark squared bishop. Do you think he will not attack on the king side? I don't really see how. That's the problem. Like. You can't go crazy with g5, just to illustrate, because if you go g5, again, I'm very yeah, happy now to play queen f5 check. Mm -hmm. And after takes, takes, suddenly this is weak, this is weak. Uh, it might still be playable, but it looks 
Oh, G4, G4. Yeah, G4. Three almost, at some point. Almost works, no? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe I can do this and ignore you and put my king on H2. But again, it's it, it's it's not it's not completely clear to me. So I, I have no idea how Levon is going to is going to uh, set set uh, set up here. Uh, Magnus Carlsen, let's check in with the world champion. Has a very pleasant position. It looks like against Harsha. Uh, weak pawn here on a6, weak pawn here on e5, weak pawn here on b6. Magnus, zero weaknesses, better bishop, better knight. That's all you need to have a better position. And uh, it's a very unpleasant moment for Harsha, who has got no super active ideas. Um, and for example, just to illustrate, after knight e6, for example, I can take queen takes e7 and now play move knight e3. Hitting the rook and hitting this pawn. And if knight e4, I can probably just slam this pawn and go queen takes a6. And I see absolutely no reason why we can't do that. So a very a position that I think Magnus will be uh, very happy to have. And I think a position Harsha is going to... Uh, struggling quite a lot. He plays bishop f8, which looks like a good move. Improving the bishop. Mm -hmm. And the question is now how to how to improve here as white. Not so easy as well, but Magnus is Magnus and he tends yeah, to find a way. He feels comfortable in these kind of positions. Oh, we have uh, we have some, some, some updates and in the game of Anishkiri, Anishkiri went for the h4 pawn against uh, Rasmus Swan. Um, this has got my old analysis. That's currently the position? Yeah, let's try and get that up. I am, for some reason, it's deciding not to load, which is not helpful. So we will, uh, we will come back to that one when I can get a load. Mm -hmm. And in the game of um, Muradli and Jabava, the bishop is already on f6, and the position of uh, Jabava looks very dangerous. Okay, we'll check in with that as well a bit later. Let's quickly have a look at Nepomnishi Abdu Satorov. Uh, 92 just played by Nepo, and the position looks acceptable here for Nordirbek. For example, b4 looks very tempting. Just to change this, change a pair of rooks, take on e5 and say, you haven't got anything here, my friend. Rook a5, rook e6, defends the pawn. Mm -hmm. So I don't fear for Abdusaturov. I think he's, he's doing more than fine. Yeah. Nakamura is still grinding away against Parham Maksudlu, and I think this position really suits Hikaru. I think this is a, an unpleasant task for uh, Parham, and uh, he's going to have to work very hard. Yeah, it seems like Knight um, White didn't, Black didn't manage to push a5 on time, but uh, White's. Uh, now fully controls the queen side, and White can decide to when to take the pawn on uh, b5 and open up the um, file. Uh, this looks uh, to me very much like a crossbot structure position. Yes. Where, yes. Um, we do have this minority kind of attack. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah. The question is, when do you release the tension on the a file? That's the. That's always the question. And uh, well, you can also uh, do something like c5 to fix the pawn on a6 uh, as the knight is attacking, and then to try to push f3 e4 to get mm -hmm. some central advantage. Um, Very and try possible. to push the pawn then on e5 and the king side. Mm -hmm. 
F3, E4, maybe E4 immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's the big question, isn't it? To if you if you open the A file, and he's done exactly uh, exactly that, which is the thematic thing to do because you fix this pawn. Okay, knight B, C4, and now where does sorry? Rook and rook E2. So he's going for E4. Yeah, now moving his pieces over. He might play rook e1 next move before he opens the center. Yep, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, can can black play f5 to stop this pawn? Oh no, he goes with knight b7 to get rid of this uh, annoying knight on c5, but so white is not really um, in a hurry to take the knight. How about knight d3? I love knight d3. I think that's a move he'll play, and it's probably not even close. I mean, this is... Just you have to keep the knights on, and he does play knight d3. Mm -hmm. uh, the knight on b7 is poor. You do not give it up for a better knight. So, okay, so there's going to be a lot of maneuvering in that game. Quick check on Magnus. Okay, some some small uh, improvements still for Magnus. This h4 move, such a such a classic move nowadays to uh, to uh, put the pawn on h5 on some light squares, gaining space, threatening h6 in some positions. It's become part of the vocabulary of modern-day chess strategy, using the h-pawn. Didn't yeah. used to be so yeah. much, right? For years and years. And but now, now h4 become such a, um, such a thing, like everybody likes to play it. It's quite dangerous. It's quite Very. dangerous. In the game Svana against Anish Giri, uh, Rasmus has done extremely well. He did go for, I mean, we had this whole line, actually, basically, uh, where uh, he split the pawns, but Giri got a bit more active. So it feels as though Giri has uh, zero problems here, and it feels like it's the sort of position that will actually end in a draw. Just for example, rook here, rook takes d5. Let's say there's a big, big trade. Queen takes d5, rook takes a3. There's no check to win the rook, I don't see. Queen d8, queen, no. And queen takes a5, and uh, Anish Giri is never losing this position. Mm -hmm. So there's a good chance that one just ends in a peaceful result. Um, another peaceful result has mm -hmm. been already uh, fixed at Yanya Pomniashi against uh, uh, Satov. Mm -hmm. Now they're back on the board three, they ended the game in a draw. Yeah, phenomenal um, uh, opening day for Adusatarov beats. So well prepared for it. Yeah, he's unbelievable. I mean, you know, draws reasonably easy against Nepo, mm -hmm. who must be very well prepared. Mm -hmm. You can feel easily feel who are who those players were yes. really well prepared for the event. Uh, also, Jan Kristoff Duda, he uh, seems to be well prepared for this event, playing against uh, Kirill Alesenko round four. He is uh, having a bit of advantage here, according to the un engine. Uh, and he does have this space advantage on the queen side. And do you think he will push uh, uh, c4 pawn at some point? Um, possibly. I'm not sure. Yeah, he, 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 he has to time it well. How about h5? h5 I the love. The queen, and then queen e6 to target oh, I love b3. This. this is beautiful. This is really nice. Yeah, that's actually... How do you defend this pawn? I think uh, what is... Uh, because b4? if you go b4, now c4, for example. Yeah. And I'm very, very upset with my position here as white. Yeah. These pawns are very menacing. Mm -hmm. um, you can also take the pawn on b4, create that weakness. Uh, because queen on f3, look how stuck yes. is that. Yes, yes. So you want to do something like this. Yes. Takes. And then so in. Queen c2. Yeah, I love this as well. Yeah. This looks disgusting for white. <laughs> this looks just dis <laughs> No, it looks horrible. <laughs> so, Alexienko in a <laughs> bit of trouble, which will please everybody here, the Polish fans. Yeah. Uh, of course... Uh, in uh, in large attendance, we should say. Lots of tickets have sold out here. There's a mm -hmm. big commentary room 
below us uh, with commentary Polish. in Polish, yeah. Polish. And lots of fans here to see World Cup winner Jancic of Duda, who is du Duda in the business. Yeah, at the European Championship, um, the organizers had to arrange a person to walk with him through the security. <laughs> yes, because it was too much a photo request and the signatures, and people just wanted to see him. And they wow. had to uh, have two people, in fact. To two people? Yeah, one security and one just a person to um, to manage the things okay. around. Wow, okay. That was every He's round a big he was deal. coming like that. Yeah. He I've got security. Started. You've got security. My little dog. <laughs> Okay. In here, I thought you meant me. I was like, "What?" <laughs> you're not my security. Hello, <laughs> cockapoo. But he's not here. She's you need not here, security no. yet here. I, so. I I haven't been bothered here yet, which is good news. <laughs> Jantusov Duda though is a superstar. Proper. Is I mean, superstar. he know people know who this guy is in Poland now. Um, he's been on television. He's uh, he's a he's obviously a very interesting guy as well. Very young. Very confident guy yeah, he and is. yeah he he could he could be world champion one day yeah he's on Why not? He, he, he did that's actually his goal i think and uh, he is on the on the bonners in the streets uh, in in the in, uh, uh, region. region uh, and um, he was nominated as one of the best sports person last year alongside with uh, football player Lewandowski um, and also the tennis player uh, mm -hmm. so yeah he was one of the 10 sports person um, being nominated last year and he did play your move C4 by the way and the point is that uh, I, I really like this move the point mm, is I that you want to push DC if, if white takes the I love it yeah, BC, BC, let's see these moves come in. Two minutes and a bit each now for each uh, participant. And yeah, DTX uh, C, C4 might be a um, big mistake after D3. D3 and the knight are hanging. And um, who comes on D2? Check. Very important check. Important check, check yep. yeah. So that's just not playable. Yeah. And in case if Rook takes, yeah. I think this is in the game, right? Yes. Can we now take, uh, well, if Rook takes, well, then D3, D3 is three just over. On. Knight C3, Queen B6, check and win B2. Yeah. D3, Knight C3. Queen D3. Ah, sorry, I'm blundering my D7 knight. Hold on. Queen D4, check. Queen D4, yeah. yeah, sorry, excuse me. Queen D4, King H2. And now can we push D2? You want to take a 4, D2. D2 first. D2. And yeah, knight d1 is just so passive and awful that this knight is. Now we can take on f4. Now you can take on f4. You can knight go king g7, knight c5 is possible. Mm -hmm. Taking on e4 is possible. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it for Jan. Jan Chistov. Let's see how he decides to, to continue, but it looks like he's actually going to win. Let's check in with Magnus. Uh, Magnus completely winning now. Uh, it seems the bar is up mm -hmm. near the roof, so there will be a forced win. So the it's it's equal position for now, but I think there is some tactics. There has to be a tactic here that wins. The king, the back rank looks very um, ah, the, very the weak. Maybe queen a yeah, queen a eight, king f seven, rook a one. Okay. Get the get the rook in. That looks that looks bad. That looks bad. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty bad. Let's see how Magnus, if he finishes, he senses it. You can see him on the screen there, mm -hmm. looking at the. Uh, he goes, he goes to one immediately. Yeah, that's also good. Yeah. What about Rook C one check? Oh, I did not see that was coming. Rook C one, a knight to two. King F one, knight takes A three, but this is just mate. Queen E six and knight D six or something. I think we have that position. Do we have, did he play rook c1, did he? Ah, oh, he did go rook c1, there we go. Yeah. Okay, do you, do so you think he already sees the checkmate? May, I think he's de deciding where to put the king. He does decide to put the king on f1. Okay, so king f1, knight takes c1, and now white to play and win here. 
Um, queen e6, knight e6. Looks very strong to me. Queen e6, queen f7. Queen, so queen e6. So queen e6, if you go king f8, king h8 is impossible. This is mate in one. King knight f8 and six. knight d6. I'm threatening checkmate here. Mm -hmm. I'm threatening checkmate here if you move the queen away. Queen e7, no queen c8. Queen e7, queen c8, precisely. Mm -hmm. So queen e6 check. Uh, queen queen f7. Seven. Queen f7. And here I don't see a win. That's the problem. Here I actually don't see a win. Queen a... Oh, that's <gasps> so clever. Oh, no. This king f1. Now I understood why he played king f1. He takes e2 square from the knight. Exactly. And knight is hanging. If knight goes on d3, there is a check on e8. And queen d5 wins. Right. King f7 and queen d5. And you wow. win a piece. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's good knight for a harsher. That's and a very he'll good knight. <laughs> good knight oh, oh, wow. was, uh, was promptly... Uh, Promptly, hand was given, and Magnus now goes to three and a half out of four. Mm -hmm. uh, so he'll be pretty happy, actually, uh, with that score, because I think he could have had less points today. Yeah, so. one last round, so um, he will get ready for that. But look at this queen a3. He saw that immediately when he captured the rook on c1. Yep. Uh, this is uh, the playing venue. Looks very nice. Um, let's let's see a little bit. Yep. Uh, uh, we do have several playing venues, and this seems to be the one of the top boards. Uh, looks and on the on the uh, I don't know if our viewers can see the lights. There's that that's the balcony where yep. the spectators can see the top players. Indeed. And uh, very quickly, uh, checking in here with Aronian Ferruja. looks a little bit better for white, a little bit annoying for black. The bishop the Black pieces aren't properly coordinated yet, just yet, but Ali Reza is still well in the game. In the Svana against Anish game, well, Svana is just a pawn up, but these kind of queen endings have to be a draw. I mean, this just is a theoretical draw, but uh -huh. the good news is Svana can play this forever. Yeah, the pawn end game might be losing for uh, Black. The pawn end game is probably King losing. gets on f5, then the g pawn will go forward, and exactly. the pawn from starting point is and be winning, so black has to keep the queens um, on the board. Hikaru uh, wow. has, has played a magnificent game, in my opinion. He has just slowly, slowly, slowly uh, provoked weaknesses. Rook h5, hitting this pawn, and if f6, he wants to go rook h1 and uh, crash in because uh, b7 is hanging. Um, uh, can we very quickly yes. go to the game of Duda? He just played an amazing move, and we have to see that. Duda. Let's have a look. He just Ooh. played 94. This knight Beautiful. is hanging in two ways, but actually white can't capture it because of d1 queen. And then queen on e4 will be unprotected. Beautiful. So knight takes e4, so you have to play the ugly knight d1. And then you can take on c4 check. You can play f5. You can, you can do as you please here. I would probably play f5. That's my intuitively stabilizing that knight. Mm. But, I mean, uh, Kirill shouldn't be king d1. What's this? Well, now you can give check. Yeah, and it's over, actually. Check is, uh, check is good enough. And uh, a lovely win for Jan Chishtov Duda on 100%. Yeah, that's... That's hundred percent, and also th that hundred percent. That it's very precise and very clean. Yeah, uh, he's results. had he's had absolutely no problems so yeah. far. Well done to Jan Christoph, flying the flag high at home. All right, let's see what else we've got going on. Hikaru grinding. Alexander Grishchuk against Timur Gareev. Looks like Grishchuk is not better really here is why it's, I don't see why why he should be much better if at all so that looks like a game which uh, Alexander shouldn't win we've got an interesting end game here uh, Ketty 
We've got Arjun game. playing with White. Obviously, Arjun is a, a name I haven't spoken about, but for people that know me, watch my shows, for example, will know that I think this, this guy is, has got the X Factor. And he's already rated 2650, classical. Mm -hmm. In Rapid, uh, sorry, in Blitz, he's rated 2765. So he's like, well, number whatever, 10 or something in Blitz. Yep. He improved um, last year a lot, and he even won one open tournament um, recently. Yeah. And uh, he's on the, uh, he was on the Euro trip, uh, and I think he got a lot of uh, European rating. <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 he picked up a lot of European rating, but that's rightly so. That's the, that's the danger of a, every European player when they're facing young and tal talented Indian Absolute. players. That's not... And we have a famous endgame here, A and H with Rooks. And it looks like the sort of ending that actually you shouldn't lose because um, it's very difficult to coordinate improving the king. Because you if you come up, you block the rook's protection of the pawn. Mm -hmm. And where do white king stacks? Like which well, let's say uh, I put the king on. I don't know. F three. Uh, F three looks reasonable. All right. You can uh, now slowly push the. Oh, king g four is on there. Yeah, I might go king g four. I've got to be a little bit careful because there are sometimes you give up the h pawn. Let's say you go here. And I have to be a bit careful that this isn't actually just winning for black. Probably isn't, but I don't want to calculate it. Mm. And uh, we've got a close-up here of that game. You can see Arjun there. Uh, trying to hold this draw. This is an important draw to hold. Check. Okay, King D3. And I think he, yeah, uh, yeah. This net, now he got the draw actually quite easy. H5, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll watch the main board. But we have... Uh, Am I supposed to? There are some positions where you're not actually supposed to take this extra pawn. I did look at this quite recently with one of my students as well, mm -hmm. which makes me look a lot worse than I already am, which is a bad problem to have. <laughs> and I can't remember <laughs> in which situation you're supposed to take the pawn because you can use it. Yeah, like here, he's just gone active with the king, h5. Is so it going back to king d5, king all the way to g5? But now it's, it's a weird one because I, when I was looking at these, you weren't supposed to get the king super active. Like, you can't win. So getting active with the king actually can misplace that king. And I wonder if Arjun actually just hasn't properly studied this ending ever. It wouldn't surprise me because it's a weird ending to study. But actually now suddenly, suddenly White feels like he's cut his own king. So just to give you an example, let's say white played here. This is a bit of a, like, let's say, let's say white went here, here, and then went here. Mm -hmm. can now you can pawn? just go a3, right? And you can't, you can't stop the pawn. So I think Arjun has actually made a huge blunder. I think all the way back here, I think this is still in a drawing formation. Um, but I think here you're supposed to go defensive and go king a3. And after h5, now put the rook on h6. Yeah. Something like this. Then you, you can, can also... G7. You can also... But even this, I'm, you know, again, I'm not entirely sure of the theory. But the position he's got, I am very concerned because his king is cut from coming back. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, king, uh, black king will get on b7, b6, and this king will hop the pawn. Mm -hmm. So they've played a few moves. Let's see if that comes through. Uh, in the meantime, some other, some other results. Uh, Daniel Zubov has beaten Sochko. So that's confirmed. My my. I imagine Rasmus is still trying to grind against Giri, but of course, uh, Giri is really not losing that position. Yeah. Hikaru has just got a fantastic position against Parham. Uh, just outplaying him. 
-hmm. And uh, yeah, ninety-seven, ninety-five. Yeah, ninety-seven, ninety-five. It's lovely. And then just to push the eight one. And then find a way to rook b seven. It's very oh, rook naughty. B7, that's very <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's very nice. Rook b seven with the seven idea. Yeah, it looks very, very, very bad. Ninety-seven, ninety-five actually completely dominates this knight on d8, and I, yeah, I, I fully expect uh, Hikaru to convert that position. So, what have we got here? Um, we do have uh, two interesting games. That's Muratli Jababa. Jababa magically try. Uh, Oh Tried yes, we, we haven't seen. What what is, is that game still happening? Uh, can we very fast go to the game of uh, uh, Erasmus Anish? Erasmus against Anish, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just a draw. Uh, is that the current position? I believe that's the current. Oh no, Move sorry, it looks as though it's not the yeah. current position. I will try and get the current position because you're on move. 64, so there's a little bit of lag. But even that position that you see there. The king is very active, and the king can in here, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Check was given. And. Um, G, G, G5? King G4, we played? Is that but a wait, draw? King G5, wait a second, hold on. King G5 is, yeah. Yeah, very King good. G5, hold on. What has Anish done here? What do you do against King G5? I'm in. Because Queen C1 check I have, King takes F5. Yeah. And I can just... Walk back with the king? Walk back with the king. And I think this is winning. It's still actually quite a lot of work. I think but it's winning. But wh why, why... King why? G5 is on the board. And yeah. I think G4 was also winning there in the, that front end game. King G5 is on the board. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And Anish now uh, needing. Uh, I mean. Yeah, so he what if he goes White to be so, so active. Queen E6, I think he wants to play. Queen E6. There is no check, uh, but there is. Um, there is King F4. King F4. Yeah, he does go Queen E6. And King F4, right? Queen e6, king f4, I'm pretty sure will be played. And we do win a pawn by four. So Anish Giri is now in a very dangerous situation. And you know what? If black doesn't give a check, then white will take this pawn with a check and probably trade with a trade of the queen. <coughs> That's quite an upset uh, in that position. Definitely. Wow. I mean, that would be a huge upset, actually. Rasmus would actually be in a fantastic position in the tournament. Aronian Ferugia was a draw, so that's a great draw for Ali Reza. Boris Gelfan beat Shak Mamajarov. Hey, I said, yeah. you can still <laughs> play chess. It was a very interesting uh, position. I wanted to suggest that, uh, that game before, uh, before I saw something was right. wrong. In here. And Alexei Shirov had a wonderful end to the year. He's been playing amazing chess. He just beat Yevgeny Naya. So he's up there. Hikaru did finish against Pyam. I reckon that would be a, a game to show your students for a technical Ooh. victory. That Look looks like an absolute... Mates. I mean, it looks like an absolute gen. It might even be game of the, game of the day. I mean, he's... Uh, it's a classic game. Of, in it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable game. There's king h6 and rook h7 checkmate. So yeah. black resigned it here. I suggest everybody look at this game and understand how powerful Hikaru is. All right. In the meantime, though, Svane against Giri. I mean... This is one of the last games. He, he, he did win the second pawn, and now, uh, and now uh, we can watch this, and, and unfortunately, Rasmus is suffering. Or we can go over to the, to the, uh, to the women's, and we can see that Gunina against... Uh, Lizzie Pitts. Now we've barely covered this. Yeah, very interesting clash in here to top uh, women players on the second board. And 
or Gunina with Let's white pieces. It's Ooh. a pawn end game. Looks very good for white though. Looks it's losing. a pawn end game with looks h pawn. Yeah, h pawn is over. So There's um, nothing to do. So white will simply grab f pawn, uh, give h pawn, and then this is winning as white can walk to the c pawn, take that one, and then the one to the queen. Gunina seems to be um, in a good. Form. She's having She's in very good form. Very good tournament. Yeah. Lizzie trying. I don't know what she's trying, but uh, it's not going to work. Uh, no. Nana did win against Pavlidou, by the way. Uh, Bodnaruk beats Goryachkina. Oh, that's that's and a surprise. And Vaishali beat Muzichuk. So some big upsets mm -hmm. in that round. Lizzie has resigned. Kostenyuk beat Shuvalova as well. And uh, so some big, big results there. Great result for Vaishali. Great result for Bodnaruk. Great result for Nana, Nana and Valentina. Mm -hmm. And Kostenyuk leading the way. But there's a, there's a lot of Russian names up there at the top, uh, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, Back to the game of uh, Giri yeah, and uh, Rasmus. Is this still on? Oh, yeah, it's still on. Now, there are some famous examples in this position of some kind of stale matrix, but it feels as though black doesn't have the correct <laughs> For instance, formation. queen f queen f7, now it's black to move queen f7. For example, the, queen f7 yeah. would be lovely. <laughs> well, well, For instance, like um, if white pushes pawn. If, if white plays g4, it's a huge blunder because of queen f7 yes. check. What a great spot. Beautiful idea to know. And you have to take an it's stalemate. Rasmus with 1 minute 14. It's not going to fall free. He does give a check. But mm -hmm. how to win these positions? Give a check and then move the G pawn. Something like here. Check. King G7. Start moving the G pawn. I've never studied how to win this. Yeah. Queen end game is, uh, is the end game. Uh, that's, uh, I think we don't like to study. John Nunn did a lot of work on it. He he put it in one of his books. I can't remember which one. Uh, where he studied a lot of the mm -hmm. configurations. More about the ones where it's like queen and pawn mm -hmm. against queen. Not queen and two pawns. And if you're the defender, where to put the king. It's all very scientific Yeah. and difficult. So difficult because basically I think this is the most... Uh, these end games are the longest end game, yes. even longer than bishop and rook versus rook. Yes, definitely. Because you know you can still push the pawn. There is a pawn on the board, and this fifty rules uh, rule uh, uh, is fifty moves uh, rule is not really working. And it's so exhausting to, yes. to play <laughs> when you have to defend. It really is. Okay, let's just keep up with this game. So we're gonna we've got the live view there. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, this is one of the last game, and uh, yeah, today Anish was um, was joking about being on the <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> they said we did. They said that uh, either you have to have this rook and bishop versus rook, or now he's not on his, he, now he's he got, got on camera. camera. Unfortunately, this is not what. No, he this is definitely not what for. he wanted. No. Twenty-five. Um, no, it must be. No, no, it's just. No, okay. it's not correct. Ah, uh, he moved it. What did he do? Why is this position on the board? Yeah, this is not luckily it's only us who can see that. So we were okay. going to see that. Um, maybe you can zoom a little bit. I'm not sure how, how our angles are for the, for the board. Anish trying to give checks. He can't do anything else. Here we go. Here's the zoom. Beautiful. Okay. okay. Queen e4. Okay. Slowly, slowly. No rush at all for Rasmus. We could be here for another 20 minutes looking no at problem. this game. Absolutely no rush. He wants um, to make sure. One part of the event is uh, done for today. That's uh, female section. Yes. And for uh, open section, we do have one last uh, round. Yes. The bus will waiting for those people. <laughs> okay. Rasmus now slowly advancing the pawns. And that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna just advance, advance, advance. 
And yeah, and it's really, it's just an impossible defensive task. Yeah. Because it's so easy to play for white, and you have to be, you have to try and create some idea with black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what he can do is to keep the uh, king on h8, just in any case, okay, so if the opponent just uh, yeah. uh, gets tired. But as you see, the piece pawns are already on g4 and f4. Yeah. So how about to push f pawn forward and then sacrifice the queen and the pawn? Yeah, that's and one way to do it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly one way. You sacrifice the queen and you... Queen and the pawn, and the pawn, and, and you queen, have a winning yeah. king and pawn ending. Yes, I think that's very possible. Did um, um, more Muhammad win? No, he didn't Jababa win. Won Jababa won uh, magically wow, with his that's a knight. Magic <laughs> and okay, the so knight, knight from uh, a6. That was the last position we checked. Went yeah. all the way to a2. Wow. And that was not the end, and he managed to win some material and Shocking. he won the game. Okay. Let's have a look here. Trying to get the, um, the position up on our board as well. So uh, Rasmus simply trying to find the correct way to do it. Has to be a little bit careful, of course, but in general. He should be winning this position uh, pretty pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, he wins, and then one time one he, bl he blunder, blunders. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you don't really study this in game every day of the week no. either, so you just try and. It's very. Pr it's just up to the practice. Like, you might have this before, might not, or you just know how to how not to play. That's a stalemate, and the rest you can find it out on the board. Also, the time is never an issue because um, yeah, you can I always can make a lot yeah, of moves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't for for whatever reason. I'm struggling to to get the update here for this game. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is frustrating because this is not the position on the board, so we'll keep the we'll keep the large board. Uh, looks as though Rasmus just everything is very much in control. Hasn't pushed the F and G pawns too much. Yeah. Uh, there was similar position similar position before, but the king was on H five, so that's a small nuance. Uh, that, that it's very very eas easily these positions can be um, can be repeated like three times if you give yeah. too much checks and you play very careful. Queen check. Okay. Rasmus just double checking. He's got enough time. Yeah, we don't see his time either. Yeah, and now I don't know exactly where that black king is. I guess it's on h8. Yeah, it's on h8. And the it white was on h8. The white oh. queen is... No, it has to be Five. on g8 because the white queen just played queen f6. Okay, queen c7. Oh, we have some. Oh, we have some. Yeah, no. we have this position on the board, queen f7 chart. This is the king position? King is on h5, yes. This is oh, I don't position. think it is. It's like the queen is on c7 on the board. Then king. I think we're slightly behind. Oh. I think there's a queen on f6, a king on g6, a king mm. on g8, and a queen on c7. Mm -hmm. yeah. And pawns on f5 and g4. Yeah. And queen h7 check, king g5 is not made. Okay, king g5 only move. Queen back probably. Yes. You know what's really wrong about Queen Endgame when you're losing? You play 100 plus moves, but you still lose the game. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so very devastating. Cruel. Yes. It's very cruel. Like, you cannot really resign because you do have several checks and some ideas. Uh, you play, 
but at some point you just can help it. That's right. Okay, queen e6 check. The king goes to h7. And now Rasmus just needs to find one or two precise moves. For example, the move f6 here probably is good. Uh, unless I'm falling for queen c1 check. Queen c1 check might be a problem. Okay, uh, we'll let Rasmus all the time in the world over a minute. Really doesn't have to stress. He gives a check. Gives another, another check. check. King will go to the corner, no question. Ah, uh, now there's some... Ah, uh, he's going to have to think still. Oh, he's not so sure. Queen h8. Maybe check on uh, on the back rank. Is there a check, queen e8? Yeah, queen e8, king to g7. Ah, he no, he wants to go king to h7, sorry. King to h7. Rasmus still not hasn't found the knockout blow, it seems yet. Okay, he does give that check to check. Ketty, king up. And now, does he want to go f6 now? No, he's giving another check from behind. Oh, no, it's not it's check. It's queen e3, I think. Yeah, unfortunately, as I say, we haven't, for whatever reason, got the got the moves. Mm -hmm. Anish doing everything he can. Yeah. Queen h5. Check from behind. Oh what? no! What? what? He blundered mate! What? He blundered mate! I can't believe it! He's blundered mate in two. King g5, oh, queen no. h6 check. I can't believe it. What? Oh my goodness me. What? Oh dear. A horrible blunder. Oh wow. We have to try and show that. I, I can try and put the position on the board, but I'll try and. Uh, it won't let me recreate. I can maybe do it in analysis. I'm going to try that and re... Th that's so shocking. Let me just try and recreate this, what's happened. These are not the moves. I'm just getting the final position, guys. So just I ignore me while, I, uh, while I, I do this. The final position happens something like this. The queen... Queen e3. The queen was somewhere around here. Uh, the king moved here. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, and I, queen I, e3. The queen was on e3, was it? Yeah. I think it was somewhere down here. I, I'm not sure exactly where the queen was, but just to give you guys an idea, the I'm final, sure the final move was this move. Sorry, Get queen e3. Point. I'm just going to pass, but just to show you guys the idea, Rasmus put the king here, and he fell for the long queen check. King G5, and, and queen now H6. Queen H6 is mate. Oh my god, this is so shocking. We don't see this happening uh, every day or ever. And uh, such a lucky game for, uh, game for uh, Anish Giri. Um, that never happens to me. It never but happens I mean, to me either. I feel so bad for uh, Rasmus. He, he, just, he played so beautifully. Uh, he outplayed Anish Giri, but uh, this guy has a luck in this tournament. And you know, whenever you win a game like this, uh, that means that. Um, that's a very that's good sign. Yeah, yeah this, this could be his tournament, actually. I'm shocked. You're shocked. So it's time to go, go back to Beard on the big screen. And we do need some, uh, so, some time off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top grandmaster from the Netherlands. The alliance and the recommendations that I give are well suited for players of all levels. So I really explain a lot of concepts, but also a lot of basic things. Now it's your move. Don't waste any time. Hit that buy button. Hello again, this is International Master Piotr Gwen bringing you some interesting positions from the last round. So, uh, I mean, as, again, there are so many interesting rounds going on and we cannot cover everything live. So I'm trying to find some positions, some blunders, some beautiful moves, some sacrifices, 
and show it to you just now uh, between the rounds. So here is the game between Hofhannes Gabuzian and Aydin Suleimanli. And um, yeah, the knight is attacking the bishop on f4. B basically, black's position is very nice. I mean, the bishop on c5 is very active. The pawn on e4 is a little bit weak. And yeah, what to do with this bishop? <coughs> the engine says that we can actually play king g2 and allow this take on the foreign. That's not the end of the world. But that doesn't look so great for, for white. And white just didn't want to allow taking on f4 and played very logical move bishop g5. Because, yeah, going to e3 doesn't look good because then the pawn can be doubled. Bishop on d2, then some rook e8, the pawn on e4 is weak. Well, also doesn't look good. So bishop g5, an active move. But there is something very wrong with this move, and I've been talking about uh, that loose pieces drop off. And now black had a very nice shot, a double attack, but maybe not so typical like in other um, uh, examples. So here, queen e5 attacks the bishop on g5, and what is the second threat? Second threat is queen takes g3 check. And this is deadly. So if the bishop, let's say, takes on f6, then there goes queen takes g3, king h1, and actually there is mate coming soon because queen h3, king g1, knight f4. That even if it wouldn't be mate, I mean, black still just took some pawns with a check and can re could recapture on f6. But yeah, but that's mate. So after queen e5, white played king g2, but then he lost his bishop and the game. So let's see some other examples. Usually I'm not showing you full games, I'm just showing you some examples, but this is very short. And you might have missed this because that's one of the last boards in the women's section, but I found this very interesting because I've seen some other people falling into the trap. I'm trying to make uh, those positions educational for you so you can learn something. So e4, c5, so the Sicilian defense, and we had a Sveshnikov, so we'll just quickly go through the opening moves. That's all very well known theory. And uh, now e5, knight db5, well, d6, and now this knight d5 uh, move, which is getting quite popular, <coughs> knight takes d5, ed, knight e7, and c4. So this is the Sveshnikov defense. And now Blake should probably just move the knight somewhere to g6 to f5, bishop e7, castle, and just a game. But Blake played a6, and it's a typical move just to get rid of the, the knight on b5. Um, so what's wrong with this? And as I said, I've seen some other people falling into this trap. So white doesn't need to return with the knight. You should always try to look for active moves for the counterattacks. You, when you are attacked, you don't always need to move back. Queen a4, it's a lovely move because first of all, a takes b5, queen takes a8. This is easy, just we gain some material because the rook obviously is stronger than the knight. And there are some threats of discoveries like knight c7 or knight to d6, actually double check and mate. And um, black played bishop d7, well, unpinning here, but knight, d6, knight takes d6 was a checkmate. So very funny miniature, but as I said, uh, we should all learn from this because I've seen it in some other games. Okay, so let's see some other positions. That was very interesting. Um, very experienced grandmaster Elias Mirin playing against young, uh, very strong also grandmaster, like above 2600, and raising his rating, Kiryu Shevchenko from Ukraine. And here the engine says that the position is equal, but I understand that why it did not feel comfortable here because the material is equal, but you see white is pinned all over the place, like on the uh, on the e file, on the fourth rank. And Ilya just well, he could play king f1 and then, yeah, it should be fine. But he wanted to solve issues um I mean by force. Just he didn't want to be in this bind. So he played knight c5. So interesting move because 
if rook takes e2, there is rook takes f4. Black may be a bit better, but you know, the bishop is hanging on h4. <coughs> the pawns b7, a6 are also under attack, so it might be okay. Um, the other move, rook takes uh, d4, then we can just take on e6 with the knight. Um, yeah, just attacking with the rook. It's all fine, everything is protected. So what was wrong? So what did Grandmaster Smirin miss by playing knight c5? It looked like he had everything covered. I mean, rook d4, we've seen it, it's fine. Rook d2, we've seen it, it's fine. But there is something else. And I've been also talking previously that we should always look at moves with a check. And bishop takes f2 was a very nice touch. Yeah, and now, after rook takes f2, well, there came rook e1 check. So the rook is no longer under attack. And okay, if you go rook f1, we just take it. So king got to go to g2, and the rook is not taking on f2, of course, is taking on d4, and you can just calculate the pieces. Black won a pawn and the exchange, and this is essentially a winning position for black. So very, very nice. Okay, um, I think the next round is about to start, so I'll uh, show you maybe some more positions after the last round, and now we'll go back uh, to studio with Katie and Lawrence. So it's all from me. My name is Sam Shankland. I was the US champion in 2018. My goal is to keep things as simple as possible, but no simpler. So if I believe there is an easy solution to something, I'm giving it. No questions asked. Thanks much, and I wish you the best for all your studying. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back. This is round five of today's action at the World Rapid Championships here. From Warsaw, Poland, we are at the National Stadium, and uh, we've had uh, an unbelievable round in many ways. Some brilliancies, some disappointments, but nobody will be more disappointed that round than Rasmus Svana, who um, we couldn't get the moves through, but we got the idea through at least. And uh, Rasmus was two pawns up in a queen ending and blundered a fairly well-known, let's call it, checkmate, and he'll be hurting. And these kind of moments can derail you from a tournament. And poor Rasmus, you know, had he won that, he would be near the top of the table. But he's not. And so it is Anish who's uh, managing to keep up. And these are the pairings for the next round. Very, very fantastic. Round five. Shirov against Carlson. Alexei Shirov in his wonderful form continuing uh, on plus three here, playing against Magnus, who uh, dropped only half a point, and uh, Magnus will love playing against yep. Alexei. Alexei was the first participant who was, you know, getting on the board and getting, re getting ready for the um, for the uh, next uh, game. And young Christopher, that was the second person who was at the playing venue. Uh, he's facing uh, Badu Jabava. And we do have Anton Korobov, who did won that game, the Russian yep, game. Yeah, Korobov must have won, so he's playing Jan Nepomnesi. And Anish Giri with the luckiest win yeah. of the <laughs> tournament so far, probably at least on the boards we've seen playing white against Boris. And normally what happens, is you, as you say, Ketty, when you get a piece of luck like that, mm -hmm. you tend to continue that luck through. So Anish will be feeling very, very bullish going into his game against Boris. And then we do have Abdus Satarov playing against Grishchuk. Uh, this young man, Abdus Satarov, being very, very impressive. Some other names on the fringe. Timur Gareev up there playing Fabiano. Uh, Jordan Van Forest playing Sargissian. This is a great spot for Jordan, in my opinion. Hans Niemann, one of the greatest talents out of the US, 18 years old, um, playing Alex Sienko. He'll love that pairing. Um, and many, many more. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the female section has already ended, so let's take a look at the uh, results, and uh, we can figure out on the uh, leaders after round four. We might not be able to get the results, because I remember saying we might be able to only get the pairings. Pairings. 
All right. Yeah, but there will Anything. be no. Anything. <laughs> uh, what we can do is perhaps we can just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we can just say out loud, because I don't think we've got that ready. But, Goyachkina, top of the table. Uh, ah, maybe that's not actually quite correct. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get an update for you guys on the state of play in the women's section. Hopefully we can get a graphic before the end of the transmission with an updated table. But uh, for now we're seeing, well, Shirov Carlson, a game which, uh, uh, you know, an old, uh, let's put it this way, if this was Shirov of uh, 1997, Mm -hmm. uh, we could be looking at fireworks. Are we going to get fireworks? I think Alexei has chilled out later on in life, but uh, who knows? We've got a, a Spanish so far. <laughs> and Alexei. But he still does his uh, fire on the board. Oh, yes. As uh, his book says so, and he made the first move d4, if I'm not mistaken, and the knight f3 was the next one. Yeah, we're going to get the uh, the moves through any second. You guys, so bear with us. Afruja Sarin is a very interesting game Ooh. as well, I should say. My goodness, I completely missed that. Fruja that Sarin. is so interesting. Two young, talented yeah. stars already facing each other on the last round of for day one. Yep. Uh, this game will be very interesting. Very, very interesting. So we'll have a look at that, of course. And what else have we got? As I said, actually, all the pairings look super interesting this round. No, no mismatches at all. So uh, the moves will appear any moment now. Mm -hmm. Do not fret. And we'll get straight into it. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, the round will start at 3, uh, just like today, Central European time. So we already invite uh, the viewers for tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have the... Um, rest of the, not rest of the day, uh, the part of the other uh, games there. And then we do have actually three days for a Rapids, right? Yep, three days worth of Rapids. So tomorrow there'll only be four games. Mm -hmm. uh, and on, yeah, tomorrow four games and the day after four games. So that will complete the 13. And... Some uh, slight connection issue here. Just bear with us for a very small moment, but we will bring you all the action. That's right. Yeah. What but do you uh, think uh, this this match will be uh, tied, or uh, we're gonna have result? In no, I think there's gonna be result in this match. I'm gonna go with Magnus. He's he's uh, starting to stamp his authority. It's a late game. Alexei will be more tired than Magnus. And uh, I think Magnus will, will win somehow this game. Mm. All right. Perhaps we can get another look at uh, a board at least while we wait. Uh, let's go to... The second, uh, the first board, in fact. That's uh, Jan Kristofida or... Uh, yeah, where is Jan? Oh, well, we've got a close-up there of Magnus <laughs> in his famous pose. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, twiddling that night, trying to get some inspiration. <laughs> we all need a little bit of inspiration from <laughs> time to time. So, ah, okay, it looks as though we may... We may have liftoff, we may not. Yeah, before that, so let's once again uh, remind our viewers the prize fund in open section is 300, uh, 350 US dollars, and the winner will get $60,000, second place will get $50,000, and the third place will get $40,000. In female section, 150 USA dollar is the prize fund, and the winner will get forty thousand dollars. Second place will get thirty thousand dollars, and the third place will get twenty thousand dollars. There are prizes for more, uh, more places, but what a uh, New Year, Christmas, New York trip uh, for the players! Lovely today. new, lovely Christmas yeah. present. Yes, 
beautiful present. I'd love a Christmas present. Oh, me too. What oh, would you like? Uh, I'd Christ like the moves. Moves? Yeah, the moves. We haven't got them yet. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll come for Christmas. I was, I was thinking, like, what you, what you gonna, what you gonna you buy have any if you? Nice Christmas uh, present. Oh no, because you celebrate on the seventh, don't you? Oh well, I got some present. I got actually one present uh, this Christmas. Okay. It's a very beautiful hat, and I love it. Okay. It's quite cold in here. So yes. It's quite useful. Yes. But if you are the winner, uh, and you got sixty thousand dollars, what would you buy? Um, <laughs> what would I buy if I had to buy something? Oh, good question. What okay, would what would you do then? Um, I would buy a very nice drinks cabinet or wine cellar, <laughs> a fridge. I would buy like a fridge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I would buy a fridge. With fri 60,000. Yeah, but they're very expensive, these fridges. People don't realize. <laughs> okay. I'd buy a new jacket. Okay. You know, I'd really go crazy. You know, jacket and I'll buy some new socks. <laughs> I'd really go crazy. <laughs> okay, guys, as you can tell, we haven't got the moves, <laughs> which is have. difficult. It's difficult to analyze a game without the moves. I they can tried. try and construct it, but I, they won't even let me do that. So I don't know what's happened to the PGN, but uh, without the PGN, we can't can actually do, do very much. We can just speculate. We've got, I can tell you, we've got a Spanish, and it looks like a relatively calm Spanish, I have to say. Is there a knight on B4? There's a knight on B4, and there are double D pawns, and... Uh, the knight has to be careful not to be trapped, but uh, Magnus is not going to trap his knight. Um, I think. But after seeing what happened to the previous game, the previous game <laughs> anything is possible. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, this is um, obviously apologies, everybody. Uh, oh, I think I see the game. Uh, but we. Really yeah, you've got the game, around. but uh, if I could input the moves, I would. I would, and unfortunately, yeah, I can't. Okay. So I'm about to go to analysis, maybe you can do that. Yeah, I tried that as well, okay. and that also didn't let me. Uh, maybe we can just full screen mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the players for the for the moment. I'm sure we'll get some moves shortly, but it's uh, frustrating. So let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see a full screen. Yeah, oh, okay. This is uh, fully zoomed. Well, knight is on b4 and the pawns are doubled on d. And, uh, well, in case if white tries to trap the knight on b4 with c3, then knight has a move on a6 before the edge of the board, but then the knight comes on c5. And, uh, yeah, knight is not trapped. <laughs> in short words. Yeah, so the knight on b4, you can see it there just in the picture. It's not getting trapped. It can go back to a6 on the, on the edge of the board. So Magnus is not blundering uh, his, his knight. And, yep. uh, and White is uh, spending a lot of time. Uh, he just made a move. He played c3. Yeah, c3, knight a6 knight has a6. been played, yeah. And... Uh, yeah. Looks okay at least. Okay. Yeah. This is <laughs> This is obviously a bit frustrating for everybody, so please be patient with us guys because uh, we have uh, not got the moves, and obviously, lots of people are also relying on the on the moves. Yeah, maybe we can go get the camera on the uh, on the uh, game Al Alreza and. Uh, yeah, let's let's look at another game. Sure, why not? And maybe we have better angle. Yeah, why not? 
Let's see if we can do that. And here we have Jan Christoph Duda. Yep, here's Duda. And Jabava. Correct. Vadi Jabava. One of the most creative players of his generation, Vado. And also a creative uh, streamer. Swimmer. Yeah, streamer. Oh, streamer. Yes. I thought you said swimmer. No, You've I don't never know seen about that. <laughs> but have you seen him I've, streaming? I've not actually seen his stream. Oh. Is it really good? Oh, you, you have to see that. Yeah? Oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> he can, he Seriously, can. you have not seen I've it? I've not seen his stream. No, I've not. Oh, no. I've really not. But I know Bardo. I've had some adventures with Bardo, so I can imagine just how it is. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So Bardo Javava. He has uh, his ways to celebrate uh, uh, the, uh, the victory of after the tournament. He likes to do some disco dance. On some the disco dance? <laughs> I've, I've, I, I have seen and heard Bardo sing before. So now you can see dance. Are you a dancer as well, Cassie? Oh, do you disco dance? I'm not, I'm not, but no. I've heard that you, you like like you enjoy the dance. I do. I, I do enjoy the dance. I got to get back into it. I would dance right now if it made the moves come. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if we're going to get informed about that. That would be great, but clearly it's just a bit difficult right now. Mm -hmm. So our greatest apologies. Um, at least I have the position. Yeah, it's weird that you have the positions there and we can't get them here. Very, very frustrating. Okay, so... Let's see here. Okay, so Alexey and Koduda looks kind of level. I'll, I'll give everybody just a... Do that. Sorry, do, do, yeah. no, sorry. Do the Jubava look at the pawn being pushed on G4. Uh. Yeah. So, d yeah, do the Jubava, I beg your pardon. Um, and everybody, just so you know, uh, no, uh, no, no streaming service will have this correct. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody who's covering this, uh, because there's some in incorrect information from the PGNs, which is why um, we're not getting the moves. So you are watching this on other platforms, it's because, ah, yeah, that, that, that there's some sort of conflict or some sort of error with the PGNs. This has happened before. It's not the first time ever. Oh, yeah, it happens all the time, but it has actually happens at the beginning. But yeah, we it's had normally <laughs> at the beginning. We had peaceful beginning. We had four uh, good rounds. Yeah, we, so we, we had to have this uh, at some point, and here we have it. At least it's now and not the final round or mm. the final two rounds, you know, yeah. so... Um, we'll do our best, but yeah, this game here, just so you know, looks uh, looks uh, balanced pretty much. Perhaps we can. I'll just give you guys a summary of what I see. Oh, if Napomnishi was in fact playing Abu Satorov, which he could have been, that has ended in a draw apparently mm -hmm. already, which looks very strange. Napo plays against Kuriba now. Yeah, exactly. So again, the names are all messed up as well. So. <laughs> We're having a few problems here. <laughs> um, let's get the camera on another board. Let's just try another board. Camera. Board uh, one. Here's I Magnus. Guess. Now, if we can zoom in, at least we can try and commentate uh, from the side. So if we can zoom. You know, for, uh, for many years, uh, many things are not changing in chess world, uh, including Shirov's haircut. Yeah, Shirov has looked the <laughs> same for yeah. 30 years. Yeah. That's right. Forever young. Uh, okay, so Alexei Shirov here. And, okay, a pawn has been captured. Mm -hmm. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Yeah, uh, Shirov pu uh, pushed the pawn for their d4. Yeah, so this position, just so you guys know the, how I'm seeing it, looks uh, fairly decent for Alexei, actually. And it feels as though Magnus actually has to try and find a way to to get the rest of his pieces out. He's playing black. You can see the bishop's still on c8 there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, knight is on a6. 
Uh, and uh, White's latest move, move Bishop E3, stops Knight to come on C5, which uh, which is only legal move for the Knight. Yes. Uh, so these two pieces, Bishop C8 and Knight A6, are not um, the best pieces for Black? No. No, they're not. No, they're not. Um, okay, Queen D6 here by Magnus Carlsen. So Magnus trying to blockade the pawn mm -hmm. and get his knight into play. Decides to play Queen D6. And now a typical maneuver would be Knight D2 to yep. E4, which knight. is exactly what he just played. Knight D2 was played. Knight D2 to E4. Do you think Queen Knight C5 will be played here by Magnus to stop Knight coming on E4? And in case, uh, if you want to but come this Knight, Knight C5. I'm wondering whether actually Sheriff can take Queen takes it. So mm -hmm. Knight C5. So the Knight comes in. The Bishop whack, whacks it off. The Queen takes. The Knight goes into E4. The Queen goes back to E7, and it's there where you need to find something with. With white, but I don't see anything. You know what I what I really like uh, mm -hmm. after knight c5, you play bishop c2 also. with the idea to push b4 next move. Yes. To have the bishop on long diagonal, uh, targeting h7 pawn, and then to play knight on e4. Also possible, yes. Yeah, this might not go the way as Magnus plans. No. Uh, and if he gets a uh, worse position, yeah. sheriff is here and ready to to use that. Yeah. He is. He absolutely is. So that's going to be a, a dangerous moment for, for Magnus. I mean, he's already in a, yeah, he's already using a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's that happy with his position. He plays bishop e7. Okay, bishop to e7. He's clearing the sixth rank for his queen so that after knight e4, he can, he can post the queen on g6. Uh, this is his, his idea. I actually really like bishop e7 because now f5 is also in the air. Mm -hmm. f5, f5 with some ideas, maybe even f4. If this pawn goes fast on f3, why not? Yeah. Or just to stop knight coming in the center. Shirov is very focused. Uh, right now it's 9 p.m. here in Poland, quite late. Very late day. Uh, for uh, for chats. Um, you know, the most of the players would like to play uh, the games earlier because they uh -huh. are fresh, right? Uh, or rather than to play until this time. But this is the last round. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Do you think three o'clock is a good time to play? Or do you uh, for it's me, it's a bit uh, late bit for late. Uh, okay. for this uh, format because we have we have a lot of rounds, right? yes. five rounds. If it's a classical game, that can be okay. Okay, but uh, yeah. But here we have the participants from around the world, so uh, to find the most uh, comfortable time for everyone is quite hard, right? Oh, F4 here by Alexei Shirov. A very, <laughs> very ambitious move. But is it good? Could be genius. Wouldn't surprise me. Magnus is looking very confused. Which either means it's a really good move or it's a really bad move. Yeah, um, <laughs> I this agree move with that. F4, I mean, I didn't even consider this move. But and I what happens after you take that pawn? Bishop I guess you takes. go bishop takes. Queen gives a check from And then you D6. just move the king in the corner and say, I've got now an F file to work with. And mm -hmm. the C7 pawn is weak, so he's going to take it. So I fully expect... Yeah, we have it, bishop on f4, and the queen uh, probably will go on uh, b6 or c5, I think on b6. Mm. Or it can go on g6. It can and go to g6 and stop knight Well, queen g6, bishop c2, perhaps. Oh, we've got some moves. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, dance then. He just promised us. I said I would dance to get the moves. Not once the Ah, you had... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's a bit like, a you know, they used to do the rain dance, and they used yeah. to dance to get the rain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Once the rain came, they stopped dancing. No. <laughs> so now I'm just... We got moves. We got moves. All right, we... Yes, no. Uh, sorry. Korobov, Nepomnishi has ended in a draw. Mm -hmm. Vidit, MBL has ended in a draw. So we've missed those. Right. Now, what can be of interest? 
Shirov Carlson. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we're talking about. The king goes to h1. So Shirov has played this very, we can just go straight to here. We have a kind of normalish position. And Shirov decides to open up the position here with the move pawn to f4, which is a very double-edged move because he weakens his king, but he brings more pieces into the attack. So e takes f4, bishop takes f4, check, and king to h1. And now the move knight to c5 by Magnus, and I fully expect the bishop to come back to c2. I mean, this is just the only reasonable move. It looks like, unless I'm missing There is bishop e3 as well yeah. to pin, but bishop c2 makes more sense here to get this bishop on this diagonal. Yeah, and now Magnus needs to find a move, and he's gone for the first time head in hand. So yes. this is a kind of pose where I think Magnus is not that comfortable somehow, if I know, if I know his body language quite well. Um, he's trying to, to focus more than he is now. Yeah. Now, I don't see any immediate way to win or checkmate or create some wild attack. Yeah, meanwhile, another game, and they didn't draw Anish Giri. So I'm like, it's, it, was, it was quite a day for me. So he played with uh, Boris. Is that really Gotham? over? Oh, yeah, apparently it is. Yeah, that's right. Apparently they agreed to draw. And after B5, uh, Anish was the one who offered the draw. Okay. He's a very practical player. He, he saved the game. He's happy with that. Yeah, and he's he probably that. emotionally very, very tired. Uh, it's so hard to yeah. play after such a long and... Uh, um, difficult game. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah very when you're losing game. for an hour, it's hard. Agreed. Okay, so what can Alexei do? Because this is actually a really interesting position, and we should probably try and analyze it. So I'm thinking to call for some weaknesses on the king side. How about queen a h5? And if I just go g6, blocking everything? Yeah, g6. And now... Um, okay, the bar goes right now. It comes back. So nice. Yeah, that doesn't feel quite right to go queen h5, but I, I quite like the move b4 here. Now, the bar is going crazy, but ignore it because I don't think it knows. But it does feel better for white, this position, and that's why Magnus had his hand in head. To, I mean, his head in his hands. Yeah. Because, like, this move queen f3, uh, sorry, protecting this pawn, threatening to bring this rook, there's a lot of pieces on the king side here. Yeah. I would be very worried here if I was Magnus. Uh, do you think he is counting on d5 one because it might be a weakness? Like a I think he is counting on it somehow. But I also think he understands that this position is probably very bad for him mm -hmm. and that he's going to need some, some help from Alexei. So I think Magnus Carlsen in... Quite serious danger here. Queen f3. Okay, let's try and understand. And if rook here, let's say. Is his idea just to bring the rook in anyway? Because you can't take on d5 as a result of queen h3. And it's a double attack. That looks winning. Oh, you can also simply ignore that pawn and play something else. And in case of bishop d5, then queen h5 is on the board. Mm -hmm. You mean here something else? Uh, I mean, instead of queen f3, ah. if, if you want to play anything else, like, because bishop d5 is not, in fact, a threat, because oh, queen h5 is... I uh, see, yeah. yeah, so this is not actually a threat, because queen yeah. h5. But it feels like I want to protect it anyway, because the queen uh, allows this rook yeah. to come in, and I can I have more versatility with the queen. So that actually looks... Uh, very good for white, and, you know, let's be honest, Alexei Shirov made a career out of these positions. Yes. These were the positions he won consistently for years and years and years. Yeah, that, that's his positions when, where he felt very comfortable to, to play, and there, there, there are so many ideas, and now a lot of uh, lines are... Um, running in, in his mind, yeah, and he likes it. Yeah. Uh, but he has to watch out the clock, four minutes for, for him. This yeah, is he's a, a bit low on time. Yeah, he has to make moves, uh, and maybe he has to make some like easy moves, like really um, 
I, I think, logical moves? I think he is trying to find a winning continuum. I think he feels right like this mm -hmm. position is... This is the, that's the momentum he has to use now and not to give him a chance to breathe. M maybe not that this is just the, mo like the moment exactly, but this is like he, he senses that if he's not winning, he's much better and he needs to find a, a correct continuation. And Alexei is so creative. He, he I thought B4 he goes, here he to, to push the knight. Yeah, I, I like Knight B4. D7 and Queen G4. He goes Queen E1. Oh, wow. Now, this one uh, also makes sense. I think what he wants is if Bishop D6, he wants to play Queen H4. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can. And now, after G6, the point is you've got moves like Bishop H6 yeah. if you want. And queen f6 win citing on pot. Bishop h6, queen h6. Ah, uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if you get in bishop h6, yeah. queen f6, you yeah. win. So I think that's what he wants. But... Uh, How about rook, um, rook e8? Rook e8? Yeah. Rook b8. And to go queen g3. I guess this is his idea. He does yeah, go rook we have e8. Rook e8. Queen g3 looks uh, quite logical here. Bishop d6 because c7 pawn is hanging. You can also take d5. Like It's not clear, right? Because if I take and you take, queen I can now just go queen c6 or something. And uh, doesn't look doesn't look too bad. So let's have a look. Yeah, queen g3 Rook b8, queen g3 is on the board. And uh, <coughs> well, it's still it, black still has to solve some some problems. But I I actually just do think he's going to take on d5. I think he's going to take bishop c7 and just go back to b7 or something like this. I think Magnus is going to win this position still. That's yeah. my prediction. I didn't like queen e1. Hmm. Yes. Meanwhile, I, I'm just having a quick look at the other games. I kind of have a feeling that at some point B4 move will be uh, crucial for Magnus. Mm -hmm. Bishop B D5 is on the board. Do you capture that? Okay, so I think Magnus is out of the woods. Let's quickly go to Jan Chistof, because Jan Chistof in a fantastic position. Look at the king on C2. Yeah, the king's on C2, but it's not in danger. It can always slip back to B1, and this last move, knight A2, is classic. Uh, positional chess, looking at the big hole here on c6. And uh, this is a very difficult position for Bardo. In fact, I would say that this position is uh, the sort of position Bardo does worst in. I think he doesn't do well in positions where he has to make only moves and passive only moves. Mm -hmm. And I think this is basically one where, I mean, the position might already be objectively losing for black or something like that, but it, it, it looks very, very bad. Volokitin against Nakamura, and we have this position here, which um, Hikaru is a pawn up in a Berlin, which is completely weird that he's a pawn up, but the rook is on the seventh, and I guess uh, Andre is basically saying you can't keep your rooks active, hold your queen side, and if I play a move like rook b8 now, then I can at least play rook d d7 and um i'm winning uh, uh, oops i'm winning a bunch of pawns back that's that didn't yeah. work out very well yeah so i'm just winning a lot of pawns and probably andre's correctly assessed that he's just okay here because again he has a very good handle of these positions let's look at abu satarov against grishchuk now sasha has got what looks like a really good position Pawn is on d2, and white is very close to, to just being losing. But I wonder now if we get to see the defensive skills of Nodirbek and see how good he does um, in, in a defensive role, because we haven't seen that yet. We've yeah. only seen him on the front foot. 
Dubov Anton is always a very interesting game as well. The El Nino Anton from Spain. And uh, it looks as though uh, El Nino is doing just fine. Has to be a little bit careful of some something. Some bishop takes f7 check. So king g7 is just the most natural move in the world. And I expect him to just be very fine here. So El Nino is doing fine. Um, yeah, he just played king g7. Yeah. I think El Nino will do just fine. Now bishop h6. Bishop c6 is a threat. Uh, yeah, he's going to go queen f6 here. Bishop takes c6. You can even just take back immediately because the queen is... Can white play rook c2? Queen f6, rook c2. Mm -hmm. Maybe even take here. Let me think. Like, takes. Probably don't have to do that. Knight b4. Wait. There are a lot of moves suddenly. Yeah. Actually, this is... Ah, uh, maybe I would have to take here or something. Rook d6 also exists, but if I take, take... Knight here, queen takes here, knight takes here. I just wasn't sure after queen takes a7. Queen b2. Ah, we can take on b2. Mm -hmm. Then it's then it's good for black at least. Okay, so he's not he's not struggling there. Let's take a look at. Uh, let's go back to the Magnus game. Maybe we can stay here for a while. And Magnus now, um, bishop h6. Okay, Alexei down. Two um, minutes. That's uh, that's um, not a lot of time, and the uh, the position itself is not uh, that big deal anymore. No, the, Magnus's pieces are, are nicely coordinated, and he just plays knight g5 here. Oh, ah, this is a very strong move, knight g5, hitting the queen, mm -hmm. and I think you probably have to take it because. Uh, if queen g3, bishop d6, and your queen is being chased, and you have to defend g2, queen f2, and now there's all... Uh, Knight h3. Oh, oh, goodness. Look at that. Actually, that move wins, <laughs> because you yeah, can't the queen is g2. Yeah, the queen is the strap there. Amazing. So he had to take, which is what has happened. And now Magnus got the two bishops. He, okay, Alexei understands the danger. Plays bishop d3. And... Um, I would still take oh, black. Can we, can we take on b3 and then on f1 and queen c4? Queen c4. Knight c2. Oh, yeah. And um, queen c2. And now queen f2. Hoping for the best. Oh. Because if you take, I give the check yeah. on f7. Not anyway. nice. So that's a quite a good little line, actually. So actually, we get to a very concrete moment. I really like Alexei's last move, actually. I think this was a really good. Uh, yeah, I think he saw that queen of yeah. three, and he's confident with that move. Can, uh, okay. okay, takes, takes is on the board. After this bishop of b3, I start not to like uh, knight c5 because, like, there are not much mm -hmm. of the pieces on the board. Yeah, but uh, you know, Magnus has, has got uh, open lines, um, as, and he's he. This, these are the positions where his intuition and his feel mm -hmm. have made him into the champion he is. Like, I bet you he thinks he's better here because, like. After queen d5, already it's very difficult to see where to put this knight. D4. Yeah, knight d4, and like he's got ideas of b4 or bishop f6. Mm -hmm. uh, b4 looks very standard, yeah, but uh, you know Alexei yeah, okay. might might be able to hold some of these positions. It wouldn't surprise me if Alexei actually did hold. Now, I think what he's done is very clever. Duda still has a phenomenal position against 
Baldur, I mean, this position is just really bad because e4 is threatening to win a piece and it might actually already be time to resign because I, I don't see how you stop e4 here. Mm. Yeah, our black pieces are just so uh, not coordinated and the king still is in the center and cannot even castle because that would be under h5, very dangerous attack. Uh, queen d8 will be under knight c6, and queen d6. Queen d6 uh, will be under maybe e4. Even knight c6 here. Knight c6, bishop b4, bishop b5. Knight c6, bishop takes e5. Bishop e5, yeah. So it's just too good this is just no good. Yeah, okay, so he, at least Bardo tries something, but it is just a try. So a b, a b, bishop takes e5, b3 check. King d1 and no checkmate. I guess. I wonder how. It should be five. It should be five on the board. Ah, he didn't even take AB. Mm -hmm. That's a strange decision not to open the A file, but okay. We'll come back to that. Let's go back to the Magnus game. Magnus, uh, has he moved yet? Mm, looks like. I think he just made a move. Um, so he took quite a lot of time. Uh, from uh, seven minutes, he went down to three. And he played bishop f6. It's on. Uh, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> change, changing the game. Where did he go? Well, we've lost that. <laughs> okay, we're right having, some, having some, having uh, some, some, uh, yeah, a few, a few issues here because the, the boards are all disappearing, <laughs> which is nice. So we had we had them uh, we had them for a short while at least today. Mm. Maybe you can dance to him. You really just want to see me dance. <laughs> I'm going to dance Georgian folkloric. I know all about it. Really? Yeah, you go on your knees. You're, like, you're, you're very down and you kick your legs like that. Oh, wow. Did you know that? I now know I'm, that. I'm telling the truth, right? Yes, very true. And you, there's a lot of spinning in Georgian folkloric. They can do the spins. For <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. It's, we it's do actually that. quite incredible. Um, we have no boards. That's okay. Who needs a board? Um, we'll get a zoom. We need a board. <laughs> we'll zoom. We'll zoom to let's the game. Zoom. Let's zoom. Let's zoom to the game. Luckily, we don't have much of the pieces now. Yeah, okay. you wanted to say something. I stopped you. <laughs> if you guess who will win the tournament, I'll mm -hmm. do the Georgian dance on the last day. You, okay. are, you only have one guess, and it can't be Magnus Carlsen. Uh, okay. You have uh, to choose one more player. Okay, Duda. Duda. So okay. if Duda wins the tournament, I have to do the Georgian dance. Right. There you go. Are you happy now? <laughs> yes, I'm going to mark that. <laughs> yeah, you mark that it. down. It's on camera, so it's <laughs> <Dance>. okay. <laughs> <Do that. laughs> All right, what have we got here? We've got some kind of... The queens have come off, have they? I can't see the queens from this angle. Yeah, queens were treated on C4. Okay. Um, and now we have this pawns B2 and C3 for mm -hmm. white and C4 for black. <coughs> looks slightly better for Magnus, actually, because mm -hmm. white has got some back rank issues. Uh, you can attack this b2 pawn by rolling the rook down to e2. Yeah, um, white has two pawns, h2 and g3, and it uh, seems like uh, Shirov is not happy to push with uh, none of those pawns, but instead he, he plays with knight. And in fact, if he goes with h pawn, like can play g3 and still have a uh, very strong uh, play. Uh, and in case of g3, then h2 will be um, exactly will be um, a target. So uh, the weakness. So uh, this is very small advantages that. Uh, oh, we've got the position back. Yeah, Great. Awesome is looking. Here we go. Uh, we've got the position back. The boards are reappearing one by one. <laughs> 
So knight b5, so yeah, in this position, Magnus did roll in with his rook to... Uh, hmm. Well, he can go now rook b8, because the bishop on f6 mm -hmm. is hanging. So he played rook e2. Rook e2. And as I say, I prefer black ever so slightly, but... It How about knight d6? Do I have knight d6. Uh, rook takes b2, knight takes c4, rook somewhere, rook um, e2. Maybe two, because knight e3 was there. Yeah, and I tell you, this three versus two with the bishop against knight on one side is not easy to hold. Like, that's a real, like, Magnus is going to torture, actually, Alexei here, unfortunately. And Alexei did go with, uh, g3. with g3, so rook e2, g3. Which so now bishop is hanging on f6. Yeah, now the bishop is hanging. Uh, can no, he can take on b2 and b5 because uh, Alexei will be the first to attack c4 pawn. Bishop e7. This looks like a nice move. Mm -hmm. Stopping knight d6 and knight a3. Now you might force the white rook to go very passive, which again is just horrible. Maybe he goes knight a3 anyway. Yeah, because after knight a3, taking here is, is a blunder, and he does. Because this ending you do hold. Because the three against two in the rook ending doesn't... Even doesn't after rook c2? Yeah, you hold this because uh, you just go rook a1. Mm -hmm. Take, and you go a4, and you're very fast. Mm. I think. Rook e3, a4, c3. Oh, I see the knight's uh, knight is still on Maybe. The board. Uh, you have to calculate something. but Yeah, I mean, he's never going to take this. Yeah. He took on Yeah, he e2. took, took, and we get the same position. And he's going to go rook... Uh, Rook back to e2 here. And this is um, real suffering, I think, for white. Because the king can never... Yeah, king, king is carded. Yeah, and, and, and you, can, you can play h5, h4 at the right moment. Mm -hmm. And then put the bishop on, on the long diagonal and target this pawn. This feels like real, real suffering. And um, Carlson has two minutes um, advantage in yes. this position. Uh, Shiro plays on the second. Um. Exactly. And Carlson has got all the advantage. Okay, so let's see what happens. So king g7, okay, Magnus improving his king, knight d5. Now the bishop is going to probably go to... It's actually got a few options. I was going to say d6 or g5, but d6. And now the bishops are perfectly located for h5, h4 to cause some problems. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, can we can we very quickly go to the game of to Duda, Duda and yeah, if I uh, can find Shapava? The problem is finding oh, it. Oh yeah, it's, it's uh, unfortunately it's not in my. Um, seems like Shapava got some uh, chances. Okay, if the if the if the board comes back, we'll go back to it. For the yeah. moment, we'll stick with Magnus. Okay. Uh, Uh, okay, so knight f4 played by uh, by Magnus. Uh, sorry, by Alexei. Uh, rook e3, targeting the pawn, and um, king g2. Ah, he's just giving this pawn. He doesn't even want to try and defend it. Ah, h5 is very clever, giving the king some. Um, Let's go back to oh yeah, the yeah, Magnus Carlsen game on the on the because we can't unfortunately find the board here. So yeah, this is the Magnus Carlsen view. Uh, h5 was very clever by Magnus. And finally he takes the pawn. And okay, 96 check. He's going to put the king on h6. Of that I have no doubt. Well, I have a little bit of doubt. <laughs> he could put the king in. He doesn't have to put it on h6. But he's thinking of putting it on g8. But h6 is so so natural and he does it. Rook d2. And Alexei is saying, you're not going to beat me from this position, son. Okay, <laughs> bishop b5. Alexei playing on increment. Rook e2. I guess well, Lawrence, uh, Duda is losing, and this means that I will not see your dance. That if Duda loses this position? Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, if he loses, then the chances to win the tournament is not that high. Yeah. So he You're going to miss the dance. Oh, no. He goes with a long check. 
but uh, Jabala felt very safe with the king on e7. Um, Amazing. I mean, I wish I could bring this game up because I don't have the. Maybe we the can PGM. zoom a little bit more. But it's a, an incredible position because it looks yeah, as though he was lo he he's completely losing. Dude, yeah. But he's doing like uh, Jabawa was losing the other game as well, but uh, he managed to survive and win. And Amazing. This is uh, Duda been regretting a lot in this position. Incredible. So Duda is actually currently in exchange down, but he managed to... What's this? He gave up the queen? What's going on? I don't know, but it looks like he, he gave up the queen here. Oh, well, he tricked him. <gasps> oh, no, Bardo got tricked. <gasps> he got completely tricked. Can we please tricked. zoom the board? <laughs> Goodness me, he got completely tricked. He missed queen takes e7, a cheapo <gasps> by Jan Christoph Duda to get into a... Probably winning position now. Is that a rook and it might not bishop? Be, it might not be winning. It's it's a tricky one because king d6 is always there. But he has these pawns on the king side. Yeah, I'm I mean, not sure what to play, though. It's a it's a difficult. I mean, I, I mean, only black can win, right? I mean, Bardo still might win this position, but he got tricked. He was completely winning. Duda found a, a cheapo and <laughs> unbelievable, and now it's. Well, it's still very difficult for Jan Zhishtof because, I mean, yeah. shocking. Meanwhile, Magnus Carlsen is uh, just grinding away. And as I say, I think he's going <gasps> to... Rook C... What? Rook C3, bishop E5. Then C7. C7. Wow, what a tactic. My goodness. Oh In this God, position here yeah. that you can see on the screen, if the bishop goes to E5, pinning the rook, Jan Zhishtof pushes with C7. C7. But you don't have to do that. You can just push your pawns, and that's oh what no. Jabal was going to do. Push. Pass pawns must be pushed. G4. King just go so G4. Far. Yeah, and, 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 and the bishop is controlling all the key squares. King D3. Do you think this king can make it? I don't know. F4. We're going to soon see. Because the pawn's going to go to F3. Let's say King E2. F3. King F2. There's some check. I I don't. I really don't know. Hmm. It's really hard to say. He should push the pawns on the light squares, right? And then he has bishop for right, the Right, exactly. Squares. That's normally what you tend to do. And in fact, hold on, we might have the game here. Let's see if we can bring it up. Here is the position. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. We've got a wonderful position here. F4 played. Uh, How come this position is, is, uh, is equal? <laughs> Uh, let's let's have the board uh, back, please. Yeah, let's let's put this board up because we do have a position. Okay, a4, f3. Ah. Uh, okay. And uh, that yeah, pushing king e3. Is there a check on bishop b? Bishop b6, six? maybe just king f4. f4. Yeah, king f4, f2, and rook c1. c1 just and you're getting that. the blockade on the light squares. What a crazy game. And we yeah. have to show no, to our viewers that Queen C7. Oh, yeah. So it was crazy move. So around about here, it looked as though Bado, I mean, this pin against this rook looked disastrous. Jan Krzysztof found check, queen, rook E1 check, bishop E5. The pin still looks like a disaster. You're all the pieces. And he found the move Queen C8 threatening a perpetual like this. So if you play rook takes c3, I can just give check here and give check and perpetual. So that's why he played the move uh, queen e6, yeah. but now queen takes c7, Ooh. check. Beautiful, cheapo. And now you get rid of the bishop, and then you win the rook at the end. And now we reach this crazy position, which is still completely unclear. And I have absolutely no idea who is better, <laughs> why. I think I would take white, probably. Bishop b6 check, king f4, is that on the board? And Magnus Carlsen has <gasps> won. He won the game, oh. Yeah, Magnus Carlsen has won. Now that might be, well, it looks like the position is actually winning, but it started to feel like... How uh, he can win that position? He that's, wins every position. That's, that's, that's the magic. That's the magic. Yeah, very special guy. I think it's Alexei Shiro. Alexei Shiro is one of the uh, strongest 
cool. Six players of all time. Yes. Well, we'll stay with this game for the moment. And um, okay. I still have no idea what's going on. It feels <laughs> as though if these pawns don't queen, okay, f2 was played, which is uh, which is obviously good. Can, and um, can White uh, take this g4 pawn? He can take it, and then the question is, is that ending? Uh, he's going to go bishop c5 on the next. I think that's what he wants to do. I think he wants takes, and then to play bishop c5. And take this pawn, and it should be a draw. Actually, I see this being a draw now. Feels like we're in drawish, drawish territory. If he goes with bishop e3, that also wins the pawn right away. Rook h1, yeah, takes the pawn. Actually, maybe this is good. It's still, still well. Black can never lose. That's for sure. JKD was winning uh, this game, and I mean, out what of an sudden, incredible game. out of sudden, Joby, um, unbelievable, just showed his uh, his skills, and uh, the things went crazy. Yes, yes, they did. Okay, Bishop C five, and what is going on here? He will centralize the king, king to D five, King C four, King If he D3. can, if 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 he's allowed. Yeah, king e4 was really good. Cutting oh, nice. the black king. I really love this move. Nice. That's a very strong move. Yeah. Uh, bishop b4. Now the bishop is coming to e1. King d4, bishop e1. Uh, maybe just a draw. Maybe and no the king progress. Is chasing the yeah, and now rook. What? No, what? that must be rook, H, uh, rook check. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. better. And now the rook comes behind. But the bishop controls the a5 pawn and the f2 pawn. So there's just nothing to be done. You can't. Oh, you know what you can do? Just. King c4, king b5, and sacrifice that rook. You can also do that. Yeah, that ends the game. White cannot really win this game. No, so white cannot win this game. And white can white can call it as a lucky game to survive. Yeah. Wow, what what an end of the of the first day at World Rapid Championship 2021. Yeah, pretty amazing. This is this is extreme. We have seen last round. Yeah, this is this is this is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, uh, this will end in a draw. Now, I I don't know which other games are still going on uh, because I'm not getting boards. So, so we still have a few. We board. don't have any any more we games. This is the only. Oh, uh, this game. is the only game left. Really? Yeah, this okay. Is the only game left. Yeah. All right. They finish. And I think we have got a result and a draw. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, what a day. What Can we Carnage. very quickly see the game also of Magnus Carlsen, how he ended? How he finished, yeah. So that ended in a draw. Look at them analyzing and uh, sharing the lines over here. 93 was the last move by Alexei, and I don't know if he lost on time or if he resigned, but perhaps the simplest is just to take this knight and then take this pawn. And this is probably losing because I can play h4 and get hmm. the double double pawn uh, the pass pawns and it feels like it's. Do we losing. resign in this kind of positions? Well, let's say maybe he was super tired. Maybe I don't know. There could be a number of reasons. Um, maybe I don't really see another move unless I'm missing something really obvious. I don't think I am. Mm -mm. So yeah, nice. I think he just thought that Magnus is just going to win this position. A thousand times out of a thousand. Let's, let's make it at least dinner. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, let let me get home and uh, and at least relax uh, a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. So wow. incredible day, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, whew, it's even difficult with uh, a few uh, technical issues to give you a complete update as to who is uh, on top. But uh, maybe uh, maybe we can do that yeah. with. Um, sure. Over here, I'll try and do my best uh, and do that. And unfortunately, we don't have the standings right now. So 
what we will do is uh, tomorrow we'll iron out the issues and um, be able to give you that. But we can tell you that nobody is on 100%. And as a result, then Magnus Carlsen is sitting top of the tree. And he might actually be alone up there. He might be alone on four and a half out of five. Now, can you imagine out of so many uh, grandmasters, we don't have anyone with five out of five? I, I can imagine it because the, the, the games are very close and there are very strong players. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but Magnus will be over the moon to be on four and a half out of five today. Yeah. Um, there are some other players, of course, who are, who are there will be a whole bunch of people on four. I don't think, as I say, there's anybody else on four and a half, unless Jan Chishtoff is, but I don't think he is. So, Magnus leading yeah. the way in the men's and in the women's, I believe. Uh, is Kostiniuk one of the players? Yes, I believe Alexandra Kostiniuk. Uh, Gunina is and with Nana Zagnice. With Nana Gunina and Kostenyuk, some uh, well-established top grandmasters in the women's are winning. As I say, tomorrow we'll give you an update yeah. for the first round as to exactly what's going on. It's been a very long day. I want to thank everybody for their patience because it's been a, it's been a difficult day in that sense. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got two more days of rapid. So we've got four games tomorrow, four games the day after before we crown the champion. And... Uh, We'll be back 3 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. The games will come uh, uh, from tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central European time, and the players will fight for the first prize, $60,000 uh, for open section and $40,000 for female section. Uh, so uh, we do have two more days for Rapid. I hope you guys enjoyed with the amazing game and um, some upsets, some uh, blunders, some beautiful games. Uh, and also our company. So please come back tomorrow, 3 p.m. And um, bye for now. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Before we get all the results, I will show you a few more interesting positions I, you know, got some uh, during, you know, watching this event from some previous rounds. So. Yeah, let's see the game. Martina Vikar against Galina Strutinskaya, and I think that was round number four in the women's sections. Uh, women uh, played only four games today, not five. And um, yeah, you can see that White is very well developed here um, <coughs> and is attacking. The Black King is in the middle, and Black played move before. A seemingly natural move, just attacking the knight, a tempo move. However, it's not a good move. I will come back to it, but the best for black was to actually play the move c4, getting ready to, to be able to deliver such check, uh, bishop c5, and mm, just speed up the development. And then, okay, white is pressing with some move like f5, but that's not the end of the world. But what was wrong with b4? You can think for a while, and, I th and then this is a very typical move. Um, it's a positional move as well as tactical move, a very dynamic play. So I found this very, very beautiful. So, well, the move is d6, giving up a very strong pawn. But the point is that, well, after bishop takes d6, we've got Knight d5, well, it's a juicy square for the knight where, well, it can hardly be attacked. I mean, not by the pawn because pawns don't move backwards. So uh, queen took on d6, but then knight d5 came anyway. So for the price of a pawn, white got a beautiful knight and is blasting open the position, is attacking. And here came knight takes f4. Well, now <coughs> bishop takes f4 was also a move, but now white is exchanging. No, bishop takes f4 was actually played. So queen takes d6, sorry. Knight d5, knight takes f4. Yeah, bishop takes f4 was played. Yes, this is, this is the best move. Yeah, because we don't want to actually give this beautiful knight and the bishop was not doing much here. So bishop takes f4 was knight, he takes f4. And now let's just 
open the game even further, e5, just, you know, to move forward, gaining more space. You see black's king is still cut in the middle. And after queen c6, well, there is very nice move coming. Maybe you've seen it uh, in you know some earlier games. I was talking about some geometry, like we want to bring more firepower, and with using some tactics. So here came, I mean there are many good moves, but I really like rook a6. I mean the rook is protected, but also well there are some knight c7 here. You know the the king is very unsafe uh, on on e8. And after queen b7, well. Uh, e6 is good, but rook b6 was played, queen a7, and, well, some move repetition, rook a6, queen b7, why not? When, when you can, then, then you can repeat just to show who is the boss, and if you repeat, then your opponent may think, oh, you're playing for a draw, but actually you are not. You are psychological trick, but now bishop c4 came just putting more and more pressure. I thought about e6, but sometimes you don't want to force issues if you cannot calculate everything. You just build up bishop c4, perfectly fine move. Bishop e7, black has to develop. So there came knight takes e7, king takes e7. King is naked in the middle of the board. So queen d6 check, king e8, and now e6. So white had it all under control. There are many, many ways to play here, but I think that was quite clean. And yeah, white uh, won later this game. So this is very, very nice attacking idea. But especially that d5 move was very, very good. So <coughs> some other position which looked uh, very nice to me was mm, from the game Monika Sochko and Vantika Agraval from India. And um, yeah, white is very, very well placed here. Um, better development. See the bishop on b3 is looking at the king. We've got more space. The bishop on c8, rook on a8, they are not participating yet. Okay, bishop on c8 covers some squares, but it's not fully developed. Knight on b6, hmm, also maybe not that active piece. And the queen on h6, yeah, there are also some issues that black's pieces are not coordinated. They are not working together. They are not making any threats and what white can do here. So that was very instructive because d takes c6, okay, that's fine, that's nothing is happening yet. b takes c6, and what to play now? I mean, whatever white plays, uh, white should be having some advantage because she has a better pieces. But usually when you have a better pieces, some tactical tricks should work. And Monica found a very, very nice move here. And that was bishop takes f7. Yeah, probably unexpected, um, but perfectly uh, justified just because, you know, she had a very, very well-placed pieces. So bishop takes f7, and let's say if king takes f7, then queen b3, and now the geometry works very well for white because, well, knight d5 should be played, and then you, you can just take, okay, with the knight, this, whoops, not like this, knight c to d5, yeah, if c takes d5, then you can play just queen takes d5. I mean, the rook on a8 is not that important. I mean, the king doesn't have that many squares to go, and bishop e6 wouldn't work because there are like one, two, three uh, pieces attacking the square. So that's just terrible. I mean, if king goes to f6, there is probably no immediate mate, but with rook c1 coming to c6, that's not the only move, but yeah, just completely crushing. So after bishop, whoops, not here, after bishop takes f7, if rook takes f7, then we can just give a check, I think, rook e8 would be the move, and then rook f8 is the only move, and then we trade and bring the queen into the position. So for now, black would be a piece up, but look at the king. It's just completely naked, and now king f7, we can just bring more pieces, knight g5 is a threat. Um, yeah, I think knight g5 is the biggest threat because d6 is actually covered, but knight g5 and yeah, how to protect against knight g5? There is no way, so white's just completely winning here. So in the game, 
Um, the bishop was not taken, king h8 was played, but white won a very nice pawn, very important pawn. And yeah, she, what she played in the game, she played just queen h5. Yeah, she's ready to trade pieces, go for an endgame with the pawn up and the better pieces. So that was winning position. Yeah, actually black took. Uh, and yeah, we had an endgame. <coughs> of course, the game still continued, but that's nothing interesting now. I mean, it's just a technical job to bring the full point home. Let's see some more positions. I really like this one. Fabiano Caruana playing against Stelios Halkias. And white is pressing, having some space advantage. But yeah, how to continue? I mean, well, knight h6 was probably the move black was a bit afraid of. So if Grandmaster Halkias played king h7. And now I really like the, the move played by uh, Fabiano here, building a very nice attack. Because the knight is very well placed here. Queen is OK. I mean, queen could go to d3, but I think a few moves ago it was on d3. And I mean, queen d3, king h8, it's not uh, nothing clear. You need more pieces in the attack. And how to bring more pieces? The rook lift. Rook c3, coming to g3, and making more threats. So after rook e3, a5, I don't like this move, because black shouldn't play on the queen side. Black should sense the danger of the position. And probably some rook e8, I feel like, and then preparing f6 was probably better. Um, yeah, this is, of course, complicated. And yeah, white is in a driver's seat, but still, um, black can defend somehow. But a5 was just way too slow. And there came rook g3. And you can see there are already some threats. I hope you can see what's the threat, because let's say black goes a4. That's completely stupid move. Then there could be rook takes g7 check. Knight takes g7, queen h6, king g8, queen takes g7, a checkmate. So that wasn't the game continuation after rook g3, of course. Now black spotted the threat played rook g8, but you can see black's pieces are boxed in. It's very, very difficult position. And Fabiano played rook c1, just, you know, bringing more pieces to the play, rook c8, and then rook c to c3. So having more and more pieces into the attack, there came g5, which looked very, very ugly. But I don't know. It's, it's difficult to suggest something for, uh, for black. So after g5, there came knight e3, <coughs> eyeing the pawn on d5, and also just, I mean, changing the position of the pieces, looking at the weaknesses. I mean, knight g4, f6, uh, also an idea probably very deadly idea, and Black felt obliged to play h5 to take away g4 square from, from the knight, but yeah, Black is weakening uh, the, his king even further, and that's terrible, because after h4, uh, well, g takes h4, there came knight f5, threatening queen h6, checkmate in one, and after rook g6, well, takes, takes, and queen h6 check, and I think that was game over because after king g8, there's queen g6 check, and the king will not survive here. If the king moves here to f8, then rook f3, well, the three pieces will just kill the king easily. And if the king moves to h8, we can just grab some pawns with the checks, or even give checks like this, and on 87, just grab the... Uh, Rook on c8, so I think, uh, yeah, just gaining some material, and the king is still very weak, so the mate would follow. So actually, after queen g6 or somewhere here, black resigned because that was game over. So I think we have already the results. So that's um, all from me, and we'll see you tomorrow. I will also bring, I will also bring you some interesting positions during the breaks. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world.
with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Hello everybody, we are actually back. <laughs> We're going to give you guys the standings after today's action. So let's see, let's start with, I believe, the women's section. Let's see if we can get those standings after four rounds. We can see here, we do have two players on 100%. Valentina Gunina and Alexander Kostenyuk, the two Russian superstars, leading the pack. Closely followed by Zagnitze, Vaishali, Natalia Buxa, and Bodna Rook. Uh, so uh, some top names there. And in the main event, the main World Rapid, we will see after five rounds, we will have the following players. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna second. come, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Give us a second. <laughs> we have three players leading the pack. Janczysztof Duda is, in fact, on four and a half out of five. Mm -hmm. So Janczysztof, Baldur Jovava, and Magnus Carlsen. What a crazy last round that was as well. What a crazy game, Jovava Duda. Mm -hmm. Magnus also in great form, and then a lot of players on four out of five. Nepomniszczuk, Grishuk. Hans Niemann, the young American, doing well. Giri, with a touch of luck. Abdu Satarov has been solid all day. Gareev and Gelfand. And there might be more as well, but those are the top ten. So no runaway leaders just yet. They start to separate in around day two. The pack starts to thin. Mm -hmm. And we will be here. And I hope you guys will join us. We'll be back 3 o'clock Central European time. Same channel, same place, and we will have another day. I'm sure of furious action, ups and downs, all the drama that can only happen in Blitz and Rapid Chess. Been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Please join us tomorrow. See you then.